gas leak in the middle. Also, special gas tap. Go, 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 go. Should be good. We're live there. Music should be playing. Let's see. Music should be playing. Let's see. Nice. Okay. All right, I guess we'll just write some code, huh? This one, but do we never? Hmm. What's up, Dagley? Good to see you. Scuff content. Good name. I love it. I made uh, an account tag when Prime can't read or something like that. Uh, I don't remember. Don't tell Prime it was me, though. <laughs> Every once in a while, I, uh, I log in as that and uh, mess with them in the chat. Don't tell them it's me. <laughs> what's up mike well, how are all these people getting notifications about what i'm working on someone just did this earlier too to me uh who was talking about this i just got i just got tweeted at what is happening i'm, I'm just working on a pr all these people just knowing that I'm working on PRs. Oh my goodness. Dangerous to just be pushing code, I guess, huh? What's up, Numbuster? We're writing C today. Um, we are writing C and I'm I'm failing at it. I have a problem currently that could be solved by Rust, but I'm terrible. Microsoft snitched on me. So true. Too early in the day? No, I just haven't had coffee yet. I've been up for three and a half hours. I already played basketball this morning, chat. You're way behind the time. Rewrite and rest. Uh, it's the sign of design of how to define an auto commanding. Uh, decided is probably too strong of a word. Uh, but you can see how it would look like. It would look like this. Uh, you could obviously make your own mappers. My coffee addiction is crazy. Well, I, I haven't had any coffee yet. I've just been... I You don't see before coffee. Tavir, that's an excellent point. You've got me on that one. You've got me on that one. Uh, this is what it'll probably look like, though. This will accept a bunch of different kinds of arguments that you can do. Um, so you can also do very, like, you can do some of the same ones that you could do before. For example, like, event, you could just do a command. So, like, this would be the, um, I can just, I'll just open up a new tab and we can... So it'd be 
define auto command like this and then you'd have just a few things like that so you could have um event and it can be a list of events you can have pattern and it can be a list of patterns you can have these are one of you could have command uh is some string here or you could have callback is uh some function here uh, these also accept or just a uh, event. They also accept this so far. Um, I think I'll have a look at that so it's only change out the namespace and hopefully it works when it gets merged. Uh, oh yeah, we don't. I didn't do anything with namespaces. That would be kind of interesting to think about. Uh, to clear a namespace instead of a group. Groups are pretty much namespaces, though. Oh, right. You can also do group. And it's the name of group. Uh, so you don't have to do the thing where you, would like, do an R group at the top and do a bunch of other stuff like that. Actually, that's true. Just program right in binary. You don't have to waste time compiling. How about coconut oil fried donuts? Interesting. I do like donuts, though. Oh, gross. It's Nyx changing names, Crage. Hello, folks. Shall I, uh, I don't know how to say 2T. I don't know. How would custom auto command adventure? Just user auto, my auto command? Yeah. Um, so then the uh, event is user and the pattern is the name. Same way it is normally, I think. Ah, yeah, I see what you're saying, Sebel. I don't ever have time to spend compiling. Exactly. You gotta be more efficient. Uh, Tiny Dean, I use uh, awesome WM. Python Basher, just superior. True, 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 true. Muter, that's a good point. Just leaking one zero or one one, you're only leaking bits. When I write C, usually I leak something that's eight, like eight bit a line, maybe 32 or 64 even, you know? That's a lot of wastage. A lot of wastage. Um, we should probably tweet that, don't you guys think? Um, honestly, Rust and C are both incredibly wasteful technologies. You're seriously going to wait and spend CPU on compiling? Program binary directly. It's closer to the machine and helps you keep the constraints or keeps uh, the constraints of the computer uh, in the front of your mind. Something like that, right? I'll, I'll let... Is this you? They're gonna tell you to program LLVMIR. <laughs> okay, here. Well, wait. I'll do it in the. I'll do it. Uh, I'll do it in the reply to this tweet. Oh, chat. By the way, shout out to for the inspiration, for the motivation and inspiration of this tweet. Yeah. Sunship's DM'd you yet? No, but that's what I was that's what we were just gonna talk about. Chat. I desperately need your help. I desperately need your help. Okay, we're gonna have to talk about this later though. Oh wait, do you not want oh don't expose you? I can delete it. Sexually do you actually want I'll delete the other tweet if you want. Okay. Uh, chat. So here's what happened. Sunchips posts something. Clearly from the marketing team. I mean, look at this. Someone spent time on this. They've got 50, 55,000 followers, chat. Okay. Also, how are they following 3,000 people? And they're not following me? Anyways. Anyways, though. They post this three likes. So you know what we have to do, chat. We have to ratio them big time. 
By the minutes. Dang. They're getting ratioed hard right now. See, but uh, if you could comment on this, on the original tweet, and just let them know that they should sponsor me and that they should DM me, that'd be great. But ultimately, the most important bit is we, we definitely need to be beating them on this by, uh, on the original retweet by a lot. So I can use your assistance. I want to get sponsored so by they also getting replied to by crypto scams. Exactly. <laughs> so anyways, that's what's going on chat. Um, you know, feel free, feel free to give that, give that tweet some love. Do we have a sun chips thing already? Okay. Yeah. We need to edit this commands. Edit sun chips. OG new because we got the og tweet as well of course that's important to remember yeah they are seriously getting tr crypto scammed though it's hilarious how do you source vim files in lua apart from using source inside vim command um that might be the only way help them source yeah i think that's the only way right now you could you could attempt to get a uh, pr merge to add like vim.api.nvim source that seems like a reasonable thing just port port that over how did i get started on programming um i i was doing mechanical engineering in college because i thought programming languages was like learning foreign languages and i didn't want to learn uh other languages because i didn't like learning spanish in high school and then I took a class learning Python and then I was like, oh, dang, this is awesome. I freaking love programming. So then I started. Uh, Lee, I would say best tip. Uh, this is stolen from the Primogen. Shout out to the Primogen. Uh, time in the saddle. You got to just start programming. Just program stuff. Program something that's interesting. Keep on doing it, etc. So biggest thing is about doing that. That's what I'd recommend, Lee. Oh, sorry, I missed your message earlier. Uh, there's some config files that I don't want to move to Lua. Okay, don't. Nothing wrong with that. I have plenty of Vimscript config files. Uh, what pro... Are you saying what programming language do you think will be the future? Uh, I think there will be lots of options. I would not be surprised to see a plurif proliferation of DSLs for some tasks, but it could also be that people write a lot of other languages. <sighs> I wouldn't be surprised seeing some language that has a lot of the same ideas for um, of Rust do a lot better than Rust. Uh, I think there's some difficulties. Maybe they'll just fix it in Rust. <clears throat> I like writing some parts of Rust, but other parts I have not enjoyed. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that there was a difference between the two, Dagley. I didn't know there was any difference between programming languages and, like, natural languages. No one in my family is a programmer or anything. Zig seems cool. It's on my list to do next, I think. Mike, you're getting close to the permavan. Fortunately, we're friends, but my patience only runs so far. <laughs> I like Go quite a bit. I think Go is really great for working with teams. I don't know a lot about PowerShell. I don't have any great answers for you on that one. I actually think, I actually kind of like writing TypeScript. It's just like the ecosystem is what I don't really like about it. Like it, like the, some of the tooling I think is impossible to understand for like a newbie, which I am in like the TypeScript world. But I actually think TypeScript is like surprisingly pleasant to write. Yeah, Go is uh, like a thousand times friendlier than than Rust. Yeah. This class sucks. I'm not going to class up here in every way, and that's not even an opinion. <laughs> but there are some interesting things about PowerShell. That's cool. Yeah, right. So like uh, TypeScript, the language seems pretty, it's pretty fun to write. Or if you like already have a project where all you have to do is just like type yarn build and it just like works and it never breaks, or you have someone else on your team that fixes the problem, then like writing TypeScript's a lot better. I 
Well, Dagli, Zig is still there. Why would you write documentation for something that you're not sure is going to be the same way, like when you're done, right? Like, Zig isn't released yet. Like, what would be the point of spending a bunch of time writing docs and then being like, oh, actually, uh, we re we changed the implementation of this, so everything we wrote in the docs is not the same. You're doing something like async automated plugins, core fires them, but doesn't wait for them. Uh, you could already do that, right? You would just schedule the thing that you wanted. Right? Like, if you had, you know, auto command buff read uh, star lua vim.schedule my custom function just do whatever you want with that afterwards right like uh, this function can make sure that it doesn't take too much time or do whatever you need etc etc ts yeah i i like typescript a lot better than writing just javascript yeah and plus python was docker plus plus remote interpreter does anyone know how to have that as I have in PyCharm. I don't really know anything about uh, Docker Compose or even remote inter You want to execute some code somewhere else? I don't know. Okay. Oh, chat, did you guys see as well? We're going to do, uh, you can do way more in Linux than Windows. Well, I don't know. Uh, let's, uh, let's not have this conversation. It's I think it's boring. We can talk about other stuff. Or you guys can argue in DMs. <laughs> um, okay. So we actually got kind of far. Uh, I've been I've been getting kind of far on this off stream. Sorry. I do. Uh, my dad's better than Zero. <laughs> well, that's, my dad is better though. Yeah, Distin is cool. Connie, what's up? I actually got kind of far on, on this PR so far, but I am... Uh, well, 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 I'm trying to get to the point where we can do some more of the exciting, exciting stuffs like this. So up to now, uh oh, what did you, what, what am I looking at next? Building rust car go. <laughs> that's okay. That's funny though. See, that's funny. Also, anyone recognize this? Uh, Rust uses Go. Has anyone thought of that? That's a big brain thought there. That's big brains. Big, big brains. Uh, did people, are people helping me out with sun chips? Muniter, thank you. Oh my goodness, Rex. Now that's a tweet. Rex, are you in here right now? That's a tweet right there. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Rex, nice dude. That's a good one. Okay. Uh, Vex Leva, do you know what auto commands are? Because here's what we've done so far. I have implemented a lot of the API for auto commands that work um, and don't leak memory, it seems, that don't have callbacks yet. So basically I've changed the way that instead of the only way you could make auto commands is by doing like this thing and typing this out, right? Like typing stuff here, blah, blah, blah. You can actually use a more programmatic interface. Okay. So that's the first bit that we've done. So I've done a bunch of stuff with this and I've uh, worked on doing things like um, adding do auto command and uh, creating groups. So define our group as well. So I've added I've added that as well so that you can uh, add auto command groups, which is pretty nice. I don't know why I wrote these tests this way. I can just, I think I could write this in a completely different way. Um, I might end up doing that. Uh, is that native callbacks? Native callbacks. What do you mean? Uh, no, I'm just sure. Hello, poor child. La, 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 la. This song is nothing. We need more. We need more than this. So we, I've done this part, and it seems like it's working pretty good. But the problem next is that I... Um... Ah, interesting. I didn't realize. 
is I'm trying to figure out a way that we can start passing callbacks in. Now, I've done a bit of refactoring. Done a bit of refactoring to get us to a place where we're getting close. So, what happens? We have auto command register. This is a new function that I made that just registers new auto commands. We're, we're, I'm explaining right now what we're working on. We're working on new auto commands, actually. So, the problem is... So here, here's what happens, right? You can pass stuff in here. This executable, which I don't know if this is probably not a good name. Yes, Lua ref stored in C. That is what we're working on. Not to stir, yes. For auto commands. We've done it for other things before plenty of times. But for uh, for auto commands. So I made this new uh, new made this new type. It can either just have a command or it can have a callback. Callbacks are uh, basically just like they can be funk refs, partials, or Lua's. Lua is an objective language. I wouldn't call it subjective, yeah. This is out there by LEV and Cloud None. Out there, sorry, not out three, but I'm sure you got you got the picture. Oh yeah. I hate when languages are prone to change. <laughs> oh wait, I don't even know what. Uh <laughs> yeah, objective C. No, this is just regular C. <laughs> ah, shoot. Guys, it's too early in the morning. All my jokes are going to be this bad. Specific stores are better than general stores. <laughs> no, 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 this is regular. Sorry. I wouldn't call it unholy C, but it's just regular C. <laughs> it's subjective C. <laughs> <laughs> I it would, it would be very funny to just always refer to regular C as subjective C. <laughs> what are you? What's Neovim written in? A uh, subjective C. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, postmodern C. And they'll Google it because it sounds real. <laughs> I see what you did there. AC Embly? No, but it used to be done. That's true. Yeah, that was the fan bat. He is uh, he is just joking. You can tell because uh, he's one of the only people who can type um, teach DVW, or at least that was the case. Isn't that the thing you get from eating oranges? There we go. Nix is one of the few. One of the very few with the privilege of typing Teej DVW. No one else really has such a su such a gifting. It's a very exclusive club, unlike Primogen W. Oh, chat! By the way, have you seen these sweet new emotes? Now those are some quality emotes right there. Those that's a quality emote right there. You're blind? Oh, I didn't know. Do they have uh, surely well, what would they do for a screen reader and emotes on Twitch? That seems tough to figure out what it would do. Oh, hi puppy. Hi, honey. You've been saying dada? Dada. Hi, baby boy. Thanks, honey. What? Mwah. You blowing me kisses? Thanks, little man. Alright, I'll see you later, babe. <laughs> that beer. Here, here, uh... I'll, I'll help you. I'll just quit it out. Neil's first word wasn't rust. Rust good, see bad. Rust good, Rust good, see bad. Rust good, I think I need to move it past a dollar. Oh no, no, no. Rust good, see bad. Rust good, see bad. 
Oh, uh, I maybe maybe we need to move the donation amount to be much higher than a dollar, or just for Nix at least. Connie, actually though, yeah, was he talking about subjective C or objective C? No one knows. So Connie, I w w obviously for those of you who didn't know, I went out to the Primogen's compound, and uh, I stayed with him so that we could do VimComp together. And when I came home though. Uh, when I came home, literally the first thing Neil did when I walked through the door, I thought I came in through the garage and he was in the kitchen. He walked towards me and then he's looking at me through the baby gate that we have. And he just looks right at me and he says, Dada. The right way I walked through the door. And it was the first time too that he'd ever like super said Dada referring to me. It was so cool. I was hyped. I was so hyped. So, so that was really cool. So he's been saying dada. Uh, we think it's because he's been making the sound dada for a while. You know what I mean? Like it's a common sound that babies are going to say. But he's been saying it specifically when I come in the room now. So we're thinking it's his first word. You know, we're thinking it's his first word. <laughs> Relative C. <laughs> so that was very exciting. That was like pretty much uh, one of the best ways that I could come home, you know, and have him just say dad, dad. That was very cool. <laughs> Ender. <laughs> nice. The Pacific Sea. Is this the Atlantic Sea or the Pacific Sea? <laughs> Oh, objective C. I see. <laughs> Quantum C. Blazing fast C. That's the only kind of C that I'm familiar with. The Indian C, the yellow C. The Mesopotamian C. I haven't had enough coffee yet to be able to pronounce words. Sea ball, vitamin C. There's possessive C. Red C. True. <laughs> oh, dang. Oh, nice. Red C. Very good. Very good, chat. Fantasy. <laughs> Fantasy. <laughs> Fantasy. Nice. Oh, that's a good one, Ender. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a big brain one right there. I like it. Chat, I wanted to write some code today. You're all distracting me. What is going on? Wait and see. Oh, no, chat. Oh, no. No. Latency. Let's hear the ABCs of imposter syndrome. A is for Ada, B is for basic, C is segmentation, <laughs> D is for Google's other language, E is for Erlang, F is for Fortran, G is for Google's only child, <laughs> H is for Monad, J is for... Okay. All right, we got to change it to be more than a dollar because Nix is just going to spend $20 only and then have a good time for the whole rest of the afternoon. Nix, you better get in another one quick because I'm changing it to be more than a dollar. Nope, not that one. Wrong button. Uh, donations. PTS. Min. Oh, Nix, you've been getting scammed. You could have been giving one penny, I think. Okay. Is this in dollars? I'm gonna assume it's in dollars. Okay. Too late. Oh, no one dollars a minute. Is this hyperinflation? This is hyperinflation. <laughs> 
connective C. All right, chat, 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 Okay, let's try and track this down, shall we? So here's the problem. I've been writing Rust. Okay. I don't remember how memory works anymore in C because now I just expect the compiler to just not let me do anything. So it's a problem. But fortunately, I set up something so that we can see the error leaks. I know you guys pro you probably can't read this very good. I can try and do like this way. Maybe this is better for you today, chat, so that I can make this a bit bigger. Little auto commands, that's what we're working on. Okay. All right. Hello world problems, indeed. Okay, so here's what's going on. I already know, I'm pretty sure what's going on here, but I'll walk you through it, chat. The best I've seen. <laughs> oh no. And think about this, chat. What letter does the word chips start with? It's easy to just free what you malloc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know who's freeing or mallocing. Ass. <laughs> the only brand of chips that I recognize? Chips. <laughs> Alright. Thank you. Ah, shit. You guys are so distracted. Ma Chat, you guys got me today. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. All right. If leaking memory download more RAM. I'm only leaking 16 bytes. I mean, who cares, really? Who cares, really? You know what I'm saying? But, okay, so I, I already know generally what's happening here, but I'll walk, you, I'll walk you through what happens. So, we go to API auto command. And we're calling uh, define right here. We loop through our options because we got a lot of different options. Go see your doctor. So I get a call back and we say, okay, we're going to add this bad way here. We make a new callback. Oh, right. We've. Uh... So I put this on the stack instead of the heap so that I can be less worried about this guy. Void main to see the world burn. <laughs> hey, Tumati. All right, and then what we do is we drop our Lua ref inside of this CV guy. This CV is a callback. So this is the one I was talking about. It has a union of a couple different types. Bunk refs, partials, or Lua ref. Okay. And we're gonna drop, uh, we're gonna drop stuff in here. So we we point to this callback here. This is okay. Okay, this is okay. I know that this isn't on the heap, so I can't use it elsewhere. We're gonna copy it when we are gonna use it later. At least I'm pretty sure. At least that's what I thought I was doing. But I might be too much of a scrub. So, anyways, we unpack all the other arguments. Doesn't matter right now. Um, and then we can also look at. Um, Build and then log. Let's just delete our. Oops. Okay. So when I save this, we'll see that we got this leak here. And we should see something like. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'll command type 2. This means that we've got a Lua ref auto command. And now I thought that we were copying it. And then we're going to try and call it. <gasps> Can't keep trolling without giving back a little, you see. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. That's exactly why we have TTS now. Memory leaks. That's what I'm saying. How do I rip your Envim config? Uh, you can see my bad files, but I wouldn't. Uh, I don't know that they'll work on other computers. 
picture of the stag not the same as pointer to the copy that lives on the wait 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 little blip you copy the pointer to the stag yeah 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 oh i know that part muter that's fine i did like the abcs of imposter syndrome i i literally laughed out loud at it nix port config to nix oh but then i'll actually have people expecting it to work for them <laughs> That sounds very dangerous, Connie. All right, so, so now we've got an auto command, and then we're gonna go and register the auto commands. I, I, I don't plan on porting my whole config to Nix. I am considering exploring at least Nix shell, though. Can you get the message for my second part of ABC? Can you get it? What do you mean, can I? Do you need me to read it? Did it not read the, the second half or something? Didn't even show up on the stream. Uh, oh, I'll read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Nix, that's because I changed it to $5. I think it was too slow. K is for better Java. L is for parentheses, 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 parentheses. M is for pain lab. N is for Nazem. O is for non-subjective C. P is for unexpected white space. R is for use of moved value. Nice. S is for swiftly remove traces of O. <laughs> That's funny. T is for better JavaScript. Nix, this is impressive. Can I make it? Uh, I don't think I can make it play again. Oh, well. My reason for waking up in the morning is saying hello to my computer and saying it's saying hello world back. Connie, 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 Connie. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll copy it in. No, you don't need to. You don't need to buy it again. I'll, I'll copy it in. I'm copying. I'm copying. Bop. Now it's on the bod. That's funny though, fan bat. Okay, big brain time. We've got our auto command. We go to auto command register, right? So we're gonna register this. We've got one auto command for each of these bad boys. So what are we gonna do here? This registers one auto command, one auto command only. So it has one event, one pattern, one group, and then some options. Um, this part doesn't matter, just finds a good uh, place to put the auto command. So then here's where here's where I thought is what I need to do. Okay, so this part's good. I create a new uh, auto command. This auto command holds the like command part, right? Because so actually what we have here, this is not, this is all command executable. Okay, this is an executable. First time, or catch up with the VimCon videos. I must say that was awesome. Oh, excellent. I'm super glad that you liked it. Super glad to hear that you liked it. Uh, we, we're working on trying to get the VODs up on YouTube, uh, and hopefully that'll happen um, sometime. So we'll see what happens. Uh, you can watch the VODs, but they're not like split up and everything like that. Okay, so now we're inside of here. I thought what I need to do is I need to copy my auto command. Which, note, this is just straight up auto command. Just on the stack. So I thought what I need to do would do something like this. I say I got a new callable CB. Is this even the right type? Ah, yes. So this is copying and execute. Maybe I should just call this, instead I should call this source. And I should call this dest, because I keep getting confused which one is which. Where's where's AC declared? Wait, wait, go which AC? Sorry, sorry. Ah, uh, this AC. This is not the one that's leaking. This one, this one's a okay. This one's a okay. 
Sometimes it looks like an absolute headache. Sometimes, sometimes, other times it's fun. You never written C? Nice, Calface. So this is the one that I'm getting the leak on. So I'm getting the leak here on 20. Uh, so maybe I'll just, uh, I'll, whoops. I'll save this again. These done C sharp, but not very much. C and C sharp are not very related, I would say. So, oops. Just hit my rust or bust. I have been enjoying rust most of the time. Except when I change my mind about anything in Rust, it's so ouch. It just feels so ouch to change your mind. Peyton rules. Hey, thanks for the raid. What were you uh, What were you up to today, Peyton? Unless your name's not Peyton, then you just made an account uh, to let people know that you think Peyton rules, which makes sense. That's a totally acceptable kind of situation, I feel. The new way to parse API option dictionary is using Lua tables. Don't think you're using it here. Yeah, I don't know if I can use that though. I know that Befriedel did something with that. Um, Rust and WebAssembly game dev. Uh oh. Chat, we better hide. We're doing C, but getting raided by a Rust station. We are in trouble now. Okay, API key sets. Where does this get used, though? Set X mark. Dict set X mark. Oh, that's cool. I hadn't seen how he actually used it yet. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm at the same spot. So what? how does he get stuff from op? If ops dot id dot type in ops dot data dot integer e ops id ops n line oh very cool we're just gonna tell you the code is unsafe all the time it's cool I well I wrapped the whole thing in one unsafe block so it seems okay. Okay, I'm, I'm down for that, uh, Muniter. It pretty much just changes my loop, so I don't have a loop anymore. Well, I might do that, uh, I'll try and do that part. Oh, we could do it right now, I guess is fine. Nah, I'm gonna do it later. I'm gonna do it later. Because we're in a decent spot right here. Like So like I said, I don't, so this, I have it all working up until when I'm starting to pass around this Lua ref. I don't know exactly why it's like that. So we need to figure that part out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw B-Free will do it. I will do that. Probably not today, but maybe soon though. Yeah, I want to find this leak. I want to find the leak. So I, I know for sure that in... Uh, so it comes from when I'm looping over here and then I go into auto command C and I'm on 10 81. So I know that it's from this guy here. If you hide the unsafe fuck deep enough that nobody sees it, does it even exist? Hmm. That's pretty much, that's like the classic if a tree falls in a forest and no one hears, does it make a sound? That's the Rust version of that question. Do you have any resources for learning Vim? Uh, Vim Tutor? Show auto command, copy. Okay, I, I show, I show right here. So, we have to use union types because we don't have cool enums. I much prefer enums. So Rust stations in the chat, that's a plus one for you, for sure. I much prefer Rust's version of enums over C unions, okay? So that's a plus one. Uh, you can type Ferris Dance in the chat if that makes you happy, okay? Mm. 
What's up, Allison? Good to see you. In subjective C. <laughs> Maybe instead, should I be return returning a pointer to something? So are we rewriting Anvim and Rust? Not today. I think it's more likely we would replace certain parts with Zig. Because Beavriel is very interested in that. So I'm just trying to think, right? Like. Because I X Mal Gear. This is, this is the part it doesn't like. It doesn't like that I'm doing this. It doesn't like this line. Size of callback. Auto command copy should get a pointer to source. It doesn't do anything to source though. Does it? Why? Why does it need to be a pointer? It seems cool. It seems cool. So why would it need to be a pointer? Gopium. Although in this strat, it's just copium. Now I think I'm confused. Okay, so I'm just, I literally just want to copy what's inside of source into a new destination and return that guy. So this should be fine because I put this on the, well, this, uh, this is what I was thinking when I was writing it. I could just be dumb because like I said, I started writing Rust and now all I know is when the, um, like, I, I don't know how to do anything without the compiler telling me uh, what to do with like a helpful hint, not just this, not just this message that tells me it went wrong, you know? Detective memory leaks. So it doesn't like that I did this. Maybe so maybe this is the wrong way to structure this type. Easy install copilot. Oh dang, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about that. Neither now you're thinking. So do I really need a pointer to a callback? Maybe I shouldn't do a pointer to a callback. Maybe it should just be the callback directly. Because if I go to callback, it just has a type and a pointer. So this is okay. So I, I could just put this directly in the struct. I don't think that that's a big deal. Um, because then when I free this memory, it'll be fine. I just have to remember to free what's inside of here. But I already do that, I think. I'd be willing to give this a go. So that's gonna that's definitely gonna cause some troubles. Uh, cause this is gonna say now probably like, hey dog, uh don't you know that that you can't do this anymore? And it's like, yeah, okay, I'm with you, I'm with you, sure. So I don't even need to do this. I don't need to do this anymore. I can just delete this. Allable.cb equals uh, what does this do? This callback. Ah, okay. So I can just do this. I can point this here. And I can take a pointer to here. This will go ahead and copy these two guys for me. Because that takes destination and source. And that's okay. So this part's fine. I don't need to allocate any new memory in this, in this area here. Okay, so that seems okay. Callback is freed. Um, check if the callback is free. That doesn't seem right. Did I make this? Uh, I made this. That's not good. I didn't. That's that's not right. I don't think that this actually needs a pointer though. One day old. Uh, it's me. It's it's me from earlier. Okay. <laughs> I guess I did this. I, okay. I guess I did this. All right. I don't know what you want from me, chat. This was me, apparently. All right. This is how you solve that problem. I learned this from Rust. I learned this from Rust. Just panic whenever... <laughs> just panic whenever something happens that you didn't expect. Hey, honey. What's up?
Big brain chat. We had three we had three things to remember and she could only remember two. We're going to Chicago in a little bit to visit her family and then Big brain, I remembered what the third thing was after we thought. Result types, no need to panic. Oh, I panic every time though. It's just dot on wrap every time, no matter what. They told me Rust was safe and it'll handle everything, so I figured, well, it's not gonna have any errors. Yeah, this should be written in C. That seems way I don't I think I'd generally again vacation. <laughs> uh yeah, that's you got me there, Connie. You got me there. I, I, I think I'd prefer to write it in C. Right? Am I wrong? I can I couldn't be wrong, right? Where am I having problems again? Callback is freed. I think we can just change this probably to this. Okay. So this on free. Yep, this one I do need to pass pointer to because I'm gonna do something here. Uh I do wanna do this, because I'm gonna free this guy. And then I should be okay, right? A C C Oh, but I have a pointer to this right now. Okay, I see. I see, I see. Why C over C plus plus? Um in this case, I would rather use C because it's already written in C. But I think the I think the main thing would be it's a lot easier from what I've seen to sort of constrain the levels of things that you can do. You can sort of constrain what what you're capable of doing. And so that's that's good for us. If we wanted to do more complicated things, I think we just write it in Lua and then have a better day. So this takes this, okay, sure. I guess that's fine. All right, what have we got here? Um, ah, right. API auto command. So in this case, how did you get on with M Lua? Did you did you get to her? I want. I got farther on some stuff. Waylon, thanks for the raid. Your setup is very nice. Hey, thanks, Meow Cat. Toggle, I got a lot. Uh, I got a lot farther on on stuff. Yeah, I haven't had a bunch of time to play with it. I've been uh, pretty busy. We had VimConf and whatnot, and I was out of town. Um, yeah, it's been it's been pretty busy lately. Pretty busy. Okay, 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 okay. All right, nice. We uh, double freed. Very cool. Classic mistake. Classic mistake. But, but I think that makes more sense now. Because now I think, so I changed this from whether it should be a pointer to just be on stack. So I can free this callback. That part's good. Yeah, free Lua ref. Unref. Why does this uh, M Lua ref count? Remove the value from the registry. Huh. So, free Lura. Okay, where did I free it? From callback free and end him to find auto command. So I thought, I could, I could be wrong, chat, I could be wrong, right? 
I'm still exploring how a little bit of this code works. So let's actually go back to here. Let's go API auto command again. So callback free, API free Lua ref. Uh, pretty doesn't happen in C++. Well, it's not happening for me either, right? I'm getting the error. I just don't know what I need to do. You do realize like what project we're working on, right? By the way. Like, I, ju I don't, I'm not asking, like, in a troll fashion. Ah, this is NeoVim. I don't know if you've heard of it or not, but it's a very large C project. I don't, I didn't update project either. <laughs> Commands, edit, project. Working on Lua Auto commands for you know. So it doesn't make like it it wouldn't make sense to just like switch to C. Like I don't get to control anything like that. That's not a real like option. Uh for me to like consider or uh weigh even as a possibility, I would say. Just a humble and small PR. So this is Oh, wait, does this do this every time? Um, if callback data.lua ref not equal lua no ref. So that might be, that might be part of the problem. Okay. I am doing great. How are you doing, easy newbie? I'm actually going to switch this back to the sides. So that I can read this a bit more. Man, I like having slightly smaller. I'm going to have to... I know you can't read the super great chat, but that's fun. Would be more fun to port to see what's and kill the C support for the zoomers. Interesting. Once again, not a viable option for today's stream, though. I'm being double free. Interesting, interesting. API free Lua wrap. Lua unwrap. Interesting. Thanks for the follows. Interesting. So it's right here. Oh, so am I unwrapping this too many times? That's a bit interesting. This song is good. This song is good, Connie. API new Lua ref. Well, this doesn't even increment the count. Gets a new reference to an object. Oh, maybe this is the wrong. Maybe this is the wrong. Closure value reference of the registry. Maybe this isn't the right function. And Lua ref. Add the value to the registry. Lua push value. Oh, maybe I'm doing something wrong here. Uh, how do I copy this? Does Lua and Lua ref keep track of how many times I do this? I don't even remember. Shoot. Yep. I know it, Connie. And Lua ref count plus plus. And Lua unref. And Lua ref. Oh. Add the value of the registry. Remove the value from the registry. Uh, 
Oh, so am I doing the wrong? Am I just doing the wrong thing? Am I just dumb? I'm just using the wrong stuff, aren't I? How would I grab a another reference to this guy? Amulet, API free, Amulet init, API new Lua ref. Note, it does not copy the value. It creates a new ref to the Lua object, leaves the stack unchanged. Push ref, new ref, but pop. That should be fine. That seems like it's the right thing. But do I not need to do unref for this or something? Because it seems... So, like, this, when I do this, this does not... Oh, this does. This does. Because it calls n lua ref, so this should, this should add this one. So, I'm doing this too many times, I think. This is like writing on safe rest. Indeed. I think you shouldn't do the dash dash ref stuff. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Let me go back up. So, what's up, Stefoy? I get an I get a Lua ref passed in. So I get a, a value from Lua passed in across a C bound array. I get a Lua ref here. Uh, this has to be an actual value too, right? So I need to be like, um, if the data dot Lua ref equals Lua no ref, then what do we we need to do? API set error. We'll just do like this here. Do -do -do. Um, must must pass an actual Lua value. I don't think I don't think that's gonna solve our problem. I don't think that's the issue. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So what I what my thinking was, what I want to do, because what I know is gonna happen is at the end of this function call, this data will be freed, which means we're gonna call API free Lua ref. So I need to make a new one. Was this is my thinking? So I make a new one and I copy it in. Type and data Lua ref. CB dot type CB dot data. Okay, callback Lua. That all that part looks good. This part looks good. Okay. Where's rest? Where's rest? Uh, working on NeoVim Core today. We're gonna kneel them core today. We have a callback. The CV is this guy. Where do you free it? Where do I free it? That's a great question. Rust and Neovim core when? That's uh, not super likely. It's not super likely. Uh, the packagers would all probably kill us if we tried to do that. Okay, so we get this new Lura. But the problem is I'm actually trying to free too many times, which is kind of surprising for me. Okay. So we, we put this in here. This part seems good. This part seems good. <laughs> okay. So... We get through a bunch of other uh, validation, parsing all the other arguments, blah, blah, blah. We get past all this. We get down to here. We need Rust Easter eggs in Lua API. Well, you could still do it with mLua and stuff. Yeah, for people saying that it's still grep free. <laughs> I mean, I know where it's getting freed. Right, I, ha I, li I literally have the stack here. I'm just trying to make sure along the way down that it makes sense, right?
Print them dot rust, by the way. <laughs> Being called from both T0 and also from Adder Sanitizer. So, right, so I'm, we're getting there. Uh, this is uh, like ASAN, or I don't know how you say it, address sanitizer. I don't know how people say it out loud. I've only ever read it. Uh, and this is running as I'm running unit tests over uh, NeoVim. If you had written this in Rust, then you'd be Gucci. If I had written in Rust, I would be not even close to finishing. <laughs> I mean, we'd, we it would be safe, you know, for uh, everything we'd written so far. It's just that we'd only be 1% of the way where I am right now. Previously allocated by T1 here. Yep, so we add a new Lua Rev right here, which makes sense. API 263, right? So 263, if we're there, uh, that's inside here. We're going to allocate a new guy right here. So that totally makes sense. Why address center is trying to free if T0 is freeing already? Read my third T0. Address sanit I don't think address sanitizer is the one that's doing it. I think it's saying that there's a double free because we free it here and we free it here. So we free in both of these places is my understanding. I kind of write faster QDC for plus than rest. I believe that, yeah. Uh, colors. You're so close. Maybe you shouldn't do API. Yeah, we could we could test it. Shall we just test this? cb.data.lueref equals v data dot lua ref. We'll just, we can just test it and see. Okay, so we still, we still have this problem here. So I, that's a good, it's a good point. That's a good point, Volm, right? Is uh, we should, we should check this. So I don't think that's the problem. I think we need this one. I think the problem is that we're gonna, we're freeing this one t twice later. So let's, uh, all right. So we've got, we've got this going. Telescope TJ, how dare you pro freedom company. Wait, what? What, how would I have in general? Just make Cobalt right through Dang! But then I'd be out of a job. That pays me no money. <laughs> uh, I don't, you should increase ref count, otherwise you can get freed while you still point to it. Right, so that makes sense. So this part, uh, so when we make this, we're gonna get a new ref, which pushes the ref count ups, right? Uh, this is this is kind of a cute little idea here. When did B3 will add this? That's cool. Do do only and Lua ref. Wait wait wait. wait, 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 wait. And Lua ref. And Lua push ref. And Lua ref. So that is. Oh, it's doing one ref greater than zero only, right? So, wait, so I'm confused what you're suggesting. A pointer not even all free. <laughs> there we go. Now we're thinking. Oh, the Reddit post general. Yeah, that was, that was kind of funny. I was a little confused. There wasn't any apology, which would have been cool. You know, if someone just accused you of something and then it's completely wrong, that'd be cool. But uh, that didn't happen. Ah, you can you can see all of the source uh, and, on this PR. I will I'll let me push up the latest changes as well, so that you actually have uh, the latest things that I've been doing. Is this why many of them doesn't work? Yeah, it's because they let me work on it, which is a big mistake. This one goes out to Volm Warframe. Hog. Um. I don't think we need this one anymore. That's fine. Okay. All right. So that should be uh, that should be pushed. All right. So I, I think where we're at is that if we're inside of here. Callback free. It seems like I have to free this here. 
Okay, so I can just, if I just comment out this free at the end, then it's not upset with me. But it sure seems like I do need to free this if I put something inside of there. Because that doesn't make any sense to me otherwise. But apparently I'm freeing the same thing twice when I do this way. Let's win and tons of stackers while debugging seek code. It really, uh, really makes you want to wake up in the morning and keep writing C. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. ding, ding. Well, hello there, Jersey. Yeah, so API New Ever totally looks like the correct one. Okay. Okay, sweet, 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 sweet. So I, we, the problem is that you double free. Exactly. Agreed. What's up, Seekip? All right, so here you go. So we eliminated the double free when I removed this. Which surprises me. It surprises me. The test fails, but you can ignore that for now. Who cares if the tests fail or not? That doesn't matter. Although it is a little surprising because I thought I was going to be running this function. Because if we're inside a year and we go to command copy, then we would do this. And we should be copying callback copy, callback CV, callable CV, source, test. Yep. Okay. 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 Mm-hmm. 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 This one creates an API new Lua ref, which is what I thought that I wanted here as well. Print refcon before free. Chat, now, now you're thinking with big brains. The freer the better, true. Why not triple free? I, how did I not even think about that? Oops. Let's do this. Let's put this here. We'll drop this here. Um, oops. Oh, I'm in some weird layout mode. There we go. Cool. That lets me shift that a little bit more. Um, let's actually change this to be like copied to the ref count now we can say new ref and and lua ref counts is that the variable that we're looking for we should see that okay and so now i should be able to go ahead and look at here let's actually delete everything here and try this again also in free yep 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 we'll we'll do that one shortly i just want to make sure that i'm Copied to. Okay. Sweet. See this? We're copying things. We're copying things. Okay. Uh, and then in Nlua unref, let's just basically, we're just going to do basically the same thing. Um, don't I have unref here? Oh, in a different file. Okay. Unref the ref count. Uh, I'm glad you like the colors. Uh oh. Wait, why did I just what what, 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 what did I just do something? Did I just do something really bad? What did I just do really bad? What the heck? Uh, these are just these are tabs. Kind of like an R R C slash arc reference counter. Um, it is a reference counter. Yes. <clears throat> Problem is the test failed. Mm, I don't think so. 
This uh, this died in tags. Is this really the problem? What the heck? Is is it really? How could this eye log be doing that to me? Okay, that's kind of weird. I don't know why I can't do that. Uh, do you have any keybinding stuff to automatically open the tab? Yeah, I can press Control T when I'm uh, like inside here. Uh, you know, if I search for like API auto command, I can press Control T and open it. And then I just have left and right to move between them. But left and right, I can hit easily with my thumb uh, because of my keyboard. When I'm coding by myself, not on stream, I have more like window splits and stuff. But I can't do the splits as much on stream because then you, you can't see anything. That's what I'm saying. Uh, left and right. This is just me hitting arrow keys. Yeah, Prime is, uh, Prime, Prime hates that part about my workflow. He thinks I'm evil. Wait, so why did Enlua Unref just, like, start freaking out that I called iLog? Can it just not be called in this context? That seems awfully weird. Uh, maybe it can't be called when it's exiting or something like that? You have any fears for using arrow keys? Well, I can see perfectly fine when I do splits and stuff like that. The problem is I keep the text big so you can read. Arrow keys I hit with my thumb, chat. I don't have to move my hands. Interesting. Assertion not entered free all mem failed. Oh, because we're inside, we're trying to log message. Um, if not entered I don't know is this a thing Ugh, I can't add any login inside of here for this one apparently I don't think printf will just work though uh, from where it is I think we have like a different uh, Elo split pick I know so it's just for you this is not my normal layout not, not my normal layout All right, I need to think about this a little bit. Uh, I Before we go too far down this hole and I try and do a bunch of different things, let me first go back, go back to here and look at what I'm actually doing. So when I'm, I call the copy thing, which makes sense. I call copy and I put the copy in our command. With that, what I do is I grab and I put the callable inside there. So what we should see here, we copy an auto command right I should be able to say like uh, I log we copied it and then what I want to see is that this is actually some number AC out command callable dot CB dot data dot Lua ref man it's such a look at this nestedness this is why I don't like unions as much I, I'm happy to I'm quick and happy to admit that uh, C unions are not my favorite thing, chat. Okay. What type is Luraf? Luraf is an int. The Lurafs are just a number. They're a number to. They're like an opaque type into um, into the Lua like VM or whatever you want to say. I don't even know if that's the right word to say it though. I'm here. We copied it. I don't. Will this just? Will this just gonna freak out or no? This this seems fine. Okay. We co uh we copied. Is that what I said? We co copied it. Do I? Does something go wrong here? Oh, I didn't write this yet. Okay. We copied it. Um, uh, I probably should only do this if it's the right type. If, uh, ac ow, ow command dot type equals k, uh, or no, it's callable cb, then we're gonna do this. 
Mm, sorry. Yeah, let's do that. Let's try doing this again and starting this over. We copied it. Five. Okay. So it does seem... I like how teaching you know, it's all zero plugin. I have a ton of plugins. PR link. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do we have auto commands or something? Auto command. Okay. Command. Add, uh, command. Add. Auto commands. Ooh, uh, auto commands. I have I have a I have a lot of plugins though. <laughs> that would be funny, Levu. I don't think I can do that as a command though. Can I? Can I just have anything I want as a command? I don't know. So we did we did copy it here, right? So we actually did make a copy. We do get the number to be five. So that's the new Lua ref that we have for this uh, for this execution. So that part's that part seems good, right? Because we start with four, we copy it to five. Three copied to four, right four. Four copied to five. I don't know. Uh, oh, and I'm not. I am not currently uh, freeing things. So that part's good. No, that you're not using when you're under the visual. Ah, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Auto. So do I still have callback free? So I removed this, but this still this still bothers me, because I feel as though I should free this Lua ref. This unrefs this handle pmap get handle and Lua ref markers ref. That last as equal zero. Yeah, we couldn't. Um, is it care if I put this? Or is this also going to break it because of. Uh, okay. Attempting to free four, attempting to free three. Sure. Callback free. So I didn't save this one. Tempted to free for. Oh no! Why? Why are we doing that, chat? What is going on here? Why are we attempting to free four and four? Oh, awesome! Yeah, I'm glad you liked it. We had a lot of fun doing Dev Tool time with Prime. What am I doing? CB.data.lueref. Maybe set the CB.lueref equals null before the callback free. Okay, 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 okay. So let's see, let's see here. So we are adding Lueref auto command four. See, this part makes sense, right? So it makes sense. So we had three and now we've moved on to the next one. So now we've got four. Never can be free enough. That's also true though. I have a really internal tension where I feel sort of like this desire where I really want to like have double, triple, quadruple freeze in my C code so that I can be part of freedom C. No way, my okay. Did you figure it out? Just the meter of memory. That's why. Uh, uh oh. What 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 are what are the NFT people mad about today? Yeah, but double free is a vulnerability. No, no, no. I just I'm just I'm just trolling. I'm just trolling. Yeah. So I uncommented it. Right.
<laughs> oh man, that's a pretty funny one. Uh, Nyx, that's a funny one. But it, it sure feels like I should be doing that, right? Because here's what I was thinking. Here's, so here's what I'm thinking. I could be, I still could be wrong. I'm still willing to be wrong. So I create a new callback here. Okay, right? Oh, thank you. Yes. Sorry, Connie. Connie, just for that, you know what time it is. Oh, here we go. Sorry. I'm super sorry about letting that one play for too long. So I'll skip right to the good one. The whole reason that Connie's here. <laughs> The only reason Connie's here. Oh, I love this song. Song name? Uh, it's Darude Sandstorm. Massage Faro. I messed up my exercise on small sub-semantics. Chat, if you're uh, sub to prime, what you really need to be spamming is some clap emotes here. I mean, is this not, does that not just make your day right here? Like, does it not just make your day, chat? Oh, I love that. Uh, I got you, Connie. I got you. <laughs> Give him the claps. I'm uh, in the middle of talks with someone about doing new emotes, chat. We'll see what happens. Do, 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 do. Oh my goodness, in 10 minutes we need to get ready though, because we're going to have... Uh, we're going to do a little sidetrack for the day. We're going to do a little sidetrack. With... Um, hello? Do you guys, you guys know this guy? I probably shouldn't leak my DMs like that. Oh well. Hello, we're gonna do some uh That's what uh you should do for cleanup, I guess. Oh Mmm, did I forget to set it to Lua No ref afterwards? Oh that could be true, that could be true. Okay, I'll check that out in a second. But uh we're gonna do some uh porting some old Vim script config to Lua. Have we been well behaved enough? Yeah, all the C jokes made me want to still do this. So, so we're going to do that uh, in 15 minutes or so. That should be fun. I think you need to set a null before freeing the callback. But if I do that, then there, I literally don't even need to free it. Like, there's nothing here that happens. Um, like... It just strikes me as weird because I f feel like I feel like I, I must be doing something on the so the problem is like there is a real Lua function that exists right like there is a real Lua like reference to something if I don't free if I don't free this guy here, I don't, I just am confused, like. So we, four copy to five, ref count five. So we copy and auto frame, three copy to four. I don't want to free three, that's automatically going to get freed when we're done. So my thought was, everywhere that we use this inside of our command register, my thought was that we're going to need to do the copy inside of here. Our command is auto command copy. And then this should be creating a new one. We copy an auto command. So I thought this would be something like uh, percent D percent D. I thought it would be something like uh, dest.callable. Or no, this should be source.callable.cb. Dest.callable.cb. Oh, whoops. These are not the right things. Dot, um, dot data dot lua ref. Dot data dot lua ref. Okay. Hmm. 
So my thought was we copied four into five, right? So we copy four into five. So then we've got it copied as five. Where is this free getting called? Because right, that's what I don't understand. I'm here. I've done this part, right? Now I'm at the end. Clean up command. For oh, shoot. Chat, I'm so... Oh, no, I... This literally frees the callback for me already. It literally, I literally just was basically like, hey, wanna double free? <laughs> oh no, I just, oh no, no. <laughs> so that's the reason. <laughs> That's the reason it was double freeing. Oh. Ah, shoot. Oh, on Rust, this won't happen. Actually, you're probably not wrong though, right? So what should I be doing here? When I free this, this should go to Kate. Oh, you know what else I should do is I probably do this. Data dot. Uh, Lua ref equals Lua no ref. Oh, but I already did that part. Oh, shoot, chat. This just... This... Just see problems. All I see is problems. Yeah. You got me on that one. You got me on that one. Chat, so... Wait, this means I was actually writing, like mostly correct code the first time i can't believe it I, I literally can't believe it that doesn't seem quite right that doesn't that doesn't seem quite right okay wow chat totally cool Oh, you know what? You know what, though? We need to set both of these to... Um, we should set this to ac.type callable none. That's the thing that we didn't do anymore. We should do this, I think. This would have prevented this bug from happening because it would have... Uh, we would have solved it, but that's okay. Oh, baby, chat. It's uh, closer to working. We're, we're one step closer. We're just, we're one step closer. We're still far away from this working the way that I want it to work. Um, but we're getting much closer to getting something that kind of works. So, callback call. Are we actually calling this or what? Um... Yeah, I do want to do that. Actually, can I just change my let's let's just change this to clear the log every single time before we do this. Um, RM build uh, log or oops dot and log. Okay. Jeff. Okay, this makes it a little bit more obvious. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da bottom, ba -ba bottom, bottom, bottom. I don't even know if I want this though. I think I'm gonna just comment this line out too for a sec. Okay. All right, let's try this. What about callable X and callable C B cases? Are they not? Are they not? Are they set to none? Yeah. So we just, I just made it so that um callback free right i said uh so here they said it's callback none the problem was we have this wrapper around callback so we've got these guys so then we've got auto command uh did i call it free so now uh i'm stupid because i didn't i didn't actually write code that makes sense here 
Thank you. Good call. I'm still dumb. Can you specify a minimum required 0 0.6 commit? What do you mean, Connie? Uh, you can... Or are you saying for, like, telescope or something? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Bolton. Case breakthrough, board 11. Uh, Connie, you can just say requires latest 0 0.6 is what I would say. Here is my reminder to uh, make sure that I was streaming because I was worried that I was going to forget uh, <laughs> that I was going to forget this. Oh, I'm dumb. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. But I could post process this, which might be kind of nice, actually. You know, what would be kind of cool is. Uh, yeah, we could we could consider doing that because I'd like to filter out a bunch of these lines, actually. Like, uh, maybe we can filter out a bunch of these lines so I have less busyness going on here. So, like, I could filter out all the lines that start with debug, right? And all the lines that start with this, because these are all useless to me, right? If you bump telescope to 0.1, I want to got a bug report with 0.6.0-dev.3. It nightly is always just whatever the latest one is. The only C project I like is Zetis. Interesting. I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Yep, just close the ticket. Like, nightly means the latest nightly. We don't support any in-between nightlies. Uh, yes, Galface. I uh, sent a PR in that will uh, that I need to decide if I want to try and do the thing before or after. Well, you can always build it for yourself. Yeah, exactly, Connie. It's a dissembler library. Oh, cool. I'm doing great, Colonel. How about you? Okay, so I did actually want to try this out, right? So let's actually do something like this. Do I still have this file? Do I have an out? Oh, nice. So I kept all of this. So I can actually just test this. What's the... Why are we looking at Halal's Twitter? Halal is coming on the stream in five to ten minutes to talk about switching for some old vim script config he has to lua believe it or not so hillel asked a little bit ago if uh, anyone wanted to help him with it i was like want to just come on stream and we can do that together and I'm like sure let's do it so that's happening i i find his twitter really interesting so it should be fun. We've never even spoken together before, so we'll see how it goes. Hopefully you enjoy it, you know? I told him everyone was really nice, so everyone has to be on their best behavior. I didn't warm him, warn him about Nyx or anything like that, uh, so Nyx, please be good. Could you record and post it on YouTube? Yeah, we'll probably, um, I'll probably splice it up afterwards and put it on YouTube. Yeah. Is he writing C++? Uh, I, Hillel writes, like, crazy stuff. Like, I don't even know what these languages are. Like, what is TLA plus? I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know what some of these things are. I don't, I don't, I don't know what this is. Honestly, I should probably look at this, right? Does anyone have a link? I mean, I know that it's a thing. I've never written it. Plus Cal. Like, I don't know what... The, I couldn't read this for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that it's for verification and for a bunch of formal stuff. But, so I know that much, right? Like, I understand the general idea of some of it and what, like, the point of it is. He, he's definitely going to be way too smart for us. Formal stuff. You have to understand. You have to understand. 
I don't know anything, chat. That's why I'm on Twitch and not writing a book. Like Thorsten Ball. <laughs> oh, man. So, anyways. <laughs> yeah, Connie, now we're talking. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, anyways, that's cool. It's cool. So, I will be on in a little bit, uh, assuming everything works out. Goes from Perla Distributed Verification. Very cool. You'll be on Twitch and write a book. They're not mutually exclusive. For me, it, I think they might be. All right, let's see if I can uh, get this ready. Um, I'm going to go to the bathroom quick before we start. Can I ask close phone? That seems interesting. Oh, my good. Okay, perfect timing, actually. Perfect timing. Okay. Please uh, don't crash my whole stream again. Because last time we did Crab Rave, we, uh, we lost Brave Browser. I don't know what happened. I think it was because it's not in Rust. All right, chat, you know what to do. I'll be back. I'll be back shortly. Okay, I'm just going to go to the bathroom quick, and then I'll be back and grab a little more coffee. Did, did I just perfect time that? Did I just perfectly time getting back? Or did you, did, uh, did autoplay play something else too? Oh, whew. It's a dangerous game to let YouTube autoplay just go. I'll definitely get DMCA'd. <laughs> wow. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so one second chat. We're gonna, um... Invite a guest here. Invite a guest. Should be able to do this. Yeah. So we can do this. 
can hop in here, we'll be live. And uh, you can hop in. No rush. Just casual stream hanging. Yeah. All right. So then let's uh, let's do this. Let's switch this over to here. Uh, here we'll put this logo up. <laughs> it's a good one. I uh, should take off the Vimcon. We'll just leave this as the logo for now. Hey, Teej, uh, I have several ideas with plugins in them, but I don't know where to start. Can you share any resources? Nano T. Nano T is the good one. DMCI. All right. Okay, let's close out of this. Uh, let's close out of this. Oh, we need to add a guest command. So I actually don't want to close out of this yet, so I can link to this. Uh, commands, edit, guest. Hello. Okay. Cool, we'll do that. Um, and then let's also do... Oh, I want to exit out of them because this sometimes just like freaks everything out. Let's exit Discord as well. Let's exit Flame Shot. Uh, okay, so we're doing uh, porting. Uh, I don't know. This is basically like a, what would you guys call this? We're just gonna we're just gonna help uh, help port some. Port some, I'll just say porting of Inscript to Lua. Examples guest okay there we go and then we'll go back to little auto commands afterwards does this uh oh nice so we can do this and then that'll work that'll work real nice that'll work real nice it is uh does this go away afterwards though this would be kind of annoying to have maybe i should switch to a different view let's uh let's copy this view We'll just duplicate this. Um, restream. If I was smarter, I would have just done the thing that me and Prime did where I made a pull uh, link to pull this from. And then you guys could watch there. But that seems a little hard. So let's see. So for main, what I can do is I can just basically stretch this out. And when I go to full screen here, we can kind of make uh, make some of this other stuff disappear. We'll see, we'll see how that looks. We'll see how that looks. Oh, you know what would be even smarter than that is I should just do this. And then I'll pull like this. So all you can see, chat, is this black screen here. With maybe just a little bit of bonus info. Um, except I can't I can't make it any bigger. Nice. Uh, there's got to be a crop thing in here. Oh, this is good enough. All right, chat, are you ready? Hello? Oh, can you hear me? Uh, I can't hear you right now. Cool, no problem. It's I th I think I should be able to hear you. It looks like your mic is making sound. One sec, let me make sure I'm I'm on the right thing. Do 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 do. What did it pick for my audio out here? Settings, audio output. Okay, say something again. Huh? No, I can't. I can't hear you still. Okay, no problem. Yeah, it's, I'm seeing green on your side. Oh, it's not? Oh, weird. Try refreshing, maybe? Otherwise, we could just do Zoom or something, too. It's fine. This way, it just works a little better because it's screen shares a bit nicer in my experience. Huh, that's super, that's super weird. I see the bar moving sometimes on your side. Let me, I'll just, I'm going to refresh my page, too. Oh my goodness, chat. I had the site muted. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. I refreshed. Does that work? Yeah, but I figured out why it wasn't working. It was I, I had the uh, I had the the tab muted. 
<laughs> so that's a hundred percent on me. I just had, I literally just had the tab muted. Chat. Okay, that's 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 that that that's that's chill. Okay, yeah. I, I can live with that. Can you, you, and you can still hear me. Okay. Yeah, I, I can hear my, you perfectly um, now. I switched to my boom mic, so. Okay, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Chat is uh, making fun of me right now, so I I don't can, know. Uh, if... Can you can you link me chat? I, I'd love to yes. see the chat so I can like yes. watch them make fun of you. That'd be great. So yes, we can we can definitely do that. Uh, easiest way is Twitch twitch.tv slash tgdv which i will type in the chat uh in our chat in here so you can see um and then you'll also be able to see me i i couldn't get it so that my camera does both of these right now because you know cameras can only go to one part of the computer at a time in 2021 very cool uh so my camera is still on uh on sort of the main screen for twitch right now oh wow that's a lot of people yeah, we got a we got a bunch of people hanging out. We were working on uh, actually doing uh, Lua auto commands today, so we're in in well implementing them for uh, Neovim course. We were just hanging out this morning and doing that. Chat is sending you a lot of pog slides. I don't know if you have uh, BTTV. I, I am I do not know very much about I do not know very much about Twitter about Twitch culture. So explain to me Pog Slide. Okay, so if you're if you look above me on the stream, you see how there's like uh the guys sliding across the screen with the excited yeah. face. So there's an extension you can install that uh, allows you to add you know a whole host of uh, random extra emotes to the Twitch experience, mm -hmm. and so Pog Slide turns into uh a very exciting thing. Pog is just uh there's a classic emote Pog Champ in the Twitch Twitch universe, which just you send for when things are exciting. So mm -hmm. Pog Slide is just like another layer of excitingness. So Fine. there you go. <laughs> uh, anyways, it's it's nice to meet you. I mean, we've interacted a few times on on Twitch, but it, or on Twitter, but uh, first time that we were ever hanging out. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Should um, I explain what I, should I explain myself to the chat? Or? Yes, you should do a brief introduction so everybody can know some cool things about you. Okay, so um. Uh, Hi, I'm Hillel. <clears throat> so I most, I guess like the best way to describe what I do is I'm sort of a software researcher. I spend time like digging into like esoteric branches of like computer science to find techniques that like could be more widely useful, but aren't used because of either like poor marketing or poor education or just no one's figured out how to make it like accessible. And then I um, package those up into workshops and sell them to companies. So the main thing I'm known for is um, what's called formal methods, which is like essentially writing software blueprints and testing the blueprints directly. If you've heard the term like TLA plus, that's me. Mm -hmm. um, I also have like gotten some notoriety for like my work in software history and culture. I um, earlier this year did this piece where I interviewed um, 17 people who used to be mechanical engineers, then became software developers to talk about mm -hmm. like, is software really engineering? At which point I learned that you should never, ever, ever cross a bridge. You will die. <laughs> nice. Um, in my free time, I do a lot of juggling and I'm a chocolatier. So yeah, lots yeah. of cool pictures yeah. on, uh, on Twitch of chocolate. So even if you're not into, you know, programming Twitter, uh, there's definitely some great pictures of, uh, of chocolate there chat. If you want to want to check that out. Yeah. That's a, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see the piece about the mechanical engineering thing, but it's funny. I started off college and did two years of, uh, mechanical engineering stuff before I discovered programming. I, you might enjoy the, the story, which is that, uh, chats heard this before most of them, but like when I first started, um, when I first started like college and stuff, I thought programming languages were just like Spe spoken languages and i hated learning spanish in high school <laughs> and no one in my family is like very tech tech related or tech adjacent even really so like i didn't know that programming was pretty much like problem solving logic pattern matching all the parts that i like have come to love about programming so until my second year of school i thought it was literally going to be like I have to just memorize random things. And then that's like how you become good at programming. Cause that was how you became good at Spanish. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so then I took a programming class and we were writing Python and it was just like, write out your logic thoughts. And I was like, Oh my goodness, this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I, I, I kind of had a similar story where I, um, I was actually never going to be a programmer. I was wanted to be a physicist until mm. like around third year in college i just flipped the table and said i hate physics i love money <laughs> <laughs> good strategy though it's a good it's not the worst strategy <laughs> yeah 
cool so uh that's a little intro by the way if you're not following though on twitter you should follow Hill on twitter he's got a very impressive twitter uh i'm always jealous of the people who have like basically no follows and tons of followers so i'm always oh, impressed. So, 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 so to be very very clear about that i follow through a list oh like, i see I've, okay. I've got a list of like 300 people that's like a private list that i use for following um oh, i just i prefer nice. it that way because like I've, I've I've had friends who are just like occasionally like why did you unfollow me on Twitter like mm -hmm. that's weird and I'm just like you know what just nobody can see my follow list smart smart yeah because yeah, it is sometimes like I, you're just like you never tweet or other things you're like well I, I'm not gonna follow this person but you don't want to unfollow someone because it feels like you're making some big like condemnation of them <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> oh man so. Yeah, sweet. Uh, very cool. So today you asked a few weeks ago or something like that on Twitter, just like, hey, I'm going to port some stuff to Lua. And I was like, oh, sweet. Well, maybe we should just do that on stream together. So we can, uh, you can just share your screen. Chat will be able to see your your screen share and we'll uh, be able to just work through a few of those and we'll see what happens. We, we didn't really okay. prepare uh, chat. So as always, it's just a bit of freestyle and we'll just we'll just see. Okay, so now let's figure out how to share a screen. Okay, share. Um, I believe, do I have to, can I share the terminal? Uh, yes. So also, this is probably gonna like um, annoy a bunch of people, but I'm on Windows. You can cool. see this now. Yep. Nice, I we're can in. see that. Yep. Okay, so there's a couple of things I basically wanted to do. Um, I am self taught Vim. I've never really talked with like an expert. And while I've been using Vim for a long time, um, I. I'm sure that I've got like picked up a bunch of bad habits and stuff. Mm -hmm. And what recently happened was I got Neo. I'm, I mean, I've been on Neovim for a while, but I recently switched to 5.0 mm. and it has been awesome. And I've done some porting of like my um, Vim config to Lua and it's great. I can now like define like mappings like programmatically, which is amazing. Yep. Y yes. Right. Like a programming language. <laughs> yeah. The last a programming language that actually has things like I, I didn't have a close setting. I, I'm also gonna like warn everybody that I had really bad insomnia last night, and I'm running on like four hours of sleep. So um, <laughs> I'm I'm not like I'm not in tip top shape right now. Cool. We're all just chilling. That's, that's, so that's, that's gonna that's gonna lead to some like ability for like Twitch to make fun of me, which is cool. Um, <laughs> but in any case, the basically the last thing I've been unable to port because I don't really know Lua or like Vim that well is yeah. I've got a bunch of custom um, Vim functions I built. Mm -hmm. So basically to help me write or to help me like analyze stuff or to do autocompletes. And I'm really proud of them because like they've made my work a lot simpler, but they're also like the Vim script that I don't know how to port yet. And I can't <laughs> really switch to like, because mm -hmm. as I understand it, like you can call Lua from um, Vim, but you can't call Vim from Lua. Well, that's actually, you, we will show today that that's not really possible. So we've done quite a bit of work. I, and I think everything that uh, is very interesting was released in 0 0.5. So for example, and I can show you this as, as we're going to, but like you can even pass Lua functions in to places that expect like Vim, Vimal functions. So like in filter, right? So if you have like filter, that's a built-in Vim function, right? filter takes as an argument like the predicate or whatever uh and you can actually just do a lua eval and grab whatever that function was so if it's a lua ref and it's actually a function you can pass that directly into like filter or math uh so we can go yeah. bi-directionally like really well which is i think is one of the selling points or sort of like an affirmation that picking lua was a pretty good idea <laughs> right but like i don't think you can like um call like a, a vim you can't like load a vim config file like uh, source in this. yeah so you you can but it, it won't feel as like nice so we can okay. we can walk through how that happens um and there will be some parts i think like after i show yeah. you one or two things you'll be like oh i see okay I, and then okay. i think it'll fall into place yeah okay um then the last thing i'm sort of hoping for like mm -hmm. is that Figuring out how to like make edits without having to constantly close and reopen Vim just yes, to see my we changes. Yes, can, we can talk about that part too Yay. for sure. Okay, so loading up Vim. It takes a while to load because I don't know why. I'm going to have to figure that out, but that's a little <laughs> problem. Um, I have a little um, uh, bookmarking thing called 2, which lets me sort of jump through things. Oh, nice. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, 2 VimRC. Okay, so this is my VimRC. It is still an init.vim because like I didn't, like I still wanted to um, source <clears throat> functions.vim. Yep. Functions.vim, GF. Mm -hmm. is this this is the thing that i want to start slowly converting to um lua totally cool so um which directory is this in ah yeah so i'm going to uh just make right now i'll just start right now i'll just create like um vs um functions.lua 
and figure out how to sort of start mapping these over. Do yeah, you want me to walk through what these functions are or? Yeah, before we do that, maybe I think actually like my recommendation usually for when people want to start adding Lua files that they want to yeah. sort of like be able to call is um, like, do you know, like in Lua, you can do something like require. I don't know if you know. Yeah. Okay. So should I be putting in the Lua, in a Lua directory instead? Yeah. And I, my general recommendation for people too is for like functions that they want to keep in their like for their personal config, I make some subdirectory in my Lua folder. Like for me, it's just TJ. But for you, okay. you might want to do something like call it Hillel or some other name that you like to, to put there. Mm -hmm. um, and then that way you can actually refer to those as proper modules, right? Because then you can literally just do like require Hillel.functions, um, which, which works a lot better than like just exposing everything to global scope or something like that, right? Oh yeah, so like if I go to... Um... So if I, oh, no, that's not it. Um, so like sort of um, like that, right? Like this require yeah. plugins or yep. require. Um, yeah, exactly right. And I find that just like prefixing mappings. something with your name makes it much less likely that you install some plugin that like accidentally overrides the thing that you're thinking, right? Because if you have a fun or if you have a file in like, Lua slash mappings dot Lua. If any uh -huh. other plugin that you installed or like anything else also has a mappings dot Lua, it is unclear which one like require should pick, right? Like it, I don't, it'll mm -hmm. just pick the first one it finds in the runtime path, I think. So prefixing with your namespace is just like okay. a nice little way to keep those uh, separate. Okay. So the X, the, the namespace I tend to use in this case is um, XO. Yeah. Like um, to do add an XO. Um, directory to Lua. Cool. But um, we don't have because, to do that now. Yeah. Yeah. I just, that's why I'm leaving guys a to do. So yep. that way, like, I know to do it because, again, it'll be good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I also have a functions.lua that I was trying to port over and then, like, gave up. Cool. Yeah. We can, we, we can just walk through how you would, uh, um, how you oh, would. Oh, yeah. I'm seeing also on the Twitch that I should be zooming in a bit. Yeah. If you if you um, can make it bigger, but it's uh, totally fine either yeah. way. We'll figure it out. Forget how to do that in. Uh, I think it's control. No, that's not it. Uh, Just control plus out. maybe. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you're right. Oh, cool. it's the it's the most reasonable thing. Is this better <laughs> for everybody? Yeah, I think that that's that's better. Um, oh, the one other thing we could check too uh, is if you go back to the to the restream tab. Uh huh. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't always choose in the settings uh, to, if you click on the little settings icon, there there might be a button that you can choose for your uh, like video quality. I don't, so I, they just changed everything. So I don't actually know uh -huh. if it's still this way. Um, I've got video show input, uh, standard definition. Should I change it to high definition? Yeah, just change it to HD because I have it output at 1080p. So we should be able to get a, a nicer stream quality. Yes. I really I hope that my like ethernet doesn't just kneel over and die here. But... <laughs> I'm gonna disable yeah. um, OneDrive. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really a huge fan of fan of OneDrive. Um, I found out like the best way to like backup stuff is to um. Okay, this is this is so dumb, but like, what's the best, most secure place you can put your files if you um, if you basically want to like both ensure that they're like safe and also like not gonna be accessed by the company that you sent that you're like storing them on. Oh, I yeah, I don't know. That's a good that's a good question. I'm gonna propose it is Amazon S3 because <laughs> S3 is primarily used by enterprises, and if Amazon mm. snoops that. The regulators yeah. are going to say like, hey, you no longer qualify for this. And then like a bunch of companies mm -hmm. will have to drop S3 yeah. based on regulatory like, requirements. <laughs> and compliance. So therefore, Amazon's like the least likely to actually go in and look at like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I could buy that for sure. I could buy that. Yeah. Um, also, somebody's asking, I see in the chat, what is the um, um, the bang equals question operator? I think that's E1, E13, E7. Um, I believe, I have like a comment explaining what that is, but I believe that is the prefix is not that so it says like if this string does not start with this yeah. then do that mm -hmm. yeah there's uh there's a lot of bonus operators around in uh string comparison is a bit weird in uh vim <laughs> yeah cool all right so i think um so we can just we can just work through trying to do uh just one of these i mean we could work through mm -hmm. doing like the post the post inserter one it seems cool um yeah 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 so just to explain what this does mm -hmm. um this post inserter so um which is this yeah so if i basically listen po um 
So I, I basically do a lot of writing, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm on Hugo, and what Hugo does is it makes it like, um, is that you have this thing where you can basically inter in insert a hard reference like this, ref, yep. foobar, baz. Um, but I have like a lot of posts and remembering what all the references are is like <laughs> yeah. kind of annoying. So if mm -hmm. I go to, let me actually just open this in another tab, um, to site, ls, uh, cd, um, I believe it's in data. So I basically um, occasionally, I wrote this thing which basically just sweeps um, my entire like thing and just creates a list of every single post in a JSON. Mm -hmm. I would prefer to put it in a, y in a YAML file, but um, there's no way to like, easily do yaml in vim which is another yeah. reason i'm excited to try lua yep. because then i could just directly read the yaml files as opposed to having to do all these like weird transformations <laughs> yes mm -hmm. uh, um and then what happens is i can now do just ref and then i have a nice autocomplete so i can do like uh what's the most recent post um how to solve uh or at least ref oh i think it only actually activates if i'm in a markdown file so uh oh, mm -hmm. let me switch to a markdown uh tape uh to so I've been working on this post on um, graphs, um, abstract data types and um, formal methods. So let's try this. So if I do like ref, um, are we really engineers? I can now just like tab through them oh, and sweet. just pick mm -hmm. one and then just hit that and it just drops the reference in for me. Oh, very cool. So yeah, so that's like one of the functions I need to, that's one of the many functions, many, many, many functions I need to convert. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really nice though. It just yeah. drops it in for you. Yep. I've, immediately here's cool. another one i actually like because yeah. of course i'm going to just keep bragging about my cool like them stuff but, yes um, great here's here's one that i've actually found incredibly nice uh the, uh if i want to write like a footnote mm -hmm. i can just do faux like foot and it just drops in the foot over there and i can keep mm. writing and also puts at the very bottom the, um, yeah footnote for me so that way i don't have to like put it down and like write out it out and then, like go to the bottom and put that there in the right yep. place it just does it for me yeah i like it yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, we can definitely yeah. uh, get some of these these working for you as well. Um, I wouldn't call it super seamless. I don't know if it even works 100% uh, sure or not on Windows, but uh, there is a package manager called uh, Packer that you could switch to if mm -hmm. you wanted to, but it allows- oh, I'm, on pack I'm, on, I'm oh. on Packer right now. Excellent. I don't nice. know very much about it, but it was part of my like get everything onto Lua thing. I've yes. switched to Packer, but like, yeah. So the interesting bit for you for working with some of these other things is that um, it does allow you to say what Lua rocks dependencies you would like installed and it can install them for you and keep them in basically like similar to a virtual environment effectively like mm -hmm. that. So you could install like the LYAML package, which is a Lua rocks YAML manager like package mm -hmm. from Lua rocks. So you could actually just like install that and do some other things like that, which is pretty cool. So uh, just something to keep in mind for later. I don't think we should go down that route today, but if you yeah. wanted to be like, oh, okay, cool. I wanted to be able to do this or that. Um, there's some there's some interesting things coming on, you know, further along there that would be cool to do. Yeah. Sweet, okay. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's just see if we can we can port one of these then. I think it totally makes sense what you've, uh, what you've got going on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's pick, um, I'm going to actually just suggest, let's, let's find the good one. So let's go with skip, save macro. I don't use it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go with this. Like I'm migrating all the post stuff. Yeah. That one seems really cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one thing, I don't know if you've ever uh, considered this before, but you could actually do, um, like with a, like you could call, this isn't Lua specific necessarily. Uh, but you could actually just call complete. I don't know if you like the built-in function complete and you could actually Control XP. Yeah. But uh, so you can, if you uh, map something to call complete when you're in insert mode. So I have a couple mappings that do something like um, control X, control D will mm -hmm. run like rip grep over the entire directory. So I like control X, right. in like completion mm -hmm. thing and then D for directory. Okay. And it will look for anything that matches uh, the line that I have, but not necessarily like starting with the line. So it's cool for if you have something where you're like pretty confident you've written like this import before or like something about mm -hmm. this import. Um, but it just reuses the built in complete to do that. So we could actually even explore like if what you do every time for this is inserting this text into the buffer, we could actually like try and call complete and like 
take the JSON, turn it into a way that like works well for Vim's completion thing, and then just you mm -hmm. could control N, control P through the results, uh, which would be kind of fun. Oh, that would be fun. Um, yeah. Is there ability to sort of define like custom clean? Because I know if I do like control X, it gives me the list of choices, but yep. like I imagine like a lot of those are like fixed. Yep. So those ones are all fixed. But if you do just, I think it's just help complete. Um, I can check as well. Uh, because uh, there's a function which will allow you to basically reuse. Yeah, it's just complete. It'll let you reuse the uh, like the options that you have, and you can just pass mm -hmm. it a list of uh, things that you would like to basically show. And so then you can basically make your own your own completion options, which is pretty fun for like this kind of thing. Because then you could just do like Control X, Control you know, something else like, I don't know, yeah. P is already taken. So you wouldn't want to use P, but like, I don't know, control R, X. Or... Yeah. Yeah. It was something that you like, or it doesn't even have to really be mnemonic, but uh, just mm -hmm. something that you're not currently using. And then you'd be able to just drop, drop that in directly. And we can call that from the Lua side too. There's no problem. No yeah. problem there. That sounds fun. And I think yeah. step one is getting this into Lua. So that yeah. way I can like, yeah. Yeah. Let's, Clean let's test it out. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So the the very first thing I would do, um, and this will be this will be good too in sort of like thinking about how you can um, like re reload without having to restart Vim. I'd say there's Please. yeah there's two main ways that you can do this. The first one is if the mapping or thing that you're calling is a global function, mm -hmm. then all you have to do is basically re-execute the file that you're in. So in 0 0.5, I think you need to call Lua file. You can just do like colon Lua file percent to execute the current file. So Lua file space mm -hmm. percent, right? Um, in like the latest ones, you can actually just use source uh, and we because we added the ability to source Lua or Vim functions. Um, I don't, but I don't Yay. think that we had that. So then you can always just have one mapping to do source, right? So you could just do source percent or Lua yeah. file percent, but it doesn't really matter. So we can, for now, you just do Lua file. So if you're doing, um, if you do it as a global function, then it's very, very easy, right? Because like if the mapping mm -hmm. just calls a global, then that's okay. And I think mm -hmm. it's perfectly fine for your own personal config to expose stuff as globals because who cares? Like it's your config. Yeah. You just do whatever you want for it. The other option is, and it's a, it's not a ton more involved, but it, it's just something to, to know about is if you expose like your functions thing as a module and you call something from like require functions, then yeah. you, you have to know just a touch about how Lua basically like does require. And what require does is it looks for something in the like runtime path, more or less that matches the require string. And then it stores the result of that in a table, which is called like package.loaded. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so basically the, there's a list of Lua f things that have already been required so that you don't have to re execute the file every time. So of course, if you mm -hmm. change the file, it's not going to actually re execute that by default. What you have to mm -hmm. do first is basically say package dot loaded and then the key of whatever it is. So like package dot loaded dot functions for you. Cause you're in functions or like, um, package for me, it would be like package dot loaded. And then like just one key of something like tj dot functions right mm -hmm. um so you do like a string one i don't know if you know how to do um like so you would access it instead not like the way that you wrote it but actually package dot loaded left bracket string oh package dot loaded as like like that uh oh uh clo no so uh so package dot loaded a left bracket for a table access and inside of it would be a string i could just write it in like oh R i see like package dot loaded um exo yeah, just, just put it in the stream and that yep. way i can like oh yeah i'll just type i don't know why i'm typing in our private chat ah yes uh rocker boo's message is a good example Thank of you, what rocker you would boo. do yes um <clears throat> so if you set that to nil what happens the next time you call require is require looks in package.loaded when you and it'll be like i don't know what that thing is so then it will research the runtime path and find it again and then you can re-execute the file basically mm -hmm. um does that all make sense? So those are the two main. Yeah, so basically, I, I call packer loaded and set that to nil, and then um, rerun source, or do I just yeah. then recall the function? So then okay. you would need to like resource it or whatever um, you would okay. you would do. But so so that part, 
So for today, I think it's easier if we just expose them as global functions. Yeah. And there's, there's nothing too too crazy about that um, uh, for today. So we can just make some global function by declaring a function in general. Like good Lua practice is if you're making a global function, you start it with a capital. Or like mm -hmm. anything global just starts with a caps. So should I, should I be putting that directly in my init.vim instead, my init.lua instead of my, um, or my init.vim instead of like this like functions.lua then? Uh, I I like it just fine in a separate in a separate file just because okay I, I, there's nothing there's nothing wrong. So then with how, that. how do how do I how do how do I make sure that's global as opposed to like something that has to be required by a module import? Oh, uh, I just source it. Yes, so right. Just source it. Okay. Yep. So you just source okay. it, or in this case, you'd have to like Lua file it right in zero point five. Yeah. Lua file. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to also pull up um I think mappings Lua so I have like a reference of like yep. what Lua looks like. Yes, that's great. This made me really happy, just being able to sort of say, like, for <laughs> each, like, item in, yes. this, in this pair, just define these mappings, done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm i also a big fan of the fact that it's just so much easier to, like, extend what's happening instead of being like, well, this DSL doesn't really work to do things like a program. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. So, yeah, so if you want to make a global function, you could just say, like, function... Um, posts or something like that you know you can call it whatever yeah. you want instead of local function okay so yep. function let's call it like let's start with um post list just because i yep. figure oh and i'd say like first of all local um post file yep. equals yanka nice okay. yep oh and then I've, i should probably just because i'm using backslashes just make that um like wonderful that. look at yeah you're 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 pretty ahead of the game all right i like it i try yep <laughs> Okay, so then we have function. Post uh, if you list. put spaces there, though, it will literally try and put a space oh. before and after, though. So I think that part will be yeah. yeah. Okay, sweet, cool. So then we do function post list, and I probably do need the same like um, params. So yep. Could you let me just copy this all over? Um, just because yeah. it's easier. Beam, and then don't need this function like that. Okay, right. So now we've got this, and then. So. Basically, what I have to do is I first read the file. Yep. And then I want to decode it from JSON. Yep. I imagine that. So then, how do I? So basically, this is something we have to translate from um, Lua. I imagine. Yeah. So actually, the this part's very easy from transferring from something you've already written in VimScript that works. If you want yeah. to call the Vim function JSON decode, you just put vim.fn dot in front of it. So we expose all the Vim functions that exist in this table vim.fn so if you want okay. to call json decode or you want to call read file you just literally put vim.fn in front of it so now you uh have uh you, that that part will just basically work okay um vim.fn.keys and then you can do vim.fn.join so like okay and then the, and the end is just end then instead of end function Okay, so let's make sure this works. This yep. should basically work then. Yeah. Um. So I just do Lua file. Um. That. Uh, percent. Yeah, and then that'll that'll work just fine. Okay, so I'm gonna do something a bit silly. Yep. I can do this and just have something that um automatically like um, it's not gonna be executed. If I put it like yep. this, right? Yeah, yeah. I so think you might need Lua to put file. a dash dash in front of it to start a comment because now it's just like a random string. Yeah, I don't think Lua likes that, but yeah, now you're good. Oh yeah, I thought like I just put a random string as yeah. a, like, because I, I don't want I want this entire block to not be like executed. Yeah, it actually so, so comments are just like the same syntax as like block comments are the same as like uh, strings except with a dash dash at the beginning. So if you put dash dash, then it's actually just a comment. Yeah. Oh cool. Yep. So the reason I'm doing this is because um, for debugging I have this um command basically command e that just executes something in Vim script. Uh, yep. Let me see if it's down here. Uh, I've got the same one. It just like execute yeah. this line basically. Yep. Yeah, just execute this line. So I can now just do this to execute Lua, and then it would be Lua post list like that to. Yep. Okay, but then I have to give it like three values, but I think like none of these matter, right? So, so it's in just... in Lua, it's very forgiving. Uh, so if you don't pass any arguments, it will just put nil for all of them. So you can just do parent parent. If especially since we're not using any of the arguments, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um. So you can pass no arguments or way too many. Lua doesn't care. It will just either it'll fill nil in the spots that uh, didn't get passed. Oh, that's basically nice. yeah. So it's nice for doing optional arguments and stuff or like if you add a new argument to something later, it's just like, okay, well, it's nil because no one was mm -hmm. calling it before. Okay. 
So now I'm getting this error loading Lua. Yeah, so you need expecting. Yeah, you still need to yeah. call post list. So we need like left parent, right parent there. Yeah. Okay. So left parent, right parent. Okay, and that's because it's returning something. It's not yep. actually posting anything. Mm -hmm. So uh, to... to see if there's any. Oh yeah. I'm I'm just like occasionally checking chat to see if they have any questions that I can answer real quick. Yeah, they're. Uh... Uh... Oh god. Yeah, no, I'm not seeing any. Yeah, they were asking anything, some so. questions about the reloading thing. Uh, Jersey, the answer is Plenary's reloader literally just does this, but a few bonus things to to manage mm -hmm. stuff. So there's nothing else going on there. So then, could I do like echo Lua, like echo Lua post list to like see what the result is? Uh, How do I now? Yeah. yeah. Great, great question. So there's a couple options you could do. You could do echo, and then we have a function, and I'll just make sure. I'm pretty sure it's just Lua eval, help Lua eval. So that's like a Vim script function that's available to run uh, to run code. But yeah. we actually don't want, I don't think we actually need to do that. I think instead what's easier to do is to just use print in Lua um, because we've basically made print more or less act like echo. So you can just do Lua and then call the call the function uh, post list. Oh. Yep. And then loop print is just a function. So you can just, uh, you'll need to like put parentheses there. So it knows, but yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Beautiful. So super easy. So that just like one of the nice things about Lua, right. Is like, we mm -hmm. get to set up the VM. So we set up the VM. So that print <laughs> like prints like echo does. You don't have to do mm -hmm. any like weird magic and pass stuff back to like Vim script land to do anything there. Okay, so then how do I, how can I make this more Lua-y? Is there like a native thing in Lua for J decoding JSON reading files? Um, there is a JSON module, but it's 0 0.6, so you don't have it yet. Um, so okay. like, because uh, Lua by default in its library doesn't have that. But so instead of doing something like vim.fn.join, we could do table.concat. So table is the, the like table module in Lua land. Okay. Um, and actually I'll, I'll give you one other cool hint that we can do. That's, that's quite nice. So if like you just run a command right now, colon Lua, and then you can do, Oh, it's also recording. There we go. Lua. Yep. Uh, and if you do print, so if you just did like print and then table, uh, like, uh, this will, uh, oh, sorry with parentheses, my bad. Oh yeah. Yep. And you hit enter here. It's just going to tell you that you have a table. So this is not super mm -hmm. helpful by default table values are just printed as table. Um, but mm -hmm. if you do print and then do vim.inspect table, so we've uh, shipped with this uh, everywhere, which is basically a way to view everything that's in here. So now you can inspect all of the things on the table, like global. So mm -hmm. if you're like, I don't know what methods table has, well, it has concat for, e it has all of these available to you. So yeah, go ahead. So wait, so first of all, before I go on, so I'm basically want to ask two questions. So it mm -hmm. seems like the right thing to do here would be concat, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then we could do something like, and is this like, this is a method on the table itself. So it would be bookmarks.concat. Um, so. Or table.concat bookmarks. Yeah. So, but we first want to get the keys, right? So uh, table.concat takes a list. So you, instead okay. of join, we can just replace join. We should just be able to re replace vim.fn.join with table.concat at the beginning. And then that should just yeah. work. How about okay. you? Yep. Oh, this is a great question. I pairs. Yeah, we can, we'll definitely talk about this. Yeah. Okay. So then table.concat mm -hmm. and let's just again confirm if this works. Lua file. There we go. Okay. And Wait. because it's going to, yeah. Um, yep. And then I kind of want to make like another function that just runs these two things, but. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, wait, can I just do this? Would this work? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I think, it, do you have to do like bar or something? Like literally write out like bar. Uh, with like bracket or like angle brackets around it. I can literally never, I, I, I feel like I should probably know this, but I can never get this I, to actually work the way I expect <laughs> it to work. Yeah, I think I'll just do that like yeah. one extra step right mm -hmm. for now. Um, yeah. So, okay, so that gets us step one. Then to get the keys out, um, and we can't do that because we don't have the JSON module. Is that the case? Uh, so this one, we I think this should be available to you. I think we have a function uh, table underscore key. So vim.table underscore keys is a way to get the keys of a, of a table. So you can check all, all of the things under vim are mm -hmm. available in help. So you can just do help vim.table underscore. Um, 
Uh, nope. Sorry, sorry. Vim.tbl. I'm I'm not I'm I'm reading it out in my head aloud. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see. Yep. So People. yeah. So Lua comes with Ooh. very very small standard library, right? Um, yeah. So we sort of the way you should think about the Vim global is that is our um, standard library that we're shipping like in addition, and you always know when it's something that's like Vimy if you see Vim dot at the at the beginning. So Vim dot table okay. keys is like an all Lua implementation of getting the keys of a table, right? So it's not like okay. shilling back to Vim script or anything like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, that's nice. Okay, yeah. and then let's just confirm this works. Uh, One thing yeah, I like to works. do as well is if um, the file I'm running is like, I'm just going to execute it each time to do something. I'll just put calling post lit, like oh. print post list at the bottom of this file, right? That's so smart. whenever I do Lua file, um, I, I do that. And I have like, this is just like a personal mnemonic of mine. I have like leader X to run the current line and leader leader X to run the file, um, which is kind of kind of a nice little mnemonic for me. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm using right now leader E to run the to mm -hmm. run the um, thing. I, I've never put any leader leaders in, um, but yeah, that's a good idea. I'll yeah. um, it's a, just uh, more for a few for a note for chat. Not saying we have to do anything with it right now. <laughs> yeah, just make that note for myself. There's, there's always mm -hmm. that challenge of trying to both like follow all these like fun tangents in the space mm -hmm. of like making things better, but also like keep on track so that way it's <laughs> useful for everybody. Yep. I, yeah, I yeah. do a lot of teaching and just like that like balance is like one of the top 10 hardest parts of top 15 oh, definitely. parts of teaching. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. So now the thing that I wanted to ask also yep. is that I noticed that if I looked at, um, what was it? Uh, did that, does everybody know about Q colon in the chat? Mm, Q colon is a good one. Tell them. Yeah. So basically, if you hit um, Q colon, so let me just um, just uh, so it would be uh, uh, Q colon and um, Q slash. So if you do Q colon, it opens up a list of all of the commands you've ever run, and you could do things like search them. So I could basically do like search for ref, mm -hmm. um, and then you could just find the one that you do. Um, like this one that I was curious about uh, was um, dim dot inspect table, mm -hmm. and I see this I S this for each I. Mm -hmm. um, you also have Q slash, which is the same thing except over all of your searches. So these are like super, super useful for like realizing, oh, I did this thing like six days ago and I'm trying to remember what it was that I did. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it's, and then it's nice too because you can yank them and everything like like that afterwards, which is great. Can I show like one of my Vim articles for the chat? Yeah, I feel of course. like you might enjoy it. Shill okay, as much so as you I want. Do, so I think if I do um, po, uh, yeah, there we go. So if I do um, at least one Vim trick you haven't read. Oh, nice. Uh, actually, where does was it? Uh, is this one? Wasn't this pretty recent? Oh uh, no, this was like this was like two years ago. Oh, okay. Um, I thought I just saw that. I'm just gonna find it on my site. Okay. I think I might have referenced it because I was doing a like a, a like a gimmicky like, n squared oh. likes equals n. Oh yes, that's where I saw it. the the uh, the vim the vim tricks uh, <laughs> the vim yeah. tricks thread. Yeah, that one was a good one. Yeah, at least one. So I just linked a post on the um, chat. At least one Vim trick you might not know. Nice. Okay, so let's go. So basically, the thing I noticed was you have this for each I, and basically they say that for like um, Lua, yep. um, if you want to sort of like iterate through a thing, you use this I pairs thing, right? So there's there's two separate. Uh, so we should probably take one step back before we we get that far. So in Fine. Lua, yeah, the <laughs> in Lua there's. Uh, there's only one way to like store data like this sort of structured data, right? And it's tables. So tables are both arrays and maps, right? I, I don't know if you know that or not. Basically, it turns out like PHP got it right all along. <laughs> that is there. We've got a couple of people in chat who will like to to like to hear that. And I'm sure you'll get quote tweeted about that uh, today. So, oh, no, it's, it's actually interesting because so um so one of the languages I work on is called TLA plus. Right. Mm -hmm. And um the thing about TLA plus is that there's a separate thing for operators, which are like the high level like functions and the yeah. functions, which are actually mathematical functions. Mm. And it turns out that like you can actually express structures and like list sequences as special cases of like mathematical functions mm. so everything is just a function and you're just like ah so uh yep php got it right everything is both <laughs> a structure and a list and a function nice so i like giving that gag to people yeah i hear, I hear php is a lot better these days yeah we we've got the uh, jersey in the chat and he's a big he's a big php php guy so he's, uh, ha he's happy to hear 
<laughs> here's here's the thing that actually um jersey is going to probably enjoy then um i mentioned that like i was doing physics and i decided to switch to programming mm -hmm. um in physics like everything i'd done had been in like cnc plus plus and like yeah. matlab for like labs mm -hmm. um and then my first internship was php and it was like a mind-blowing revelation <laughs> that like languages could be better than c plus <laughs> plus like oh man like I can yes. actually like have tables and like I can refer to things by strings. This is changing my life. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I can just put a string somewhere and not have to worry that I just crashed the program. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And and then I discovered Python and that just like took over. So yeah. No, I, I that uh that resonates PHP with was, me. PHP was the gateway drug. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> Oh, but so okay, so uh so tables can be lists or arrays, right? So yeah. there's two different methods for iterating over tables that are built in. And these are the mm -hmm. ways that uh, I would say like people, everyone should use, right? Which is I pairs, which is what you mentioned. So I pairs is guaranteed to execute in like numerical order and mm -hmm. to only give you uh, like numerical indices, right? So mm -hmm. if you had a table that had shared, uh, which sometimes is like nice to have actually a uh, shared like list and a map. So you had something in slot one, two and three, right. But also yeah. something that was like extra opt equals a value. It will only mm -hmm. loop over one, two and three. Bindicts. So, yep. So, and then the, the other one pairs. So I pairs versus mm -hmm. pairs pairs will iterate over every single key in the table. So numerical mm -hmm. and non-numerical, but, uh, it, it is not guaranteed to execute in order. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. something to like to look out for for that. Um, okay. So how does this relate to um this thing I noticed again in um this um for each and for each I? Can yeah. I replace I pairs with for each I or for each? So I think that you can, yes. And I think you're using Lua JIT right now. If you do like colon version. Um, Yes, you built with yep. LuaJIT. So LuaJIT has some non-Lua 5.1 things in it. Um, and I don't mm -hmm. think table dot for each and table dot for each I are in Lua 5.1. I have to check again. Um, but so like in it, general, it, yeah. It sounds it sounds like this is a um thing and it's has to be looking up in the Lua docs and like not like wasting chat's time yeah. with this. Yeah, yeah. So 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 you could use those, but in general I still recommend like uh yeah. pairs or or I pairs, yeah. Okay, so let's let's keep this moving. So we yep. got this, like, yeah, that's working. Moved, yeah, boy, hooray. <laughs> plus one, plus one, plus one. Um, for all sign, for all sign. Uh, <laughs> the date. <laughs> I love it. I love uh, it. Um. Okay, so let's now go on to get post. Mm -hmm. So I will copy this over. Okay, and it's getting mad at me because it's like, yeah, none of this is like valid. <laughs> That's not Change a real that. language. And you're like, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and then I probably can't do this. Uh, so I'm wondering, so like one of the things I've noticed about yep. like um, Vim is it seems like like Bram Nuobar is like he's scrambling to like add to features of Vim stuff <laughs> that like NeoVim adds. And like, it's making me wonder because like apparently they're now adding Vim 9, which is going to be like faster. Uh, yeah, I, we, uh, I do have opinions about Vim 9. <laughs> we can talk about it. Uh, chat, chat likes hearing me talk about it. So we're not wasting anybody's time. If you're interested, okay. we can definitely, we can definitely oh, chat. Oh, I'd be a interested in hearing about, about that. Let's, let's look at this function portal. Then we can take a quick break. Awesome. That um, sounds good. Also, how much time do you have? Like, I'm pretty flexible on time. Oh. Let me just make sure. But I don't like, well, I want to be conscious of your time. Yeah, I have at least four hours. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to get a lot of work done then. <laughs> Fridays, I take, uh, I work four tens Monday through Thursday, so that Friday I can uh -huh. hang out on stream all day. Oh, nice. I'm, yeah. I'm an independent consultant, so like I've got really flexible hours. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I wasn't planning on getting like any other work done today. So Sweet. So just going to get up to get, get to the grocery store, maybe go to, go to the gym. Um, anyway, so, so first of all, I noticed I can't do this like dot, dot, dot with oh, um, get post. Uh, you can actually. That's actually the way that you can say that there's a variable number of arguments in Lua. Okay. So then it's a so so this is getting mad at me for a different reason. Yes. Um. So you can't have the s colon that doesn't know what's going on yep. with s colon, and then if statements. So you do if and oh, then actually 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 yeah, before we keep going. Um, yep. Go ahead. Is, is there a Lua analog to read file? Um. There is, but it's like, uh you have to like open the file descriptor and close it and stuff. So I, uh -huh. if I have read file, I usually just leave it unless I'm using, like I have some other libraries that I've written for like plug stuff that I 
use, but a read file is fine, I think. I guess the I guess the reason I'm a bit uncomfortable with like using read file is specifically, and I'll explain like my discomfort here yeah. is because I sort of assume that Vim is a lot slower than like Lua, and I've definitely had a little bit of performance problems as you saw from like opening like the thing taking a while, and I'm like mm -hmm. a little bit worried that like using just like replacing everything with flat Vim like dot fn dot like yeah. whatever is going to keep make things slow. I don't know if that's a real like concern or not. It's just like what's running through my head. Yeah, so I would say. Um... <clears throat> The first bit is one thing that makes VimScript really slow is that VimScript mm -hmm. reads and executes every line every time. So if you're inside mm -hmm. of a for loop, it doesn't know anything about a for loop. So like if you have a tight loop in VimScript, mm -hmm. there is no like benefit on the second pass as opposed to like every other language that's going to like recognize you're in a for loop and do some construct uh -huh. to make sure that like it executes better right okay so like if you have something for example like a vim script function and then you have to do something for every single line that's like a bad mm -hmm. thing right because you're going to be re-executed like re-evaluate parsing and evaluating and then doing something every time that that probably explains why my TL, why my, my indentation file is just takes forever to run. Yes. So and also because I was doing horrible dark magic. In it. <laughs> yes, and the other thing is that every time in VimScript, this is separate from. So we'll I'll do like another tangent after this. But in VimScript, mm -hmm. every time you make a new function call, it has to like basically allocate a new local args dictionary. So like you get. Because that's why you have to do like a colon in front of mm -hmm. arguments in VimScript stuff, right? So there's like this whole world of like other problems that happen for like VimScript itself versus things like if you just do vim.fn, that's actually like mm -hmm. a very um, tight correlation to a bunch of the C code underneath. So it is not mm -hmm. so bad. Like if you call vim.fn.read file, the m vast majority of the like performance of that is going to just be IO, like no matter what. So like, that's mm -hmm. an example of one that doesn't matter so much. So yep. yeah. So it sounds like to some extent, like using the problem with VimScript isn't like the stuff that's, that's like the built-in functions. It's everything else. Yes. Right. Uh, and so, so that's like a really nice thing is that we already have a bunch of like really well-tested, really like cross-platform things mm -hmm. for <laughs> like read file is nice like i don't have to think about anything else except like if it works for read file and read file like automatically expands like a path or other things like that okay cool i don't have mm -hmm. to think about that anymore and that's nice the one difference is json decode and encode are like not as performant as the new lua module that we added in 0 0.6 like we have vim yeah. dot json dot decode which is like faster but for that's only for things like LSP where you mm -hmm. need to serialize and deserialize like maybe your whole file like every keystroke <laughs> in JSON. Mm -hmm. uh, for this kind of thing I wouldn't I wouldn't be worried at all. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Um for the record, sorry, just really Go quickly for um I just also want to say that I absolutely didn't realize just how much I love this, but I absolutely adore the fact that like the highlight um like the, the um the yank highlight is just so oh. nice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's it's very cool. And it was not super difficult to, to implement either. Yeah, because before that, I would actually like commonly do a thing where instead of like yanking, I would delete and then undo so I could see exactly mm. what I deleted and mm -hmm. what I copied. Yeah. And now I don't have to do that. Yeah, the visual yeah, indicator is like really, really helpful, especially for like wanting to stop using visual mode to do yanks as well, right? Because then you can like yeah. actually just confirm that it's what you yanked, which is nice. Yeah. Anyway, so, so we've got now Vim, if A equals zero equals one. Yeah, so, so that's whatever the first argument is to this. I don't remember. This gets called. From... Let me actually, yeah. Let me actually explain like what this is doing. So yeah, get great. post currently. If I do get post, um, if I basically do get post, um, oh yeah, it doesn't. I didn't. I didn't build a. Um, oh yeah, it's called po. So if I do like po um, mm -hmm. list of articles that programs get, what it does is it copies into the um thing the yep. full length. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. If I don't do that, if I just do po, what it does, if I basically um basically it just lists everything mm, now a zero mm -hmm. is the number of arguments in, in uh, ah yes script. okay cool that's right i remember that now it's been a little bit yep so the way we can do that in uh, lua is you could say something like um a, uh, just after the function is like well we could do select this is a little bit more complicated but it is kind of cool so there's a built-in function called select um mm -hmm. and select lets you basically ask some questions about uh 
I don't know. So so select can actually do something like uh, select, and then you do parenthesis, and then you need the string, um, mm -hmm. and an octothorpe. I like saying octothorpe, but uh, you know pound sign, of course, whatever, whatever people like to say. And then you can do uh, another like close the string, and then comma, and then dot dot dot. So this actually, what this does is it takes the args list that you have above, and this tells you what is the length of this. So the wait, 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 wait. So are you saying that I can do the following? Um, uh, you you can almost do that. You're you're very close. Actually, what you would do is you would do select one and then uh, dot 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 as the other thing. So okay, uh, but so it's not a, like not as a string though for for the one. Uh, okay, so yep. so so dot 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 isn't a like, it's 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 not. I can't use it just directly as a value. I right. have to go through by a select. Yes, you could instead do something like uh, local args equals uh, and then create a table from this, which would just be local args equals like left curly brace dot 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 right curly brace, um, and in this case that's totally fine because yeah, I mean normally dot 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 does not create a table, right? Okay. So like if you were doing something where you were more concerned about performance, like this got called like a 10,000 times a second, you may not want to yeah. create 10,000 new tables. But since this only gets called whenever you press tab occasionally, that's totally fine. Yeah. And so now you could just do pound args on line 20 there, um, like without select even, because uh, you've already made it a table. This, there's like two options that you can do for this, right? Which is... Uh, and this is an example of where you'd want to have a list with... Keys. Ah, sorry. Uh, Pound goes in front of it. Uh, it th it's an operator. Oh. Yep. So that's the length operator in Lua. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Um, good life choices. So okay, so let's <laughs> let's let's do let's. I'm just gonna put it like that, just so yeah. I can like know both, because I'm probably gonna come back here to like figure out. Yep. Like use this as a reference point. Okay. Also, a comment that I've been thinking about a lot yeah. is that like what I've been calling civet practice, which is you know how everybody's like, oh yeah, everybody just copies and pastes from Stack Overflow to like solve problems. Yeah. Nobody really optimizes help files for copy pasting to go like, well, people <laughs> clearly find this a useful way of like yeah. learning and writing code. Why don't we make it easy? Why don't we make like stuff designed to be copy and paste to help mm -hmm. people? Like more templates or cookie cutter stuff or like yeah. outlines or demonstrative examples. I so, think cheat sheets that, a good yeah. example of one that is kind of optimized for that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Although I think Chi-Chi's like give you the information, doesn't give you like skeletons. Mm -hmm. Instantly, have you ever shown can I can I also do another tangent? Can I like want yeah, this thing I've built from this amazing cheat sheet I built? Yeah. Uh let me pull it up. Uh one T. Oh no, I think that's uh let's actually do that. I think that's one three. Okay. Uh I might have to actually change the screen sharing for this. Mm -hmm. But uh one three. Uh oh, that's broken. I've got to figure out what's wrong with that. Um <laughs> I, I've got a lot of, a I know lot the of customizations. <laughs> so uh, how do I switch the screen share? Like, uh, in... I think you just got to go and stop screen sharing and then choose a new new option. Oh, yeah. So um, Lithium X asks, what's with the PowerShell, bro? And the response <laughs> to that is that... Um... <laughs> yeah, also, so first of all, Josie Milker. Yes, um, the Ink highlight is built into NeoVim. Yeah. Um, it was added with 0 0.5. Um, yep. Now, then the second person is like, what's with the PowerShell in Windows? And um, the answer is I program in Windows. And the entire reason I program in Windows is because um, I am this big fan of this program in Windows called Auto Hotkey, which mm -hmm. lets you essentially mm -hmm. like directly script against like the entire like GUI shell of Windows. Mm -hmm. So um, like, for example, I can by hitting like the numpad key for like one and then um, w it opens up my website in like the file explorer whereas if i hit like numpad key two and then like j it opens up like the j ide mm -hmm. i can also do things like um yeah um lithium's basically saying like um window auto, auto is awesome like yep, it is absolutely fan it is absolutely fantastic it changed my life it is like the i am now like really un unsettled by like the new macbooks that are super fast because like now i've got this tension <laughs> of do i want like speed or do i want auto hotkey um <laughs> yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Lithium, actually, so you use a, a Stream Deck. What I do is I actually key a lot of stuff to my um, numpad. So, like, my numpad is, like, instead of having, like, mm. numpad 1 put a 1 in, it puts in, like, it, it triggers, like, a um thing. Oh, cool. Um, K-Monad nice. K is not a drop-in replacement for AutoHotKey. AutoHotKey is much more sophisticated. On a Mac, um, what I recommend is a thing called Hammerspoon. Yeah, Hammerspoon um, which cool. is which all Which, incidentally enough, is also in Lua. Yeah, right. Um, 
So maybe NeoVim is going to be giving me like the skills I need to actually like begrudgingly <laughs> switch to Mac at some point in my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Hammer Spoon's um, cool. Any yeah. Anyway, so let me just quickly, um, as a tangent, um, stop sharing. <laughs> uh, so, and then switch to sharing screen. Let me share my um, cheat sheet. So this is a exp experimentation I made to basically making a better cheat sheet. Um, this is for a language called TLA plus. And it's something, it's a very complicated language. So here's what the cheat sheet looks like. It's troubleshooting, um, some gotchas, the logic, the types. Why is there all this blank space? There's all this blank mm -hmm. space because this is actually seven cheat sheets. Here's cheat sheet number two. And here's cheat oh, sheet cool. number three. <laughs> and each one is exactly the same layout. So like as a person's learning, they can use the cheat sheet that has only the information they know. Oh, and sweet. that way they like always... So it means that they're never going to see like blank information they don't like know about that like, right. might distract them or like give them the wrong information. And it also means that um, as they progress, they have this like spatial intuition of where things are on the cheat sheet. So like by the time they get in, they don't need to find anything anymore. They know where everything already is. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it yeah. So I find it really handy. I've got to build, I've got to build like one for, um, a couple other languages. It's, mm -hmm. it's it's a lot of work to build this, but I think it's like super valuable in the end. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I like that a lot. Um, I think I wrote a bit about it actually on my blog. I'll just drop that in the chat too. Um, um, which it, it includes a um, it also includes a like file. So if you like end up needing to like use it yourself, mm -hmm. you can like um, it, it's it's got like the unlock like pamphlet. Very anyway, cool. so back to um Vim. Uh, stop nice. screen sharing, switch back to terminal. Uh, allow, okay. So, so we now have this and now we want to, in this case, what I do is I drop it directly into um, the, um, the clipboard buffer. Yep. Mm -hmm. How can I do that with um, in Lua? Yep. So uh, one thing before we get too much further, at the end of the if statement on line 20, you need to put a then. So, uh, uh, so it goes if and then condition and oh. then Whoa. then. Yep. Yep. Um, and then it, uh, so that's that's why we were seeing some other stuff there. So it's still just yeah. end at the end. So then you need to do for key in and then do. Uh, if, uh, Although this is going to have to be I pairs, right? Yep. Yeah. So, we, we, and we'll, we can get there eventually, but like it can take any, um, yeah. So, yep. Perfect. Nice. Mm hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. And then the last one would just, that end four just changed, changes to end. Yep. Yay. Cool. And then this would be, if I recall correctly, dot, dot, dot 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 double dots post is the same and then this would i just put it as, as print yep. right and print actually can take multiple arguments too so if you wanted you can just do like print key comma that other thing comma the other thing i don't oh, i don't that's... think it puts tabs or anything in there by default so it'll just we'll find out yeah science yeah i always forget as soon as i'm telling someone else what's going to happen <laughs> mm -hmm. um okay so the way you can put something in the register is there's actually a function called set reg so we can just look okay. up the help function for set reg okay and so that just takes in a register name and a value so sure enough oh wow we can just call vim.fn.setreg put in the thing that we want there and then we're all done fn.setreg mm -hmm. and then i've got a, i've got this has to be in quotes i'm assuming yep. mm -hmm. and then like this uh i think you have i think you have one too many right brackets there yeah yeah there we go uh, so I think that that should work. Let's find out. Yeah. Uh, let's say this does to say um get post, and then I will just do this boop and hey that worked. Beautiful. And now let's make sure it works with um. So then I just do like Lua. Lua get post, and then I'm just gonna put some like string, and it should yep. just. Oh, I just put in a random nonsense string and. Yeah, nice. it probably puts in nil or something now. So yep, it put it, it put it put null in. Very cool. Yep. So you could check and see if that thing's in the post or not or whatever, but that's oh. totally fine. Oh yep. no, it's not. I, I put yeah, it's it's not in the post. So just give right. me a null. That's interesting. Yeah, I probably tries to implicitly convert it to a string or something like like set reg probably tries to convert whatever it is into a string, and the conversion of nil is v null uh, for like Lua so, or uh -huh. for Vimal side. Yeah, sweet. So then that's pretty much that pretty much just like works.
Um, I, I do want to confirm that it works with. Um, let me try the following. Yeah. Uh, Vim macro tricks. Uh, no, but, but I just I, I I want to confirm that like it actually yeah um works with something decision tables. Okay, that's a, that's an easy one. Uh, and do I how do I put it as yeah? So boop boop boop. Decision tables. Ah, perfect. It's working. Sweet. Um, yeah, so we've now been going. Yeah. Go ahead. We've now been going an hour. Is it okay if we do like a five ten minute break? Yeah, of course. That's great. I can okay. just um I can just turn off your side. You don't have to exit or anything. And then oh, if you yeah. come back okay. uh, in five minutes, then we'll uh, okay. We can keep going. Sounds good. Cool. All right. Well, we'll be back in five. Just uh, message me in the in Twitch chat or something when you're ready to go. A AFK. AFK. <clears throat> Do, 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 do. What's up, chat? Are, are you all having fun? Chat, is everyone having fun? Good stuff. Awesome. Yup. Yup. Super interesting stuff. Great. I'm glad everyone's having fun. Um... Just got here, but I'm having a blast. Zap, that's what I love to hear. Wait, Quasi, are you really going to only show the Primogen clap here instead of also showing me? What's going on with that? Of course I'm having fun. <laughs> Link twice if you're having fun for real. I just spent five minutes configuring on Yank and not following anything here. Nice. Nice. I never heard of Vimscript. I'm going to check what it is. You don't need to. It's okay. <laughs> Did you make new emos with Prime? Yeah, Primogen Clap 1 and Primogen Clap 2. My my new favorite emote combo. My new favorite emote combo. Grimship still does more than Lua, unfortunately. Yeah, there are some things not easily available. Uh, but we're working on it. I made a sweet mod of my LSP config this morning. I only add one of my LSPs if it installed so it's not the me. Big brain, Waylon. That's a big brain move right there. That's a big brain move. Let me put this uh, over here so I can look. Oh, well, he's just going to message me when he's ready. Need to change of function. Do, 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 do. Okay. Like right now, Lithium this morning, we were working on uh, doing uh, Lua auto commands. We're not ready yet, <clears throat> but we're getting closer. Thanks for the Yank highlight tip. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, if you ever see Clayson in the chat, you should thank him. C. Clayson. Yeah, so all the CI is red um, because this one, I know why it's broken, but most of the other ones, it's just because the linter was busted. So it's okay. So how do I start with going from a knit oven and moving it all over to Lua? Um, well, you can watch the VOD of this. We'll also upload a YouTube video. There's also a good VimConf talk that's not really ready yet, but it's, uh, we'll get there. Will CSS and LSS4 format. That's up to them. You got to go, uh, at, make an issue on their, uh, their thing. Never use VimScript, but it's nice to see how to convert stuff. Yeah. Uh, what did you used to do on the weekends when you just joined a job? Wait, what? Uh, wait, okay. What? Um, when I just joined, are you asking like, what did I do when I'm first joining a job? I'm trying to write Copilot Pilot plugin in Lua. There's one in VimScript. You don't need it to be in Lua. VimConf was really good. Awesome. I am using Clang D. Yeah. Yep. You can just do it one by one. It's good. The stream you did with Bash running might be a more beginner friendly, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that one is a good one too. Me and Bash will hopefully do another one at some point. Uh, but she's been super busy. So, I don't know. So, at some point, we'll try and do another one with Bash. Yeah, I saw she was learning Docker last night. All right. Let me go grab a little bit more coffee and get up and stretch. And then uh, probably when I'm back, we'll uh, keep going. I'll turn on I'll turn on our favorite song uh, while we're waiting, though. Okay. I'll be right back, chat. Oh, Miss Vimkov again. Well, it's okay. It's okay. You'll be able to watch the VODs. Like 
like secrets that slowly slip Shadow in the spotlight No stars inside Chase in the daylight If you don't care, I don't care All right, I am I'm back. Um, was there? All right, what did I miss? What did I miss? Um, I've coded in my free time for a while, Mark. Uh, I just I like uh, I like coding, but I don't think you have to. To um, I don't know. I don't think you need to for your job or anything like that. Forget performance diff between Vinscript and Lua. Uh, I mean, you could just like, I, I do have one, I do have one project with a very simple one. Um, it, it's, it's a terrible benchmark. It's like literally a terrible benchmark. Um, but this was the benchmark that uh, Bram used for Vim9 stuff. So something like this, where you're just summing a bunch of numbers from one to here. Um, in regular vim code i don't have i don't have the benchmark here it took five seconds five five point oh seconds to do the same code in lua it took point zero zero two seconds it's just an example of like how much faster it can be but it's dumb tutorial style content on how to make plugins it's very hard though because every plugin is in some ways different right like if all you want to do is learn how to write lua there's good stuff for that but yeah Vimcom talks on YouTube already? No, we're working on it. Uh, maybe collab with Prime on refactoring plugin? What about it? I, I mean, I work. I just actually submitted a PR for it, believe it or not. Everything you're gonna buying Thorson's book. Nice. Is there a telescope key map for built-in key maps? No, there is not. There's no way currently to inspect that. <clears throat> Plugins are just distributed in the middle of this. Make it on stream. Uh, it is very hard to find time to stream 
Uh, does Lou have a native way of knowing if a value is in a table? Uh, there's vim.table like contains, I think. Help vim. Oops. Table contains. Which you can use. That's for a list, though. You could also check, like, you can just do, like, Lua if, um, table x not equal nil. Whoops. Well, not equal nil. Then something. Right. That'd work, too. Good luck, Lithium. Have fun. Put Thorsten section on expressing parsing with a prime parser to use for... Nice. What's your font? JetBrain's mono. Lots of prayers. <laughs> How do you find APIs like that? I have a hard time translating what I want to do with available in the Vim API. Sure. Um, spend 10 minutes. Lua print Vim uh, table keys Vim. You could look at what basically each one of these is and just read the help for them. Or for the ones that seem useful. That's a good way to know if something exists at all. all right, it's just Lua. So like every table has all the things in it already you could just like print new and cheat sheet dot sh i not that i know of uh are you back hello do you want to get started i'm good to go whenever i can answer chat's questions later it was like i don't need to talk to them you know what was that command again so you can do something like this lua print vim dot inspect vim dot table keys vim something like that Oh, I can't, uh, I have you muted right now. So if you want to talk, then, uh, you have to type in chat so that you didn't accidentally uh, say anything. Do you want, do you want to come in? Okay. You're back. I'll put you on. You're coming on. You're coming on now. Hello. Yo. All right. There we go. Sweet. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. So, uh, should we start off by talking about Vim 9 script? <laughs> So yeah, let's 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 ease in gently. So yeah. <laughs> let's start with you giving your rant about Vim nine. Yeah. So uh, I don't I don't have I think a really good uh, talk about it actually. Justin Keys uh, just gave at VimConf to talk a little bit about why I think like in general it's not a great idea to like create a new programming language for your text editor like again, um, and like the big push would be the thought of. Uh, Right, like you want to create high impact features for your users impact being or like high leverage right which is like impact divided by cost and like the cost of making a new language is just like incredible <laughs> right like it is it's very hard to to do it so yeah it seems just really really hard to do and uh, so I, i'm like of course disappointed like i would have loved to see like vim choose lua or some other language too, but it would have been cool. Like if, if Vim chose Lua and we could like have more like overlap for those things, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it, it would be cool if that worked and people then would be able to like write some wrappers between some Vim specific things and some Neo Vim or, or whatever, you could have some subset, but uh, there's still a lot of like really big quirks for Vim nine script uh, because mm -hmm. it, it, it is, so, so for example, I, I, I'm, I'm writing, <laughs> I, I still haven't decided if it's a joke or not project, but I'm writing a project called Vim Ninjit. Rocker actually just linked it in the chat and it's a way to parse Vim nine and then emit basically Lua code that could run inside of NeoVim. Um, and it's mostly just like an exercise in me practicing like fun stuff. I wrote a decent amount of it in Lua using like LPEG and then I mostly scratched that and I've been writing my own parser in Rust just to explore um, for, for mostly for fun. I'm like learning a lot of stuff doing it. Um, but, but so, so there is a, uh, there is some like some universe where I finish this project and it can emit Lua code <laughs> and that like Lua code executed by LuaJit could be like faster than Vim yeah, I've script. I've, I've seen this bench benchmark and it's just yes. like, so and the benchmarks are dumb. They're just the benchmarks that Bram used like the first time when he was saying like, why should they make a new Vim script version? Um, so, so I just used them to show like, I don't think that the benchmarks are that like impressive for Vim nine script, like out of all programming languages, like, yes, it's much better than Vim script, but there's still like some weird stuff. Like for example, I'll, I'll type some stuff in the chat. Like, although he just changed this now, so it's not as big of a deal. 
but like mm -hmm. g colon var equals thing right is like how you can set a variable but they removed let as a requirement so you used to always have to do let g var equals thing so it was obvious that you started g var but mm -hmm. g is also short for the global command right so it's also like uh oh, no. you can have g my sub other thing or something like this right and that's like a valid command because you can replace whatever you want with other things and and it wasn't like so my suggestion to like bram which he doesn't have to take he it doesn't matter i'm not like upset yeah. at him or anything obviously Does, right I, I feel like bram doesn't really take that much feedback from the neovim community yeah he, uh, like i made the issue on vim because i'm writing a parser and i didn't know how to parse said thing mm -hmm. <laughs> so i was like what what like what this is confusing for me but like i thought every x command should just be prefixed with a colon so anytime you wanted to do something like echo hello you would have to put colon in front of it so that it's like obvious when you're doing something that's like in this land of x commands versus when you're doing something that's like a programming language right and this is yeah. like the perfect opportunity to do that kind of thing because you're already going to write some subsection of new things that are incompatible with old stuff so like yeah. why not just prefix those um but the answer was that like that would be kind of annoying and uh like to for users but i i thought the opposite so there's also just like kind of i think a disagreement about like what users want and i've seen just so many people get excited about like having lua and yeah and it like has invigorated a lot of new plugins and unlocked plugins that were just impossible to do before like i, I wrote telescope i don't know if you know about it or not that's fine telescope I mean, by the way i was actually i was gonna ask how i can make telescope faster because like um currently like if i do telescope like i'm gonna do a slash buffer yeah um Oh, I'm in a different thing. It takes like a second to load up, and I'm like, how do I make it faster? Oh, really? Just for, for yeah. buffers? Oh, that's very weird. Um, okay, look, so I, I, I have to do the standard caveat that like I have so much weird stuff going on like in my computer. Yeah. Yeah, like so it take it that was the second. It might be Oh yeah. Hmm. That's kind of like odd. a million different things. Yeah. Yeah, for be. buffers, it should be like practically instant. Uh, <laughs> because it doesn't even read the files. It just literally like the buffer thing on the right side is literally your Vim buffer. So it doesn't even hit yeah. IO. So that's kind of weird. Um, I didn't know you were using telescope. Very cool. Um, I've, I've got it installed. It's one of those things that like, I definitely know I'm not using to its full potential. Yeah. We could, we yeah. could talk about that on different, different, but like the, the point I was like trying to say about is like telescope especially initially was just like all lua and we've done some interesting stuff with ffi and whatever it doesn't mm -hmm. doesn't matter for today but like it was very cool to be able to filter like several thousand things you know we've done some stuff now to like filter many more than that but like it was just all on the main thread all happening and it didn't even feel lagging or anything which i like can't imagine writing something like that in vim script <laughs> you yeah. know like i mean I, I have I've have, I've have done some like um stuff in Vim script and I mean as you can tell from the fact I've got all these functions and it's yeah. definitely like I always dread adding new stuff. Yeah. It is always like yeah. a moment of like, wow, this would be really helpful. I don't want to write it. Yeah. And uh it doesn't come I think the main thing is like it doesn't feel like it composes very well. Like Vim script doesn't feel like it composes well. But I think yeah. um you know, I think like Lua composes much, much better. And, and I like yeah. that. And I've written, a, I've written a lot of Vim script. Uh, chat doesn't know because that was all before my streaming, you know, debut. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I wrote a whole like uh, NeoVim language server client implementation in Vim script, like s a lot of, a lot of code uh, before I, we ended up making the Lua one and stuff. So yeah, there I've written a lot of Vim script. So I think I have like an okay opinion of it. You know, it's not just like first impression and then I wanted to quit or something. Like I actually have I I have written quite a bit. <laughs> but anyways, um unsubbed. Yeah, <laughs> we just okay. I just lost all of our viewers tanked when I admitted that I've written a lot of Vim script. You know? <laughs> um but anyway, so so it's kind of interesting. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I don't know how many people will want to write Vim 9 script. Like I don't, I don't think it's a big pull. Like, yeah. uh, you, it's still learning a new language that only works for your editor. Whereas like hey, Lua has some stuff, you know, it could be worse. It could be Zemu. I don't even know it, but that, it sounds bad. Oh, is that, um, is so, that his first language thing that he made? Yeah. Oh yeah. I've seen this yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, that's a so little actually, known fact. Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, here's a fun thing for the chat. Um, mm -hmm. so I, we've now quoted the get post thing. Mm -hmm. And one thing I like doing is be able to copy lines. So if I do 43 co 49, 
Oh, cool. Right, that's a nice one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it's always nice because like it's like oh yeah, and you can also do like forty like you'd also do like mo. So like a common thing is I'm like oh yeah, I need that thing like up there, so I'll just be like thirty eight code dot to just move it to copy it down or mm. thirty. Oh, that's pretty neat. M dot to just um, move it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's like useful because I have to like move stuff around the file without wanting to like constantly organize and copy and paste. Yeah, I actually have this um config setup that I actually really like where um you know the center thing where people have like relative mode and normal mode and then yep. um, in insert mode they have that i also have it for command mode so if i'm in command mode I oh can see nice the, um, yeah so if anybody wants that it's actually a bit tricky the main reason it's tricky is just um because you have to also do this redraw mm -hmm. um because otherwise it just won't redraw the um lines i got that from somebody on um twitter thanks twitter oh nice you that is done. a good one yeah, um, yeah. uh Sweet. That's um, a good one. Yeah. So anyway, so let's get back to um let's get back to business. So Lux. now I've got so now I've got these um I've got to actually now move the command over for get post. Yeah, so for command, unfortunately, there's no sort of like uh we have not yet ported like command, like this command declaration. I I don't think we've done that yet. Yeah, um, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, we we don't have that yet. So that's so some yeah, you maybe. Vim, you, yeah, you do vim. Dot, you have vim. Dot command yep. as a mm -hmm. thing. So you have vim. Cmd. So I could just do the following then, like um, I believe. Oh no, vim. Cmd is like is the command itself. So I have to yep. do it like this, right? Right. Um, vim. Cmd. Um, here's another fun thing I have where um, it's an, it's an, it's an I know remap. So it's an insert mode remap. Um, semicolon r is copy. Oh, ah, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. And very that's cool. just nice because, and that's just very nice because, um, it, and that's just like super nice because it, um, it means I don't have to like leave to like copy something over, mm -hmm. um, just useful. And also I, I like using semicolon as like the prefix in like insert mode because yeah. there's almost never a situation that like, there's like two situations where you'll follow a semicolon with something besides white space. And that's if you're trying to make a smiley. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> so now here's the thing. We still have this like F args and this yep. post list. Yep. Are those going to cause problems? So this is where uh, a slightly new set of things will come around and we should be able to make this work. I haven't done exactly this before, but I think we should be able to get pretty close. Yeah. So I'm changing this to Luopo for now. So it doesn't conflict with the original one. We'll perfect. figure this out. Yep. So the first thing is our, so in Vimscript land, right? We have these different uh, dictionaries. We have like a colon, which is the args one, you know, G colon, which is globals. We also have V colon, right? Which is sort of like the reserved Vim like things. So there's actually uh, V colon Lua. Oh yeah. Scroll off. That's okay. nice. Yeah. Yeah. So so if so v yep go ahead like that so if you do v colon and then lua uh that that basically is like saying please look into lua land for me and then you can do mm -hmm. dot and then this will look up basically something in lua land that has the name post list so i don't remember if we did we name the function post list above uh this one yeah it's okay, post sweet. List. So since that's a global function, it will just be available right away. So you should be able to do v colon post list. And we can actually test this by doing something just like from the command line by writing like colon call v lua uh, dot post list and just calling it with parentheses. Uh, I think it should be, and then like parentheses like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that worked. Okay. Um, I, I, it returned something. So maybe we need to do, if we well, do let's like do, echo. Let's do get yeah, get okay. post prints. Yeah, okay, there we go. Sweet. So does that so that makes sense? So we made something in yeah. the global landscape. You can read more about this and help the Lua, like help the okay. colon Lua. Um, there are some ways that you can do like require and other stuff like that. But this is the way that you can easily insert uh, Lua things into old VimScript land stuff while we don't have this ability to like just directly pass a Lua function ref in. Right? We haven't okay. added some new API for doing that. Right, and what's going to happen is that this is going to be all defined in like a module, but this command is also going to be in the module, so that should be okay then. Yeah. So, um, if you had it inside of a module, you would have to do something like uh, v lua dot require my thing dot post list or something like that, and it's that's detailed as well in um, in how you would actually do that. Uh, there's a special sort of syntax that you have to do for v lua because 
it's like also in Vimscript land, so we had to make some okay. some stuff. But if, yep. even if it, the, even if the command is in the same folder as the um, yes. in the same file as the okay. Yep. So like um, unlike Vimscript, which sort of just like has a bunch of things that depend on where you're calling a thing from, right? Like this mm -hmm. implicit conversion of s colon depending on where you are and stuff like that. There is yeah. nothing going on like that in Lua land, right? So if you make it a global function, it's available to mm -hmm. uh, in from v Lua dot that thing. So if you make a new function, it doesn't matter where you create the command from, it's just available. Okay. Yep. So in that case, um, would this also be then um, v Lua dot get post? Yes, exactly right. Uh, so the only, I, I, I actually don't remember if we need to expand frgs. We can try it without doing anything there. And that might work because that's just Vim script. Um, uh -huh. but... let's, let's, let's first make sure this works. Um, yeah. and then I can just do get post like that. No, wait, I've got to do, um, Vim dot CMD, um, get post yes. like that. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then let's just um, Lua file at uh, error, not not a editor um, command get post. Oh, isn't it? We named it Lua po. Oh yeah, Lua po. Yeah. Yep. Oh wow, nice. Yeah. So and that now part. Let's see what happens. Yep. Go ahead. I'm gonna remove that and see if it still works. Oh, it still works. All right. Yeah. Wait, mm -hmm. but doesn't doesn't command dollar not like not actually overwrite? Uh, I thought command bang does overwrite. Uh, H C M D H command. It's just maybe command and then it has an optional bang or something. It'll yeah. Um, bang has the bang attribute. And oh, bang right. Attribute. It actually has nothing to do with uh, that. It tells you like whether oh, it yeah. was called with bang or not, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't remember offhand. I, I haven't, I really haven't done that in a while. <laughs> Um, okay, easy easy way we can figure this out is the following. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, it does in fact overwrite. Okay, sweet. Nice. <laughs> oh, no, it's saying this error while calling the Lua chunk. So, yeah, okay, we're good. Um, ah, yes, so. so it will error if it doesn't have bang. Yeah, that's what it says in uh, command a little lower. Cool. Okay, so... So then we should be able to test this with like Lua Po, and then you have like a, you know, I, we should be able to just run, oh, yeah. do cold and Lua Po, and then you can just test and see if like completion's working and stuff. Yep, looks like completions work. Sweet. Oh, not an L, not an L. <laughs> I forgot to. Oops. <laughs> now we can do Lua Po. Oh, interesting. Um. Um. Oh, are we not doing anything with... Wait, so what happens if you do Lua Po and then hosts? Lua Po, we are not special. And it's giving that. Um, Is it, does it have to be in quotes? I don't think so. Oh, but... we, we checked only if uh, it equals one. But we should oh. probably check that that's greater than or equal to one, right? How did I define it originally? I... I don't... Uh... Oh, no. So this is basically... Oh, I think I see the... Yeah, no, if it equals one... Okay, so that's interesting. So what happens is that um, can I just print args? Oh, you know, you know what? Yeah, you can do. So you could do print uh, vim dot inspect args. I, my guess is there must be something here where these are actually getting passed as separate arguments for. Yeah. It says it's empty. Yep. So empty for right now when you just do Lua po with nothing. No, it's saying that vim dot inspect args is empty. Uh, yeah, for, for right now, but you just ran Luapo with no arguments, right? So you ran Luapo by itself. Okay. All right. So then yep. Luapo still saying it's empty. Interesting. Um, maybe I do have to have the FRGs then. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't see that you removed those. Yes. We still need that. And beautiful yep. okay cool yeah i didn't see that you removed it well what i wasn't sure was um whether it would auto expand frgs correctly but it did it did that so that's cool because we're still in like land. yeah awesome so that seems i think ported then excellent so yeah we're making progress any yeah. questions from the chat 
Um, do, 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 do. So, well, first of all, this thing where everybody's recommending is basically repeatedly recommending scroll off. Eight. Well, it's mostly just Stupak. You don't have to listen to him, but <laughs> I do. I do like having scroll off. Yeah. What's scroll? I, I've never actually heard of scroll off, so I now need to know. Yeah. Oh, so it's oh 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 that's okay. So basically, if I do like um set scroll off equals. I'm sorry, Lua vim dot g dot <laughs> scroll off. Uh, that'll set a uh, variable. So that's not, you. You want to do right. set? Yeah, you can just do set. I think is good. I don't, there's nothing well, wrong with using set. You could do vim no, dot no, no, that, opt it, it, is a nice one. There we go. Yeah, that's the one. Mm -hmm. Oh, that feels weird. I'm gonna set that to four because like yeah, eight seems eight. Good. Yeah, especially if you're not used to it. Yeah, this is this is this is a bit to it. This is a bit to like get adjust to. <laughs> um, yep. We, we, what happens if it's higher than the number? So if I do 40, then what happens? It'll just always keep it in the middle. So some people uh, really like that, but I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, let's go back to four. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. What if I do negative? Oh no, it just, it just. It Argument just must be positive. Nice. Good. We've already what considered this. What if I put a decimal? <laughs> oh. Uh, Requires an integer off. value. Nice. Nice try. Hmm, okay. <laughs> what happens if I do it with set? <laughs> I think you should get exactly the same errors. Nope, it just went th straight through. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh no. I guess that's a reason to be using um to be writing it in Vim. <laughs> and see, that's exactly why set's not fine. <laughs> yeah. I oh, I, I wrote Vim.opt and I didn't even know that that was gonna happen, so I'm I'm saddened. You have accidentally fixed a bug. Good yeah. job. <laughs> that is what happens when you move from adding a random DSL, which set is a random DSL within VimScript, right? Because you can't do spaces or anything else and it parses all this stuff. Like, And you just move to having it be programmable via an API, which is what Vim.opt is. It's like, oh, it actually works like better. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, that's good to know. That's good to know. Okay. <laughs> Well, we have, yay. Okay, so, so now let's get this bookmark file. So I imagine the bookmark file is going to be. So um, the bookmark one, I think, is going to be basically the same. What we could try instead, if you're interested, is to try and add a shortcut to do a completion. So you instead of putting it into your, um, putting it into your like register. Maybe we should try and do something where we call complete. So from insert mode, you could actually do something like, you know, you start typing uh, vim, and then you could do control X, control D for posts. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. I like that idea. Before we do that, there's yep. a few more functions that I think will be different enough that I okay, want sweet. to. Yeah. Yeah. So let's then... do it. Let's do those then. And also, while I'm here, I might as well just, I'm never going to use macro list again. I've just, it just never ended up being that useful. <laughs> I know the feeling. Yep. Actually, I ended up, be, uh, I know. So I basically have this thing where I have a scratch file where I just put stuff that like might be useful at some point. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. uh, being delete. Uh, and then I believe I keep it in exoscratch.vim uh, with all my other. Oh, that's stuff cool. That, oh, nice. That's a yeah. smart idea. Like a special delete that just drops stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I didn't actually, like, I should implement that where it, like, does delete it into the scratch file. But oh, for yeah. the most part, it's just, like, I just manually copy it over. Yeah. Um, stuff that, like, because there's, it's often the case where it's not like, oh, I might need this later as much as, like, oh, this is still, like, a thing I worked hard on. And if I do need to do something in, like, the same space, yep. I want a reference point. Especially for VimScript where you were, like, it took yeah. me forever to figure out the syntax to do the one thing that I wanted. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so um, this is now all ported over. Hooray. Uh, this I can figure out how to port on my own. Mm -hmm. I imagine like this annoying shell slash thing will be a bit annoying, but that's probably not that bad. Expand is, I don't know. I can figure this out. I think yeah. you've given me enough that like so I can slot. Even it. expand, you can still just call vim.fn.expand and it just like, okay. you know, it just still like works the same. So any sort of like, this is a weird Vim function that does magic. Like, well, you can still just call the Vim function. Functions are really okay. easy to move between the two. So, so, so basically, it's it sounds like then that like a lot of the Lua for the most part, mm -hmm. like, is supposed to exist like almost independently. Like, we push into the Vim to do like the Vim specific stuff in Vim.fn. Yeah. 
whereas for the most part the lua like is off doing its own thing so like i can use lua to like compute like a yaml but then i have to push back into the vim script functions to like actually do the stuff which is fine there Although is the counterpoint to that yeah. is um is whatchamacallit this uh set reg yep oh right no but no oh, no that's also a vim function yeah so the 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 one other thing to note is there's a whole bunch of I'll say much more consistent and better designed APIs available in vim.api. So like vim.api inside of uh, Lua has all of the nvim functions. So there's all these functions that are nvim underscore something. So you could do something like um, help nvim underscore buff underscore set lines or something like that, right? Okay. And this is a way that you can set the lines of a buffer via an API like function. So they're documented mm -hmm. somewhere else, so you probably won't see them if you're just scrolling here. But like, yeah. they all have consistent naming, consistent like argument order, like all these sort of like things where it's a little bit less sort of magic than some of the like Vim function things. And it's actually yeah. the same API as what you would do if you were implementing uh, like a remote plugin. So commuting with, mm -hmm. communicating with NeoVim like over the wire and doing sort of like that sort of remote uh, remote uh, yeah. thing. So they're the I've same. They're the same things. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I've definitely struggled with um getting that working, but I think I've used a couple of it. I mean, actually, if we have time afterwards, I do have like a bunch of questions about like pop up windows in the NeoVim API. Mm -hmm. If we have time. Yeah. Um, but uh, so just to, so the reason that I brought that up is because if there's an option for vim.api, I prefer using vim.api. So like if you wanted to do vim.api dot like and vim buff set lines is a way that you can set the lines of a buffer. And it's like mm -hmm. much easier than calling some of the like Vim functions to do the same thing. So, okay. and, and it also sense. doesn't go into Vim script. It actually directly calls like the C code via FFI. So there's no like, uh, it's, it's, they're, they're extra, extra cheap. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now where were we? Uh, okay. So, we'll so then we've got, yep, go ahead. So, I have this thing called um, XOW val, um, mm -hmm. which is basically being just names. Well, actually, yeah. So let's um, skip that and just go straight to get and stack. Then we'll come yep. back to XOW val. Mm -hmm. um, so get and stack is just so I can basically um, get the list of um, yep. like the list of um, yeah. I have this exact. Thing. I have this exact function. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the reason it's good is because often I'm like, wow, that looks like looks ugly, or like, why is like the LaTeX Vim plugin highlights everything. It looks like basically like a unicorn vomited on a page. <laughs> um, and just being able to like figure out what things are so you can disable them step by yep. step. Also, at one point tried to like write an indent plugin and like have, has anybody here actually written an indent plugin for Vim? I imagine I, you have. I wrote one a while ago, yeah. It's so awful, right? Yes. It's just, it's... Uh, yes. So what I ended up doing was I was like, this is just like the worst experience of my life. And what I did is I wrote this like absolutely ludicrous. Do I even have... I might have it in my... um um list um get bookmarks i think oh no it's bookmarks let me see if i actually have this do 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 uh old rst indent yeah well old rst indent is um basically the rst um plugin for vim is terrible yeah um so i basically just i have to like i'm constantly stripping parts of it because um so for people don't know rst is called restructured text and it's um, it's basically like Markdown, except it's like a lot more well thought out in terms of like what, like structure and the ability to like create metadata and mm -hmm. like extend it. And it is really, really good for um, writing really dense talk technical documentation because you can do Agreed. things like create anchor points for like terms. And like, I built this thing where I can like put in an exercise and automatically populates the solution and connects the two. Mm -hmm. So you can jump between them, all that stuff. Um, because it's not nearly as popular as a Markdown for some actually pretty good reasons. Um, the tooling in Vim is terrible. Mm -hmm. Like so bad. I ended up like discovering this one bug that I forget like what it was, but it was the indent where it would just like, instead of like keeping the same indent between lines, it would add the indent to each line. So like if you indented twice, the next line would be doubled by, would be, would go like <laughs> two, um, eight, four indents just automatically. And it would just, no one fixed it because nobody uses RST. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that's why I have like two files. But anyway, so the thing I was going through is like TLA syntax, no, um, two syntax TLA. Um, where is this? Uh, so what I basically mm -hmm. tried to do with this mm -hmm. indent was I, kept reading the um, syntax stack to figure out the scopes yeah mm -hmm. and then would indent based on that yep um which ended up making it like a lot easier to actually like 
um write like a really quickly like like meaningful like um syntax thing yep um and it worked pretty well except that it's also really slow because vim is basically running through the entire file each time yes um but of course now somebody's written a um a um tree sitter plugin for tla so i at some point i'll just switch to that and i yeah. can just nuke this entire thing mm -hmm. yay tree sitter i've got mixed feelings about tree sitter oh interesting yeah, it's it's just it's just that like I do a lot of stuff where um I add additional like syntax highlighting on top of stuff and I'm just mm -hmm. not sure how to like mesh that with tree sitter. Oh, there's a you can still use the same ways that you do it like right now. Like you can still uh -huh. do regular Vim highlights. So if you want to just like yeah. do a match. Oh, okay. But it's also you can uh just add to the queries. Um so you can add your own queries and then you can actually query the tree itself and add your own highlights. So if you want to highlight keywords that are this name, you can do that and mm -hmm. you can it's it's uh it takes a little bit more like getting into okay. and you have to understand trees that are more, but uh it definitely works. Uh it it's pretty cool. Yeah, I um I now have less mixed feelings about Tracer. <laughs> yes, it, it, uh, we expose everything that we can and obviously more and more as time goes on from tree sitter yeah. so that you can literally just like, if you wanted to highlight functions that have the word XO in it, like a special mm -hmm. color, you could just do that with like oh, yeah, one, that's nice. one query. Like you would literally write yeah. like left parent, uh, like a function node and then you'd capture it as like at func and then you can do yeah. like, a match expression against it because you write the mm -hmm. it's in scheme i don't i don't know if you've seen the queries but you just write this little scheme thing and mm -hmm. then you could just like ask if the node name contains uh <laughs> contains yeah. like exo and then you just highlight that as whatever call like whatever group you want oh, so it's very cool so it wouldn't even be just like searching for exo right you'd like be only searching for exo in the names of like functions uh so it's very cool Oh, Not yeah, to wow, give you that, a whole actually, other thing to go explore. <laughs> yeah, so I will have to look at that. And also just to answer some questions from the chat, um, um, one through subscriber asks, so is RST like org? Um, no, because well, not necessarily because RST is designed to actually produce output documentation. Mm -hmm. So you can actually, um, it, it creates, so like it's basically for like creating like PDFs and HTML versus for internal use. Yeah. Um, yeah, then, I really like RST. Yeah, and then um, Tafir um, um, says... Um, bookmarks would be a good case for telescopes and other products and I'd say absolutely like mm -hmm. i built it this way because that's like what the options i had mm -hmm. and i don't know telescope but it sounds more and more like i should be using more telescope anyway <laughs> um so let's move get sin stack yeah let's do it well actually you say you already have this right well i have like the exact oh. one from like in vim script like just one that i had that i haven't oh. i haven't changed yeah so then what i can do is i can we can do this and then we can and then i can send it to you yeah and, and then i, I will just put it you. into my <laughs> put it into my config yeah mm -hmm. okay so get sin stack yep um and um can i do act oh print print not yep. but doesn't print does print like always uh oh yeah it's only if it has multiple lines that give you the next yep. one. okay so then mm -hmm. it would be um let me see how much of this I can do. Mm -hmm. Vim.fn.synStack. Yep. Vim.fn.line. No, there's got to be a NeoVim for one. That, that can't be yeah. like... So if you want... So that's uh, SynStack at the current... So you can do... Um, so this is a great example. We can use uh, uh, a Vim.api. So you might want to store this in a different... Well, I think we could probably do it, but you could put it in a variable just above because what you can actually do is uh, Vim... So you can store like local cursor or something like that, right? Because that's what you're doing with line dot and call dot uh -huh. is uh, vim.api.envim underscore win underscore, I think just git cursor. Or maybe there's even just, I, I always have Keyword to... local completion. Come on, man. Come on, help. What, what <laughs> What's the other keywords for this? Would it be like I? Is it I? I don't know what I and does. Get, uh, Probably just... XO. No, no, no object function set. Yeah, oh so... man, I'm completely lost. Yeah, so okay. uh, we did actually add some completion stuff, but I don't know if you... I think it's probably... Yeah, yeah it's fine. It's probably so, past 0 0.5. Uh, so envim win git cursor is actually what you're looking for. Yep, and you okay. can just pass um, 0 into that, which is... So in the API world, like so anywhere mm -hmm. in vim.api, 0 pretty much always just means whatever you're currently in. So if it okay. means the current window for envim win. It means the current buffer for envim buff etc so so this cursor will give you um this gives you the cursor position and i so i think you should be able to do like call sin stack with cursor and then you'll have to un you'll have to grab like 
cursor one and cursor two because it's like well a, then a, the a... obvious thing to do is the following lua vim dot api dot nvim win get cursor zero oops i uh need a underscore between git and then you'll okay. have to print uh, that that's print. the other thing yeah. yep and then this will be kind of annoying and this is a will i'll t give you another hint that i like doing after this so this oh. always prints table vim so, inspect yeah yep. so i actually just declare in my like config somewhere where i'm sourcing I do, I made a function, just capital P, and capital P is just a function that uh, literally is just print vim.inspect, whatever I passed. <laughs> so, like, this could just be, like, you know, whatever, and then, uh, except I, it, I think it works better if you just do one, so it's just, like, print vim.inspect x. So, I use this one all the time when I'm, uh, like... Oh, that's good. You know, so now you can just do lua colon p... Or just, sorry, Lua P, the thing. Okay. That's good. Thank you. That's going to be helpful. So then I have to do cursor one, cursor two, right? Yep. You could potentially do uh, unpack cursor. There's like a, a built-in thing that, but it's just because it happens to work out that way. So I don't think that we necessarily yeah. want to do that. And then this has to be um, copied straight, I'm assuming. Well, so we, we can do actually something a little bit uh, interesting for that afterwards. So maybe let's uh, skip this part and just make sure that we're getting the sin stack part and then we'll come, cause we can Good actually, idea. we can, uh, so this one it's, I think sin stack probably returns a list or something and you're missing parentheses too. So it'll be, it's oh. gonna be angry at you again. Uh, where am I missing? Uh, around print, print is a function, not a oh. uh, statement. And it's also vim, not vim. Yes. Yeah, chat was okay. asking who's Vin, and they said Vim's older, cooler brother. <laughs> <laughs> Vim Diesel. Um, yeah. I'm also, because this is annoying me, I'm just going to say, like, um, map uh, leader E. I'm going to overwrite the yep. leader E to just always do, like, Lua file. Uh, Wonderful. I like it. Yeah. What just happened? Oh, you did uh, uh, map instead of end map, which you probably... Oh, Yeah. Right. And then, uh, yeah. Nope, still doing something weird. <laughs> um, oh, you need a colon. Oh, I probably, I probably... We didn't do a colon. I wasn't even, I didn't, I wasn't looking at what you were typing. Oh. Yeah, colon right. and then, uh, a K, or like CR. Oh, yeah, at the and CR. Too. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Sweet. And then let's just do the following thing where I'll just call, um, Lua. Oh, I should probably call this for now. Uh, well, they won't conflict, but, uh, but yeah, that's because they're not in oh, the yeah, same because... namespace. You're right. You're right. Uh, good catch. Uh, get sin stack and uh, okay. And then now I can do the following. P gets no. It should be printing. It should be printing it. Yeah. So it prints uh, on line thirty-eight in your functions. Not Lua. You have just uh, print. So we can just change that print to be capital P, right? So this is an, it's a real function. Oh. So you can just. So I do this all nice. the time when I'm like writing stuff. Is I'm just like. Okay, I'm. I yeah. want to print what this table is. I just do capital P, and that's oh, yeah. shorter than print even, which is nice. So, and the thing is that SynStack actually returns a um, SynStack actually returns like a bunch of like syntax objects, which is yes. why we had to map um mm -hmm. the SynIT attribute vval name. Yep. So, uh, let's try this again. Uh, also, just because this is gonna annoy me, this is yeah. gonna keep annoying me unless I do this. E is it silent? Uh, yeah, you can do silent before this, I think. Uh, like Yeah, like yeah. this. Uh, I think even before leader E. Like oh. you, It's a modifier for uh, mapping. Yeah, like silent. Yep, beautiful. Beautiful, okay. So just for the chat, um, silent basically, I was annoyed that like it would always on the bottom show like the output, like the mm -hmm. Lua file. Like, so I just got rid of that. So then if I do now um, Lua gets in stack. Yep. 596, okay. Sweet. Because it's a comment. And now if I do yep. this, it should be like multiple levels. Yes. Yep. Sweet. Beautiful. Okay, so sweet. So now we have the sin stack. So we and actually going to call yep. that stack equals. Yep. Works for me. And okay. so now, so this is where like the I think you'll have you'll kind of enjoy this part of the thing. So now we just have we just have a, a Lua table, right? So yes. you can actually call vim.table map. Uh, or sorry, TBL underscore map. All the Vim table things are, pre are TBL. So table map. And I don't remember if it takes the function first or the map because I am a noob and I look that up every time. Cool. So function and then table. So uh, okay. 
this part's uh, pretty nifty, right? Because we can just literally write a function that takes in an argument, which could be like uh, entry. So would it be like function like? Yep, you can just write this? an inline function like that. And the first argument would be like entry or sin item or I don't know, whatever you want to call it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then uh, we can just actually, uh, if we want to make a new table so like transformed right we can save this table map as something and you can just do return vim.fn.sin adder id uh and then exactly the same like you have in the in the comment above right so we Vim can do f and return yep like that yep or can i just do like like can i do i need the return you could just print it as well if you wanted like if you didn't want it if you just wanted to... No, I, 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 want, I want to return the entire thing. So ah, okay, so yeah. So, has to be returned. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's good. Vim.return, and then it would be um, dot sin id attr yep. um, entry name. Yeah, exactly. And is then, there like a shorter syntax for this? Like a, like an arrow notation? I, there is I'm not. guessing not. Yeah, okay. Lua is very, very light on um, syntax things. Okay. Yeah. And then this would just be... Um, stack beautiful and so then we just can save that as something for now we could just print it and make oh sure no that... it's supposed to be printed oh right it's, yeah I we're just... actually not going to do anything else besides print it yeah sweet okay e and then uh yay yeah hooray and it yeah that's it yeah okay this is this is great man we are making so much progress yeah i love and, this and i love how like we can change having this like string that gets evaluated <laughs> in yeah. the map command which you're like every time i look at it it like hurts yeah <laughs> you know into like oh here's a function that just does something right so you could save that function as something that you wanted right which would be and and you could just pass it in as because lua functions are first class values right so you could like save that as a local variable pass that yeah. in etc mm -hmm. and then this is just gets in call gets in stack uh, like that, right? Ah, uh, yeah, but it would be v lua. Oh yeah, and it would right? be v lua v lua, right? Right. If you or you could have it just be literally lua gets in. Oh yeah. Either one. Those are equivalent in this case. Yeah. Yep. Exactly right. And now I'm gonna actually do is um just celebrate this. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, and then this post inserter. Yep. Goodbye. Ah, this is great. I, <laughs> I am I am loving this. This is like, it it, it feels so much cleaner now. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the status line I'm going to not touch because that terrifies me. Yep, that sounds uh, let's good. Do X, so let's do XOW val now. Um, yeah. So the reason I have this is, um, so it's basically a twofold thing. So it's, um, if I switch over to the tab, you see how in the lower right here, uh, oh. not sure if I can really highlight it, but if you look in the lower right, um, you can see that there's like the word count, two, yep. four, five, two. Yep. And if I also have something highlighted, it gives me one, three, six. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. Now I actually had a different thing for a long time, which I which basically broke when I basically migrated to Lua mm -hmm. and tried to start using after and syntax more. Where um, if I it used to be that if that this is for only markdown files, but I also used to have dot talk dot md and talk dot md would show two things. It would show both the the thing and the thing divided by um, one hundred thirty five, which roughly represented how long it would take me to say that. Mm. So for example, um. If if um actually if I go to uh, how fast do I talk um talk fast oh maybe it's an old uh twenty nineteen talk fast uh index.md um I think I have like the um code up here for <laughs> yeah so it was basically this it was yes. um it talked to MD set local status line mm, plus mm -hmm. equals g x o w val divided by one thirty. So that oh, way cool. I could basically mm -hmm. like while writing a talk, like write scripting out a talk, I could just eyeball <laughs> roughly how long it would take me. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, no, it was really helpful because I as you can tell, I can talk, I talk incredibly fast. Yeah. If like I'm not careful. So mm -hmm. it's good to sort of be able to like know how long these things would take. Um, but anyway, that completely broke because like as I, I switched it from being like it used to be just a bunch of like auto commands inside like um mine dot dim. Yep. And now it's like uh Upader. Um now it's like I I've moved the stuff to like after on mm -hmm. like FT plugin. Ah, so I put mm -hmm. it over here and it doesn't work for some reason and it's just like oh <laughs> uh yep, I know how that goes. Yep. I can I can and I just but I, but it's also this all happened while I was like in the middle of um what's it? Um 
COVID. So like, I've just not had to think about it. Yeah. Um, so I would actually at one point like to migrate code snippet because I feel like that's another thing I'd like to learn how to like migrate better, but let's mm -hmm. do that after we finish migrating um, yeah. XOW Val. Yeah, totally. So XOW Val isn't that complicated. Also, any questions from the audience? Uh, get this amount of fuzzy file finder, listen to my opinion. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I know. Yes. <laughs> it will be very nice. I know like I, so here's the thing. I, um, my Vim, as you can see, is like super heavily configured. So, um, so one of the things I often do is, um, so, um, if I need to pair, I have a, um, I basically have a mostly like, um, vanilla, like, um, VS code. Mm -hmm. for like pairing just like the people don't like have to like wonder what happens if i press like d oh d causes the file to refresh <laughs> um mm -hmm. and the upshot is like it and basically so yeah i do would like having a fuzzy file finder which is you know what they call telescope which i should probably be using much more <laughs> um and the other person saying zap why does it say w um b wall if you call it w val that's because that's a typo, and it's been a typo for. Uh... <laughs> oh no 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 no! I actually have a comment here. This is why comments are good. It says visual words are all. Oh, so there it's you either go. saying it's yeah. I probably shouldn't have been calling it. Um, I think I was. It was a mistake. That I was calling it W Val. Yeah. Because V Wall is just weird. So okay, unfortunately, I cannot say that I would have managed to like typo this for five years <laughs> as much as I wish. Or uh, you typoed it at first and then you made up an acronym that fit the. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. But now watch this. Okay. Because this is amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Copy this over. Uh, I'll put it. Um, just wherever right now. Yep, totally cool. And 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 then and and now watch this. Oh, smart, nice. Mhm. Mm We're pretty much there. We the anybody in the audience clapping? No, oh, no. Well, chat, give him some claps. <laughs> Behold, I caught clean code. Okay, so. Um, so then this is going to be a uh, local uh, word dict equals um, vim.fn.word count. Yep. And this is going to return a table, right? Um, I don't even know. I, I've never used word count. Help word count. Uh, watch this. P vim.fn.word count. Uh, but we got to do Lua. Oh. Yep. Yeah, Lua P. Yeah. So that's what it returns, oh, right? Oh, nice. Look at that. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and also the important thing also, oh, cursors, I think is actually I'm not sure as I think that's like up to the cursor, but also if, um, you, um, uh, Lua, or I'm just going to, yeah, Lua P them dot, dot FN dot word count it. Okay. It's not doing that right now, but what it's supposed to do is mm -hmm. if I have a visual selection, um, yeah. word count is, uh, I think it's cause when you do. When you do it, uh, yeah, it you're in command mode, so you're not you no longer have the visual selection. But if you map it to like a V remap or something like that, yeah. then it's gonna then it will have the visual selection still. Right. In any case, visual mode. Um, when you're in visual mode, it has visual bytes, visual cars, and visual words. Right? Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So now I don't think I have to do this has key anymore because I'm imagining like Lua has. If I basically do. Is there a way? So first of all, here's a couple of things. Yeah. So the first thing I can Go do is it. the following, right? Um, if I do um, word dict visual words, mm -hmm. that's going to be nil if it doesn't exist, right? Correct. Exactly right. Does Lua have short circuiting? Like, can I do the following? Like, re is this possible? Like, I could do yes. return. Ah, yes. You like can that. literally just write that. Okay. Now, if I want to, so I could do the following. Let's see. Uh, and let's try the following. Um, One other thing just to note. Um, yeah. You could also just type word dict dot visual words. So like. Uh, dot is the same as writing that way. They're they're oh. exactly equivalent. Um, you only you only need to use the other way, like that for uh, numbers, right? For or or 
Well, actually, you can have table keys can be anything. They can be functions. They can be other tables. They can, yeah. So, like, you know, whenever you have something that's not just, like, a string with letters and or underscores or numbers after. Right. So it's, like, any identifier type uh, thing there. Yeah. Okay. So then... Uh, let's try the following. Lua, visual, uh, words are all. Oh, okay. Um, are we oh, because I have to pr print mm -hmm. it, right? Yep. Yay. Sweet. Yay. Nice. That was easy. Yeah, very easy. And I, and I could do the following, right? I could do like if word dot 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 visual words then blah 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 else yep. blah 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 okay. yep exactly right yep and oh, so wow. That's... and uh the so one note for you and or other people writing lewis stuff the only things that evaluate to falsy are nil and false so like zero okay. so this is sometimes this is sometimes a bit annoying because there are old vim functions that return zero instead of like false um, mm -hmm. And that will evaluate to truthy in Lua. This is just a thing that we have not been able to solve due to being unable to just like change the behavior of Vim functions, obviously. Yeah. Um, but the only things that evaluate to falsy are false or nil. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, as you mentioned, if something is not in a table, it just returns nil. There's no like error on table access. Um unless you like use a meta table to make that happen but that's uh, definitely for a different day <laughs> so let's make things let's make things difficult okay yeah let's so i now have this visual words are all yep. which is great i love this this is fantastic mm -hmm. i'm not using xlwval in the file it's not called directly it is yep. primarily used in oh is f inside the folder that's cool uh buffer is probably going to be in this like um after markdown right mm -hmm. and this uses it as part of this um uh yeah like on line eight and yes yep and this is a vim function because it's an after file right yep. mm -hmm. um can i do after dot lua uh yes actually uh well oh shoot i don't remember from 0 0.5 i think we released this in 0 0.5 <clears throat> still you can actually make after like slash plugin slash markdown dot Lua or like mm -hmm. after slash FT plugin, right? Markdown dot Lua. Yeah. And that Lua file will get executed when you open a markdown file. Yes. Neat. Okay. Yes. Let's, that would make this easier. Let's not do that just yet because yeah. I don't even know if it's in, if it's in like 5.1 yeah. or 6.0. We also, you also or... don't really need it. If the only thing is you're calling, yeah. we can still use the same trick that we used before, which is call V Lua dot visual words or all. Okay, and that just works like normally? Yep, so anywhere that you would normally call a Vim function, uh, you could just replace that with the Lua and then the thing afterwards, right? So anywhere you have G colon X O W or V wall, you can just uh -huh. change that to uh, V Lua dot visual words or all. Okay, so like this. Uh, v Lua dot visual words or all. Yeah, so the only thing for this is you just need to make sure that your functions.lua thing gets like Lua filed um, like somewhere in your init.vim, right? So it just needs to happen yeah. before this, this file is done. Okay. And that would be require um, currently functions.lua. Uh, yeah. Oh, because it's just oh, in. functions. Yep. Just functions. Yep. So that will, yeah. that will load that up. Yep. Because like, I think at this point we've probably converted enough that I can actually so first of all, how do I now test this? Because I probably don't want to like, do I have to like quit and restart Vim? Um, so uh, Markdown or like FT plugins, they get yeah. re-executed every time you open a Markdown file. So if you just open a Markdown file, it will execute this file anew for you. Okay, but I still have to, um, of course, um, resource this, right? Yes, source in this Vim. case, yeah, you have to, to get the, to get the latest one. Oh, source step, okay. Um, and then this, I think was already, um, I don't have to source that. Do I have to resource this? Um, first? I would, I would source it again just to make sure. Source um, that. Yep. Um, and then source this. Okay. Yep. So now if I, uh, open what else? Okay. Uh, I know fuzzy file finder. I should be using that. Actually I can, because if I do slash G that's Git, right. And then yeah. let's do, uh, 
um, pub sub. Oh, that seems to be working. So it does okay. have that in the lower right corner. Is that? Yeah, let me. I'll, I got to move you again. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So now here's what I'm going to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've now converted enough of um, functions.vim mm -hmm. that I am now. I don't think that there's like anything this. No, I, I think there's some stuff that the bookmark uses, unfortunately, still. Um, I'm trying to like. I think there might be some mappings actually. Let me just quickly check. Um, yeah. No, because I put I defined it after function, so it shouldn't mm -hmm. be doing anything. Um, so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to um, convert, re replace all. S. Um, uh, yank to dot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. S. Uh, uh, control R plus with. Um, v lua dot visual words or all uh c g yes yes tweet okay um i think there might be still like some small stuff but i'm ready to just try making the jump yeah so what happens first of all if i stop doing runtime config function stuff and then i do source well, I should probably actually open this case new because I'm trying to see if like anything broke by not. Yeah, you'll that, need right? to definitely open up a new one to test like does the initialization still work? <laughs> okay, the initialization still works, and Wait. I do. I expect I no longer have ref or po, um, but I have lua po. I imagine. Okay. Sweet. So what that tells me now. Oh right, because I got I don't have bookmarks anymore. Dang it! Fortunately, <laughs> I still have vimrc, which was a um, backup I built. Uh. I can now change this from init.vim to init.lua, right? Um, oh, yeah. You could just switch it straight up. That's totally fine. Because I now have every single thing in a single end of file. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yes. Yeah, I've been, I've, been, I've been sort of like rolling this out in stages. So yeah, now if very I just cool. make this, uh, I probably should have a backup. Well, uh, middle fingers to the sky. <laughs> change this to init.lua. Um, yes. And now I can just get rid of this and get rid of, well, I should probably, uh, don't need this FT Vim thing. Uh, replace that with these. Uh, right. Wait, why is I not doing anything? Isn't it? Oh, I think capital visual, I. Yeah, capital, this capital I. Yep. And it's not uh, highlighting. Mm hmm. Sweet, that all looks oh, good. Oh, get rid of that. Yep. Why is it not like doing the? Um. Oh, because of the. Top oh the, right, the, yeah. The, you the, had the, it uh, saying that it was. Uh, <laughs> right, you told it. Beautiful. It's Vim. Yes. Sweet. Uh, magic. So now, if I just let's close and reopen. Beautiful. I have now fully converted over to init.lua. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Very cool. We did a hooray. Chat, a send him a clap. Oh, nice. We got some pog slides. Very cool. Pog slide, pog slide. Uh. Mm -hmm. No, very cool. Um, also, somebody's asking a good question. Um, the K KB Ray is asking, using vim.fn.expand, how do you get the current file name in the folder um, it is within? So let me quickly show that, because I think I I'm still sharing my screen. Um, yep. So if I do like um oh that's something else okay no uh eh okay um what is it so let's do so if I do like um echo ex actually I should probably switch to a file oh set status is broken okay mm, so mm -hmm. if I do um if I do oh echo right that was the function that we said we're not gonna touch that one because you didn't want to change status line that one was still in I think functions vim. Oh well, okay. Yeah. So echo expand give like with a with a um with a percent sign gives the um file name. If you do a percent sign p, that gives the path the full path. Mm -hmm. If you do h, it gives the beginning of the thing. So if I do like for example ph, it'll give the, just the directory. Yeah. So then you can use uh so you can use that, and then I think there's also like uh is it colon dot will do relative to where you currently are. I don't even remember. It's been a while since I've tried. But like colon if you... Dot. 
Oh, yeah. it looks like it does. Yeah, so that will do if you're in like a file or in a folder and then you have, you know, my folder slash source slash index.js, which is what KB Ray is asking, right? If yeah. you do colon dot, I believe that then will slice out the, you know, the path that you're currently on. Yeah. Um. So that's nice also, too. That's yeah. like a relative path kind of thing. There's also like this one that lets you get like just the, um just like the file type yep. the, after the dot and like stuff. Basically, yeah, I think if you just do like h expand uh h expand then it just gives you like sub modifiers yep and then i, I think there's like, some yeah. more in f name modify as well and they're like the same modifiers as well but you if you like had a file path given to you you can modify it with uh that so if it's like not the file you're currently editing and whatnot and this is like the kind of stuff where it's really nice to still have vim.fn right you're like it doesn't matter that it has to like <laughs> um you know convert to vim script or something else or do whatever it's like this is a nice way to modify paths that's built in that like works with my general thoughts of vim so it's cool that that still continues to happen you know it still works mm -hmm. even though i'm writing lua now oh what's up doggy remember come here you want to say dog hi? dog yeah. dog here i don't know here i'll switch on on the mainstream to just me for a second remember come here okay come here puppy come on uh, good let girl. me actually. Can you look at the? Can you look at the camera? Oh, good girl, good girl. Yeah. You can see it on uh, Twitch. But ah, uh, dog. She's a good doggo. I don't know Clap what. Clap for good dog. Clap for good dog, indeed, indeed. All right, cool. We're back. We're back to normal. Okay. I'll pause the stream then, so I can save my bandwidth. Okay. So let's then migrate. Uh, this is probably gonna be pretty fast. But let's migrate bookmarks. Uh. Actually, no, I, yeah, just because that way I can actually get back to like using that and then the status line. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, you could status. still just uh, do like runtime, like vim.command runtime this functions.vim and just make sure you removed all the ones that you, uh, like we don't, you know what I mean? It, it should still work just fine if you wanted to in the meantime still have those. Eh. 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 Subak, he tried scroll off while you were gone. Eight's too oh. much for him. He likes, he let, me actually, four let, let me just add better. that to my vimrc like right now. Uh, oh, sorry, my init.lua. Init.lua, uh, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this? 2020? No. <laughs> and you're supposed to, and the cool one is vim.opt, right? Vim.o yeah. is like. Vim.opt vim opt tries uh, to get the correct like scope that you expect to have happen, basically. Vim.o yeah. is, um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah. I think I need to take Ember outside really quick. You can feel okay. free to keep talking. Chat can hear you, and you can just keep going. I'll be back in just well, a few. Okay. Come on, Ember. Let's go outside. So, um, chat, I can't see you right now. I am going to desperately flail around and see what I can do. Okay. So I don't need this um, XO um, that anymore. Goodbye. Uh, I don't ever use like this toggle conceal level um, for anything, so I don't need that. Set stats, I'm going to have to migrate over. Uh, Set status is weird because like I needed it for um, basically because the status line is incredibly weird in Vim because it will like if you try to do it if you try to like have I was trying to do this thing where I wanted like custom status lines per file type and that turns into this nightmarish horror of like sadness. Um, so let's just copy this over. Uh, I I probably don't even need this anymore if I like if I'm if I'm like clever better at using like um um Lua but for now. Now that's just gonna be um, vim.cmd. Uh, actually, one second. Oh yeah, so it's actually. Um, oh, let's just try this cmd local cmd equals uh, that ding ding ding. Uh, Actually, I could probably just do the following, right? Uh, I'm probably just making this too hard on myself. Ding. Done. Okay. Uh, let's try that. Uh, I think I did um, end map. Okay. Uh, what's the scrap thing? Mods are gone. No mods, no masters. Uh, yes, I totally concur. Uh, set scroll off equals four. Uh, I've already I've already become addicted to it. Um, now, let's just give this a quick whirl. Uh, vim dot. Oh no, it would be um set. I could just call set status like that. 
Um, and then let's just try that. And error unexpected symbol near this. Uh, oh, because it's like that. That should probably be it. Okay. Attempted to concatenate local status line. Uh, oh, right, because I didn't call it with anything. Uh, foo. Nice. Uh, yep, and I can good. see down over there, there's a foo. Okay. Uh, so I can now get rid of that. And then if I go over to um, what? I just realized mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. um, what, what telescopes have I set up? Yeah, I have no idea. Um, that's what I'm trying to find right now. <laughs> uh, so I have, uh, oh, did I put in a different, I think I put in vim.map in mappings, mm -hmm. uh, mappings.lua. Uh, mm, yeah, nice. so I've got find file, I've got find um, git file, and I've got um, buffers. Oh, sweet. Mm -hmm. Very cool, very okay. cool. And slash f is in the folder. So how do I do like project root? Yeah, so if you um, want to pass something to Telescope, you can uh, do just like current working, like CWD inside of your map. So uh, maybe I should just, I'll type it in, in this chat. So if you do like require telescope dot uh, built in dot find files, you can do current work working equals my path like this. Um, and that will let you um, set whatever like working directory you want to run the find files command from. So if you want to set up a mapping to call that from like to somewhere else, you can just uh, do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Um, so somebody asked something, could it be vim.op.statusLine? line? And I think just like status line is like its own completely separate DSL that has its own completely separate like logic and nightmare. So yeah, you can I'm, do uh, vim dot opt underscore local dot status line to do the same thing as uh, set local, but it it uh, is I, I, it's Honestly, not a big deal either way. I think my, my my main conclusion is just like messing with the status line is a mistake and don't do it. <laughs> yeah, there are some nice uh, someone linked like uh, a Lua line, which is like just a status line plugin that you can write Lua for, and it manages all the sad DSL things for you. And you can just use functions. Like I made my own a little while ago, but if all you want to show is like the file name and some of the simple stuff you have, I think there's no need mm -hmm. to, there's no need to like switch and do a bunch of crazy things. I just wrote one a while ago for funsies mostly. Okay. So then this is now the status line. Um, we no longer call set status, we call v lua set status nice mm -hmm. um all this stuff um oh so you might enjoy so i see a lot of places where you have like put this is where, this is an example of one like other like tool that, that we can add to the tool yeah. belt that i think you'll like quite a bit um mm -hmm. so you can you can call this function from vim script in well in vim script the function is just nvim underscore buff underscore set underscore lines but you can call it from lua as well with vim dot api nvim uh buff uh like set that? lines uh in it's uh underscore between nvim and buff again yep okay. and so you can this is just documented in the help oh, as well I, look over there oh nice yes you've got that one right there oh very cool you're already exploring yep um, so you can do something like, um, so zero, the first argument is the buffer. So zero is stay mm -hmm. the current buffer. Current then you could do zero to negative one. That will replace all the lines. You can do negative one to negative one. That's like insert at the end. It's kind of like, um, like Python slices. I would say it's kind of uh, similar to like that kind of idea. And then, mm -hmm. uh, the last argument or the last argument is just a list of strings and each string goes on its own new line. So if you wanted okay. to insert two lines at the end, you do negative one, negative one, and then like test comma, the other thing comma, you know, just like make a list yeah. of two arguments. Could I just like put in a um, new line, like a, a thing with new lines, like as a block, I guess with like the, um, this, uh, I was like, most of these is just like raw text. I didn't that like Vim would just like ignore um lines so uh you cannot send things with new lines in the last argument but you could do like vim dot split which is a uh, in lua like split string kind of stuff mm -hmm. um and you could just pass that like vim dot split of my multi-line string 
and that will work mm-hmm. fine too. But uh, Vim and Vim buffs that lines. The each individual string cannot have new lines. That's an that's an error because it's unclear what you want us to do, uh, with putting new that lines makes, randomly in there. <laughs> that makes absolute sense. Yeah. yeah. Um. I'm just give me a second. So yeah, like, no. we've done a lot, and I'm. So we've done a lot. I think I'd like to like jump from like messing with like converting stuff over because I think you've given me enough like information now that I can slowly start doing this on my own. Like you've mm-hmm. gotten me past like a lot of the initial hurdles and like the difficulties there, which yeah. I'm very, very grateful for. <laughs> awesome. Can I switch to something much dumber then? Sure. Let's do it. Okay. So I've had this idea for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a very big fan of comments, right? Yep. And like annotating like notes inside code. Mm-hmm. But the thing I really don't like about that is it um kind of clutters up the like the thing. Yep. Now, what I thought would be really cool would be to find something like, hmm, how do I explain this? Imagine if I could have, say, a comment like uh uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna create a new buffer because I don't want to like mess yeah, up. Like I've got totally. like my uh, set ft equals python uh, mm-hmm. def complicated function x uh, as like dot dot dot, mm-hmm. and then I say like this should only be called in this circumstance due to the horrors of <laughs> one nine three two five. Yeah. Um, which is blah, 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 Mm -hmm. Um, don't use this. Like, okay. Now, this is like a lot of stuff, especially if there's like a, um, if there's like a lot of um, other stuff in the code and like threading through. What I would love to be able to do is the following. Mm -hmm. Warning, like ES134, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I want to be able to hit this and hit like a button. Yeah. Say like, I don't know, um, G capital K. And then it will create a pop-up yeah. of the information on ES134, yeah. which is going to be probably, what I, the way I was thinking about it was that ES134 would be a JSON. Like I'd have something like the following, like a JSON, like mm-hmm. uh, new, um, like new um, foo.json, like I'm going to create another new, um, yep. like yeah, this yeah. is going to be the notes file and this like set FT equals JSON. And then it would be like, this would be like notes or be a YAML and then. Yeah, totally. ES134. Mm-hmm. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Right, the long text string shenanigans. Yeah, yeah, with new lines. And then the way that I was thinking is that also there's this little auto command called e, um, H um, auto command. I forget the exact one, but it's... Uh, like buff it's, read um, command or something? Is that the one you're thinking buff of? Buff write. Okay, yeah. Because I want to be able to... Um, mm, so what happens yeah. is, um, yeah, buff write command yep, that's replaces the, one. the actual right. So the idea is that basically if I open this up and then add some stuff to it, yeah. then it would change the JSON. Yeah. Yeah, we could, uh, this would be probably more complicated than we can do in one day, but I could tell you the outline. Oh, no, I don't. What... <laughs> yeah. I but can tell you what you need to do totally for that because yeah. that's totally like possible to do. I actually just did something not exactly like this, but kind of similar. Um, So I work... Uh, hashtag ad chat. You guys can all spam your hashtag ads. Uh, I, I work at a company called source graph and we mm-hmm. do like uh, code search and code browsing stuff. I've been making uh, a plugin called SG and Vim. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Chat's chat's letting me know uh, SG. And I don't remember if this is, we have a bang for it or not, but either way. Um, oh yeah. Uh, you so, do. Yeah. So it's uh, so basically like it, it lets you open like the URL for like one of our, for like a, uh, at our website and just like mm-hmm. open it inside of NeoVim. So you don't have to like check out a Git repo or do anything like that. You just pull down the contents of just that file. And mm-hmm. then we have like code Intel so that you can navigate around like even across projects to definitions and stuff like that. Okay. Installation. Add. Don't install it. Yeah. Okay. Hashtag uh, add end. Uh, you know, we're, we're finished with the ad, but, uh, I made a protocol that's just SG colon slash slash. So, right. So like it opens and deals with buffers that have SG colon slash slash at the beginning. So you could totally make your own protocol. Cause like Vim's totally down to handle that. And you do a buff yeah. read, uh, com- a buff read command, right? So it's yep. like sa- same thing as buff write command. You get to override what you want to do when something like this gets read. So you would have mm-hmm. something like, um, 
you know, whatever you want it to be called, you know, ES colon slash slash or something like that, you uh -huh. know, or, uh, and, and it's whatever. So you could add an auto command that runs when you do that. Right. Mm -hmm. And then when you want to save, you would just also write a buff write command that does for anything that matches, you know, ES colon slash slash star. And you can just do the mm -hmm. same things for both of those. So that's like a super possible thing to do. Um, and, and you can even look at how some of the other like plugins manage to, to do this. Cause you know, they're like other plugins use buffers in this kind of way. That's not super crazy. Um, the other thing you're probably wondering for this then is how to do pop-ups. Yeah. Um, and then that's going to be, you're going to want to read the help and we can talk about some of it for, um, help and them, uh, open win and uh, them okay. underscore open underscore win. So that's sort of your two, sort of the two things that uh, you would need to do to like make this part happen. Yep. Uh, did you put it in the chat? Or oh, I did. Uh, Envim open win. There we go. Oops, I spelled win wrong. Uh, I can, I can, yeah. I, I can, I, I, I can t <laughs> fix the typo. Yeah. So to access that from Lua, you're gonna do vim.api.envim open win. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that opens a um, pop up. So it depends on what you pass into the config. So there's quite a bit of options here. Um, and some of, I I'd have, I don't remember every single one that was available in 0 0.5, but uh, basically in the help for NVIM open win, it takes three arguments. The first one's the buffer that you want to put inside. So mm -hmm. you don't, if you, uh, you can, you can put a buffer in to say what buffer you want to put in. Then the next one is uh, whether you want to enter that window or not. So like true mm -hmm. or false. Um, and then the last one is config and config has like a lot of options. You can say what you want to be relative to what window I must have like an experiment with that already, because I do remember like messing around a lot with it. Yeah. There's quite a few different, <laughs> uh, different things you can do with, uh, open win. Did I have it in mappings? Uh, help. How do I help? Help, 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 help. Uh, Oh no, it can't find the mapping and path. Um, love. I fixed oh, it. With Hooray. GF. You, you, there is, oh, uh, well, it's for another day probably as well. Yeah. But I did have something that fixed that at one point. Okay. Yeah. Actually, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to actually like, um, completely like um buzzkill this and say like <laughs> i've actually only had like four or five hours like i only got like four hours of sleep last night yeah uh it's we've been actually been working for two and a half hours yeah which is awesome yeah, yeah like all of a sudden way more that happens fast to make. <laughs> yeah and i'm starting to really badly flag cool um, no that's good we can just schedule another one sometime and we could work on this or something maybe on, totally maybe not. i'll drive or something and we can uh we can do the reverse and we can see how far we can get in like an hour or two Oh uh, yeah, no, that'd be super fun. Yeah, thanks yeah. a lot for like, thanks so much for the um the help. By the way, like this, yeah, it's definitely um much much further than I could have gotten in two and a half hours on my own. Very I'd cool. I'd probably I'd probably still be like <laughs> fiddling around with like p. So. Yeah, yeah, right. I it, it, there's like so much stuff that uh, sort of like takes a little bit to sort of figure out how to get started and how to do how to do that stuff. So I'm I'm glad you had fun. Uh and. Yep. Yeah, well, we can chat some more about it too. I'll just hit you up on Twitter later, and we can pick another day to Toast to work roots, through some yeah. stuff after you uh, have a little bit more experience. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'd like to just do at least some like hacking on my own because like I now yeah. feel like a lot more confident doing that. Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> yeah, let me know if there's anything else I can. If there's any other questions you have, or there's anything else I can do for you, I'd be happy to return the favor in terms yeah. of like really exotic technologies. If there's any that I do, that you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a that's a good. I, I'll have to think about that. Yeah, that's uh that's a fun that's a fun offer. So. Cool. All right. Well, that sounds good. Thanks a bunch for coming. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll talk again. Chat, everyone say bye and say thanks for coming. Everyone, you know, come on, chat. Let's go. <laughs> uh, TJ, you need to develop an AI in your likeness and ship him with the of him. Smart. Smart tomorrow. That's a good, that's a good call. That's a good call. All right. Well, anyways, I'll, I'll catch you later. I'm sure we'll, we'll chat. I'll, I'll sync up with you after I'm done uh, with the stream because I'll probably stream still for a little bit longer. You've got much more stamina than I do. <laughs> well, we're going to eat lunch and do some not not technical things for a little bit. Uh, yes, so it's lunch. Good. That sounds like a good idea. I know. I'm an hour behind, or ahead of you, too. So I'm, I got to go grab some food. <laughs> yeah, same. All right, cool. I'll catch you later. Thanks for, thanks for coming.
Lates. Bye. See ya. Thanks for hanging out, chat. Hope everybody had fun. I thought it was uh, really good. I thought we got through a lot of good, uh, good material today. Lots of good info. So I'll probably slice some of that up and put it on YouTube later. Um, I don't know if we'll do the whole thing directly or what, or if we'll try and break it up into a few different videos. I'll have to talk to the man, Flip Edits, and uh, see what we get to. Am I like, am I really delayed? It feels like my delay is longer than normal. How long does it take me to type? Or does one show up? Ah, not too bad. That's just maybe a little bit longer than normal, but not too bad. All right, one. Uh, thanks. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go grab some food. I'll be back pretty shortly. We'll turn on some tunes uh, while I'm gone. And I'm just going to grab something real quick. Okay, chat? I will, I will be back. I need to eat something. I need to eat. BRB, chat.
What? Did, <laughs> did <laughs> James? <laughs> I did not get a chance to look at the video. I did not. Um. The the highlight vid. Okay. So. What's up, everybody? I think we can probably code for a little bit longer. Um, share stream live? It's literally the best part of the stream. All right, have they been adding too many songs like this? Oh, it's on shuffle. I didn't switch it to this one. I just clicked next and it chose this one. But I could listen to this song probably a hundred times a day. Chat, what if we got sponsored by Day None? Now that would be hype. That would be hype. Alright. In the spotlight. Oh, I remember what we were about to do. Mm. We we're just gonna dance the day away to this song. This song's just beautiful, you know? Man. Sky bro, you agree? Sorry, this muffin is so good. Haley makes these delicious, like banana, cinnamon oh. song. Chasing daylight, day none. But you got a problem with banana? This doesn't really taste like banana. I just got a minute, so it's. So some foods, they're not like. It's not a hundred percent healthy, but like its taste, her healthiness level is really off the charts with this one. Which is nice. Okay. So. What I wanted to do. Banana bread beer. Huh. Interesting. I wanted to filter out a bunch of these lines. What's the easiest way. To apply a bunch of filters. Do I just. Should I just be like. Passing these all the grep and then doing something where I filter it out. I don't even remember what. Um. Exclude. But this, does this do exclude globs? Skip files, I mentioned this glob, but I don't want to skip files, right? Grab as a way to filter. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. What is, uh, what is exclude again? Why can't I remember? Dash V is inverse match. Dash V, inverse match. Select non-matching lines. Beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I should be able to do cat. Uh, let's do cd bit, uh, neovim.git auto commands. Cat uh, out dot txt grep. Let's do grep dash v, and I could do something like this, right? Debug. So that should. So this is the first part where I can just skip printing off all these debug lines. I don't want that though. Oh, true, 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 true. But I'm gonna pass a bunch of these through here. Can I pass a? Can I do a bunch of? I'm gonna like grab to grab to grab to grab because I have a bunch of uh, things that I want to filter out. Is that weird? Because like basically what I want to do is I want to do this, right? Like I want to say I don't want anything that starts with debug. Oops. And then I don't want anything that starts with ninja. Some of I recognize that for some of these I could probably do this, but I don't even really care. 
so don't I don't even at me chat um can you come on multiple dash v that's a good question debug dash v ninja i know so i can't do that just do a regex but i'm gonna write a bunch of them i feel like So this one works fine for just these two, but some of them I'm going to do include only, maybe. I also want to filter out these. Is this a literal? If I do, um, does this work? Okay, so I need to do this, right? Okay. I want to filter out the ones like this that start with a number. Is it not digit? What what is um what is digit? What is digit in grep? Does it not have such a thing? That's what I was doing. Yep, that's kind of that's what I'm feeling as well. That's what I'm feeling as well. Is D not supported? Dash P. Okay. So if I do this again and I say dash P. Aha, beautiful. I don't want these either. So I could do this, right? If I'm here. Dash P. Um, slash this slash D. Oh, beautiful. So I can just drop. Look at how much less stuff there is in this file now. Or in this output. That is nice. That is very nice. Sorry, I'm eating as well, chat. I'm really hungry. Who's got the emote that says don't use regex? So we can do this. Ninja. Or this. But we gotta add the dash P here. Okay, so that's pretty cool. What else can we can we remove here? Dash P says go to Pearl mode. Drew's guy, bro. You got me on that one, though. Pearl mode. So now we can do pearl mode, so I can, um, whoops. I can, uh, ignore the ones that start with this and just a digit. I don't care about these. This does not, uh, this does not assist me at all. Those are kind of, those are just useless infos. So this is much this is much more manageable. That's nice. A lot less stuff going on. I really don't want um, something that starts with CD or make. I don't know. We'll see if this works, huh? Okay. So then when we do something like this and we write this. Oh, look at that, chat. That's a lot better. We're kind of annoying that some stuff gets printed out more than one time. Like, I don't know. This is not from Grep's problem. But, like, it's a little weird that it just by default prints that way. Maybe I'm missing some other setting to... Make it not be quite so noisy. Because, like, this kind of prints twice. But this is at least a lot better. Any other tricks I should do for this chat to make it look better?
I think it's fine for now. We could probably like replace some of these with like not so verboseness. But it's okay. It's okay. This is this is an improvement. Now, shall we write some code? I'll probably stream for like, um, I don't know, maybe another hour or so. But then, isn't Prime, is Prime doing his uh, 36 hour stream right now? Isn't that, is that today? Or is that next week? It's today, isn't it? Then we'll go raid Prime. And maybe I'll hang out there for a bit. But I want to get a little bit farther than this. Oh, it's tomorrow. Okay. Alright. This all seems good. I know we're gonna be all right. I know we're gonna be all right. Let me think. I don't even what were we even doing? Auto command man. I think we had free. We were looking for where did we have this? Okay, right, so we were here. We had auto command register, which was another good thing here. So it actually seems like we're doing all of this part good now. And Lua. Okay, so we've got callback call. And if I check our. Um, if I check our log here, which I will delete so that we can try running this again and just make sure we've only got one log. Do we get this far? Callable. What did I say? Callback call? Callable. Hmm. So we never get here? That seems weird. <clears throat> that seems a little weird. Why would we not be getting there? Cause I, did I change something else to that mess this up? Let's go ahead and go back to API auto command. I should be setting callable, callable CB. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We should say adding Lua ref auto command, nice. Over here, attempting to free, we copy in, we copied it. Okay, so I see that we copied it, right? I see that we copied it. We copied it. So it says that we copied it, right? Get next AC. says that we get this far even right how can we not have it be equaling that right now Shoot, did I add this? I didn't add it depending, did I? Um, auto command spec. It current test. Okay, so this one's it is running. We get here. We say that this should be working. Let's write this slightly differently. 
math dot um define auto command event uh, equals file type pattern equals um, star and callback oh can I do this though mm, I can't pass this over here that won't work okay never mind that won't work I'm wrong I'm wrong I'm wrong I'm wrong we can't do that we cannot do that we won't know how to encode that across that's fine I spilled my bad chat. Don't mind me. I guess the main thing would be, does this even... Like, if I do this, right? And we put this here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We drop this guy. But I want to make sure so we still get far enough. Okay, so it does seem like we do that. It does seem like we do that. So we define auto command. It's on file type. Not getting any errors here. Do we even get this far? Uh, I kind of only want. I kind of want to make it so that only the one test runs. I forgot how to. We can just do this. Um, test file is test functional API auto command spec test filter equals current test. Or is it, did I do it with all caps? Current test, yep. Okay. Uh, is next, com is next command is callable CB? Mm. So, I'm sort of confused because it do... Do we... So, we don't even get that far, it seems like. But, I don't know how that could, how that could be. I guess what we could do is we could, um, no, that doesn't work. That's very interesting. So. I'm almost over my salad, then I can have two hands again. All command is deleted. Mmm. Oh. Haha. <laughs> Cut. Okay, that makes sense. Isn't it? They should still be on. What do you mean? Okay, I figured it out. I figured it out, chat. When we were panicking about double freeing. <laughs> Get it? Panicking? <laughs> That's a rust joke for you. Okay. Ready? I figured it out. So we're here. Now we got it working again. I thought the problem was here. But it wasn't the problem. Sorry, I was sick, Baldi. 
Oh, we got passing again, chat. Whew. Not gonna lie, that feels real good. All right. I'm gonna try and add some harpoonias. Uh, but what did I make my... What, what happened to my harpoon? Why isn't this going to alt for me? Do I not have harpoon right now? What? Oh, did I not install it? Oh, what the heck? Oh, that was on my... Oh, I was testing on my laptop. Alright, because I actually have like four files that I need to do. So, Harpoon is uh, good for this. R.I.P. me. I'm gonna get clipped. What is going on with this? Oh, you know what? Oh, that is probably what's going on. Do I have this running right now? Let me make sure I've got all my... I don't know why that one doesn't close. Okay. Okay, sweet. I think I had some uh, stuff left running from work. Okay. Bum, bum, beam, beam, bum. API auto command. So this one, so I should, I have this, right? Oh no. Okay. And then I got auto command spec. Okay, and then I've got auto command. This one. All right, so I should have these guys. Spec. We can put as three. Oh, leader three, leader two, leader one, leader three, leader two, leader one. All right, we'll try this out. Anyone, any shortcut to save? Is quit what? Like, just right quit all? Won't that work? Okay. Alright. So, current test. We can change this to say, um, can, can execute simple callback. Now, the problem is, the problem is, this is a major hack, the way I just implemented it. So... That's kind of a problem. That's kind of a problem. Of course, as soon as I say that what I did was a major hack, who shows up a Twitch staff? Of course. Let me be clear. This is not... I'm not hacking anyone. This is a good stream full of good people. We wouldn't hack anyone. Melky, recognize. I can get you banned in this and then it'll send an email to your boss <laughs> which I would only do which I'd only do on April 1st to mess with my brother but just for jokes yeah of course of course of course it uh doesn't leak when you use once. Ha! 
You can just add yourself as a mod? <laughs> Twitch, please! <laughs> Chat, nobody... No, actually, everyone needs to type. Everyone needs to type now. Hide. Hide. Everyone send monk ass and hide. Do we have a hands up one? We need uh we need a hands up one. What's a what's a good hands up one? I need this. Okay. Every time I see Melky, I just <laughs> good call. Thanks, honey. There's got to be one, though, chat. What's your favorite one? Wait, I'm trying to unmod. Sure you are, Malky. Sure you are. <laughs> Coggers? That's pretty funny. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Welcome. <laughs> They got a lot of good ones here. Malky, can you get these official or what? An hour of the yeah, you're safe. Melodic? We can't time out. No, you literally can't do anything. That's what I said. That's why I said instead of banning him, I can send an email to his boss. Which uh, seems much worse. Chat, nobody has a good, like, hands up emoji. Like a not me, you know, not me. Welcome you all to a brand new episode of Not Buy Silk Showcase. It is a true honor. Oh, Wall 3D. Now that's a classic. Amazing show under the new Monster Cat umbrella. And since all right, we'll look for ten more, like fifteen more seconds. I'll be showing some of my earlier work as well as some of the newer and upcoming releases. For those of you who are not familiar with me, this is a great way for you to get to know me a little bit better. All right, I gotta. I I like almost need to just make my own playlist with the songs that exist. <laughs> one thing I love about uh, one thing I love about BTTV is like you can have Peppa D, right? And then on most channels, it's the little dancing froggy. But then on this one, <laughs> then if you like had this channel, all of a sudden it's just this just crazy dancing. Oh, just do it. Nice. That one would work too. All right. Well, I can't find any, so we won't we won't do it. I guess. Because we're going to do very similar to this guy. Um, equals one. Once equals true. Um, and let's do... Uh, local count equals zero. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Count equals count plus one. And once is true, in that command, uh, set, txt, python, turn count. Okay. So this, that actually worked? The heck? That just works? Are we sure? Wow, okay. That doesn't seem right. Oh, that's not a bad hands up one. That's not a bad hands up. All right, if we can't find if you can't find a better one, then uh, we'll do it. Why isn't Teach made Twitch by yet? I thought that was Sacred Passage. Wait a second. Wait a second. Brand new Twitch Primer, Arukio. And Celestial Bear, 30 minutes ago, that somehow I missed. Was I gone? Did someone prime someone while I was gone? Was I just not paying attention? What happened? How thanks for the thanks for the brand new Twitch Primers. Really appreciate that. Thanks for Vimcom. Oh, my pleasure. I had a ton of fun. I had a ton of fun. 
And it was fun hanging out with Prime, too, which was great. Um, oh, here's something that I wanted to test. A uh, weak table. So I want to do something like this. It properly uh, releases functions when uh, with plus plus once. Whoops. With uh, plus plus once. And so let's say we take this guy here. And let's say that we make a new table. Um, weak. Set meta table. Um, this is what it's, uh, I forget how to do this though. It's like set, uh, mode is KV, right? So we can do mode is KV. So this should be, see staff's comment above. You and I are the only devs left who didn't get into NFTs. Says you, Malky. Says you. Little auto commands like mom used to make. <laughs> nice. Um, I I don't really I don't really have any NFTs though. I'm just boring. I'm just a boring guy. So I want to do something like this. Um, so the value can be weak. So I can do something like this. Um, I want to scope something so that it's... Uh, what's the easiest way that I can test this? Oh, I could just do two executions, right? So the first time we're doing something like this, local val is... Let's make it be some other function. Function. And it doesn't even matter what it is. And we can say weak.val equals val, right? And then we can change this to say um, weak weak.val. We can just call this, right? Like this. This word doesn't even matter. Once is true, we can do this and we can do that. Actually, even better would be we put this here. Okay, we put this here. All right, so now we've got weak, we call weak.val, we do it. Okay, so now we're gonna do exec Lua. Don't I have like a command? Okay, cool, I can just do command. Command, that file type equals txt, okay? Maybe we should make this do something like um, count equals count plus one. Ah! Uh, local count is zero. Okay, so now we do this. So now we can do something like uh, equals one. Exact Lua. Sorry, chat. I got to see if this works, actually. Uh, return. Oh, no. I don't want to make it. A, I don't want to make it. A, um, once count. Okay, once count is one count plus one. Return a once count. Do 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 like this, right? Uh, this needs to have this guy here. So does this part even work so far? That's a good question. Prime works at Netflix too. Yeah, true. You have a kid again of order entity. Smart, Stupak, smart. Like this entity, they'll give you a free one. Super cheap. True. A plus title, earning that stand-up comedy tag. I didn't even make it today. Even better now, chat is doing the stand-up comedy for me. Chat is doing the stand-up comedy for me, which is pretty next level. Unexpected symbol near equals. Local down. Oh, whoops. There we go. Okay, so that part works so far. So now what I want to check is what I'd like to say is... Um, I'd like this to be equals nil exec lua uh, return weak dot val. Whoops, like this. And I actually need to make this um, like this instead. And let's go 18 down and let's change s uh, weak with weak table. 
cap. Cannot convert given Lua type. Hmm. So is the, I can't I actually don't know if that's because it's a bug on my end or not. So my thought would be we should be freeing this guy afterwards, right? So when we unwrap it, there should be no references left. And then it should get... Oh, I probably need to call um, collect garbage. Let's do that first. Because it, it may not have garbage collected yet. Uh, Lua collect garbage. I think I can just call that. I don't know, though. Mpag.nil. Beautiful. Wow. That is nice. So, um... Or false. Let's just say false, then. Okay. Okay, chat, that's very cool. So, we can test this as well. We can test this as well. Let's say we go back to, um... Callback free, yeah, uh, callback free here. Let's say instead of doing this, we just do this guy, okay? We don't free the Lua ref. Now, my thought would be, yeah, for real, that's a great question, Stu. My thought would be hopefully, yes, yes, chat, yes. Oh, did it actually work? And it just caught that I was leaking memory? Does this test not actually do anything, though? Oh, darn, darn it all? Doesn't leak when you use plus plus once. Oh, man, was I just getting lucky before? Bomber chat. Okay, we gotta go back over here. Let's, all right. Well, this part at least is good. There's, there's some goodness here in that at least it's detecting when I don't free this. So that part's good. All right, that part, it's not the worst. It's not the worst, but it's not the best either. So what I thought would happen, uh, weak table, weak table. Val is Val. When he did something dumb. <laughs> That's funny. So why, I wouldn't have thought that this would be allowed because this should be, oh, you know what? It creates a copy of this. So I can't even check this because I think it creates a copy of this guy. I don't know how I would check that though. I don't know how to check that I didn't leak this. He would never swear. That's not the worst habit though. I have the same habit. Hmm. But dope seems kind of an odd word for that, since usually the connotation is the opposite. Hmm. Chad, this part doesn't make sense. I thought that this would stay here because a weak table is still referencing it. Like, weak table is referencing it right here, right? Oh, you know what? Oh, oh, okay, okay. What If I do this? I think I need to do, like, this. Oh, my goodness. Rogger always gets me with these. Hmm. So, I th I, maybe I'm just not using the weak table correctly. Key. Key equals this. Force garbage collect, and then it'll only have two. So that's what I thought that I was just doing, right? So if I change this to this, and then I say, um, so now what would I want to check? I'd want to check and make sure we could do something like this, right? Um, zero so we can do four um blank in pairs weak table do and local count equals zero 
count equals count plus one and return count. Hmm. So it does look like it's dropping this somehow. Hmm, that's the part I don't understand though. I don't understand. What if I make this not a global and I change this to be my vow? Bisco to the moon! 13 months, Bisco. Over a year. That seems kind of wild, doesn't it? Does that not seem a little bit wild? Oh, whoops. My Val. So this one shouldn't have any more because now we made a global. See, I think I just have something wrong with this because my Val here should be a global. So that's a little confusing, Chad. That's a little confusing, right? Because... We should be getting my vowel here, right? We put my vowel in the weak table. This should be a string. If the letter contains K, then the table, the keys in the table, the string is V, the following example. Or is the key. When the collector runs, there's no reference to the first key, so it is collected. Notice that objects, only objects can be collected from a weak table. Values, there's numbers, booleans are not collectible. If we insert a numeric key, it will never be removed. Hmm. Maybe I should do it instead like this. Because I can do something like this, right? I can say uh, once count equals once count plus one. Oops. And then I could do something instead that says like my vow. My vow. Like this, okay? Okay, let's first off confirm that we can actually just make this make this fail. And let's go back to uh, uh, later one, later two, where were we here? Callback three. Okay. And let's add this back in, because we know that this part's just super wrong, so let's uh, let's not do this part. <coughs> Okay. So we expect best in zero, but we got one. Okay, so that makes sense because this is where we're supposed to. Uh... Can I pass another thing to here to say uh, should have no keys remaining? Something like this. I don't even remember this. Does this work? Should have no keys remaining. One and zero. Okay. So that's good. So this part's not crazy. This part is not crazy. So I could make a new my val here and do this. Now, we should still have one. But now, if I do this, my hope would be that it goes to zero. Okay, so it does go to zero. So that's good. What if I never do this bit here? Or rather, I change it to be like this. Does this part still work? Okay, so that part still seems to work. So then my question would be, this should hopefully fail. Sweet, because we still have one item in here. So this makes sense to me. So we have, a, we have keys. We set my values to this. It's got this table, it's gonna be true. Now I'm gonna set my val to something new, which means that this thing goes out of scope. So when I call collect garbage, it should be done now. Okay, sweet. Now the question is, can I go to here? And what if I... 
But if I don't do this, I think I'm I think it's gonna error though no matter what, which is kind of a bummer. Cause it's gonna detect that I didn't run out of memory and it goes here and says that it's okay here, but it shouldn't be okay. Hmm. Maybe we just come back to this part later. I do get the test failure either way, so that part's good, but... This makes it fail, right? Okay. Alright. That's close enough for me for right now. I think we'll have to- we'll have to come back to that later if we want to check more info. Um, let me consider what we need to do next, chat. Let me consider. So the main problem right now is that we have callback call. This is just such big hack. Uh, I slept okay last night. We found it. We, we're good. We're actually good. We found what it. We found what it was. I knew what the memory leak was the whole time. The problem was actually. Um, I was trying to see if we for sure dropped the reference to something, and I think that we're doing that. But I'll have to check that part more. Maybe on a different day. I have to. My brain has to think about that one for a little bit longer. Because it's not, I don't think it's fully, uh, fully understanding there. So here's the main problem. Where we are calling this right now is a bad place to be calling it. Oh, I also wanted to try this. Um, basically the same thing. But, um, it, uh, Calls multiple Lua callbacks in the same. Multiple Lua callbacks for the same uh, auto command execution. Okay, so let's go here. We don't need any of this. Local count is zero. Let's do this and this and this. And do this and do this. And we can say count equals count plus one. Oops, I keep doing that today. Let's take this guy and let's say local counter uh, counter is this. And let's do that, do that, and do that, counter. So let's see if uh, these actually work. We'll do this once without uh, once and then once with. So then we can do this, right? Command set, oops, set, file buttons txt. Return count. Okay, we can get rid of all this. And we want to say that this should be two, right? That should hopefully pass. Because this should define two of these, right? Interesting. I'm not sure that we're doing that. Okay, telescope bow now or rust? What? The UMC. Yeah, he hasn't responded to anything I've sent him recently. But I'm glad that he's alive. Count equals count plus one. So my expectation would be that this um, would be that this should have um, adding Lua auto ref command. Mm, so these are the same here. All the command type four copy to six, four copy to five. Beautiful. We copied it, attempted three, three, four, attempted three, three. Yep, that's fine. Call will see be part one. Yep, 
Yup, 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 yup. That's what I thought. Oh, that's good, though. Alright, so this is here. It's because I'm returning null. When we return null, that's basically what I'm saying that we're all done. I, I, this probably doesn't work, does it? Oops. What if I do this? Okay, so that's better. So this is uh, this is another... This makes the hack even more painful. Whoa. Oh, Kyle, you want to play together later? I don't know if I can play today, but maybe we should, uh, maybe we should play. Also, great emote. A4, is that a chest move? Could be, yeah. So this, I, I hate this. The, oh, this whole thing is just a big hack here. So here's why this is a big hack. For those of you who've been around for a while, you saw me beat my head against this for a few days before and I couldn't get a good solution. And that's why we had to just completely delete the old PR and move to this PR. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a smart idea. I haven't played either. So playing campaign sounds like a smart idea. Okay. So this is, this is just crazy. This, so what I did right now is, this is why it's big hacks. Get next AC here is actually basically like an iterator. It gets called to get the next line that do command line should uh, should run. So it actually gets called inside of, um, I'm just gonna scroll for a little bit. Oh, whoops, I passed it, sorry. Right here. So all of that was one function. And there we go. So just, that's all one function. This uh, get next I see is just sitting in the middle of this guy. And it gets passed around randomly in a bunch of other places and then gets called right here. Do one command. So this key is getting called inside here. Uh, it's 600 lines. And it calls a lot of other it uh, is not a simple 600 lines. Here's my favorite bit of this function. This is the while condition. Keep doing this middle part. There's like a 300, uh, let's see. How long is this part? There's a 300 line while loop <laughs> that keeps happening until this is done. <laughs> I didn't even figure out that it was a while loop until like way later after I was looking at this. Oh my goodness, Prime! Let me see those claps, chat. Let me see those claps. Excellent number, by the way, Prime. All threes? I love it, it's beautiful. Yeah, 300 line loop, 300 line loop, and this is the condition. Uh, Prime, what were you working on today? By the way, for people who don't know, Prime is going to do something very exciting tomorrow, starting tomorrow, charity stream. You have to go to a meeting? Okay, bye. Love you, Prime. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I was literally saying, charity tomorrow. Classic Prime raids me and then tells me to shut up. Okay, I'll just be quiet. I can dance to this though. How do you get mom's Lua auto command recipe? Uh, if copy, you don't want to know. Anyways, hey everybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we don't have. Uh, is there also paint? No. <laughs> Watch this. It's not paint. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm concerned that you're on line 752 and it looks like that. Okay, so chat, I didn't write this, okay? I didn't write this. This is old code, okay? Reality? Um, 
changed. This hasn't been changed since 2018, and I think most of this was pretty much, is probably pretty much the same. Most of this is probably originally from the original imports from Vim. But okay, you can't blame me for this, all right, chat? You cannot blame me for this. And not me. And not me. Practically, this is this before I even started coding. Think about that. This line of code is from before I started coding, right? Because 2014, January 2014. Yeah, I didn't take my first real coding class until a month after this. Okay? Think about that. We can blame you for everything in Neo Vim. Smart, Connie. Do you see what is the exact name of the song? Oh, shoot. Um, We'll go back. Is this even the right one? I think it's the wrong one. I don't know. I lost it. It's in. It's on shuffle, so I don't know. Sorry. What's this commit? Is there, it's a uh, commit messenger or something. I don't. I don't have it. Um. I know that I made something for it. Get messenger. This guy right here. Made Brandon Fallman mob brutal. <laughs> You've shoved this piece of code for too long. Stupak taught sells rails around that time. Nice. Well, that makes me feel old. <laughs> uh, is Neo Tuesday still going on? Yes. So we did a stream this Tuesday, but I didn't get far enough in common and them to make a video. Uh, so hopefully next Tuesday I will get far enough and we can make a video. So I'm still planning on doing it. Um, I'm gonna, we won't make a video every week, right? Because I'm not always ready to make a video. The video has gotta be high quality. Um, but we're, I will stream on Tuesdays if I'm in town and we're gonna explore the plugin and we collect our thoughts and publish the video from that. Um, so if you don't know, I made a video recently about NVIM comp that uh, if you haven't watched, you might wanna give it a go chat. You might wanna give it a go. There's some weird shadow with your green screen. What? Hmm, I don't know. I just started writing Vimper because I already did syntax format extensions. Next video is on comment.envim. Comment and Vim is what I think I'm gonna do. Oops. Comment.envim. This this one right here. Commenting plugin. Switch to it this week, been testing it out, seems pretty good. Go to gym. Uh, I'm alright. I went already today. I played basketball this morning. Yeah, I can't do anything about that. That's just bad lighting and a bad camera. So, yeah, there's nothing. I mean, there is something I can do about it, but I can't do anything about it. Is that VS Code? Is what VS Code? What? I haven't tried org mode. It's on my list to maybe try for the, uh, for the stuff, but I haven't gotten there. I haven't gotten there yet. People don't know the paint joke. Yep, there's a there's a classic paint joke. All right. Um, but yes, this is VS Code. It's VS Code. Go buy better camera. It's uh, not that simple. Have you tried the new M1 Max? No, I've never used a Mac. We're not good at organization. Hello, gamers. I am VS Code. I am 27. Think you'd switch to Mac for performance reasons alone? No, I would never switch to Mac, is my guess. I don't like Mac. <laughs> I would rather use Windows, I think, unironically. <laughs> um I but I don't I don't like Mac. Prime's about eight years older. Yeah, Prime's eight years older than I am. They're getting close to Linux to boot on M1. Oh, that'd be interesting. Uh, I would, uh, I mean, their hardware is good, I guess. It's usually pretty expensive for what you get, though. Um, yeah. Origin, indeed. Windows over Mac. I really don't like Mac, yeah. My origin store, indeed. Yeah, M1 Mac does change the game a little bit either uh, like compared to before it's quite interesting but i'll just wait a little bit longer and then maybe someone something else will come out for it 
Well, I'm not. I'm currently not on Windows, right? Like, I choose to use Linux because I prefer Linux. But uh, I'm saying if I had to choose between Windows and Mac, there's a pretty decent chance I would choose Windows. Yeah. It's not a guarantee, right? Like, it's not a guarantee that that's what I would do. I'm just saying. That's just, I don't know. I also don't really like laptops. Like, I would much rather just have a really powerful desktop. Would you buy an M1 Pro MacBook if there was Linux support? I don't know. I, pro I probably wouldn't buy it. But, I mean, potentially, I guess. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of situations. Like, if my work bought me one and wanted to pay a bunch of extra money for it and got it for me and it was good. But. I don't even have that powerful of a desktop, honestly. My desktop's several years old. If I was going to buy a new computer, though, I'd prefer to get a desktop over a new, uh, over a new laptop. Like, honestly, almost all my work that I do that's serious, I, I would, could just SSH to my powerful PC. But I'm an actionary. It's true. It's true. I, uh, I do not have 64. I think I have 32 on this machine. Post the latest action show got an M1 Mini inside a seamless Commodore VM on it feels faster than most native. Yeah, I could believe that. Would you use a Commodore 64 with Windows 98 on it? See, now we're talking. That's a real question. That's a good one. Yeah, I just don't really like Mac. Like, I don't really like Mac OS things, generally. I also don't own any other Mac-related products, and I don't plan on owning any Mac-related products. So... Yeah. Some parts of it are similar to Linux and then other parts are super not, right? Like, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if within 10 years you you can't run anything that Apple doesn't want you to be able to buy or run. Would you give up using electricity? Uh, under what circumstances? What if you have to program an iOS app? That doesn't seem like a likely thing to happen in my life. <laughs> that is funny thick rope do you have slash want to get iphone or ipads no i have zero desire for those i would like a linux laptop only if it doesn't give issues and maybe system 76 yeah i'm interested in system 76 laptop as my next laptop i really don't care that much about form factor or any of the other stuff i'd rather just have a big fat laptop massive battery um if i was going to do that or really thin only battery laptop that connects back to my uh desktop but i don't really have to do that thoughts on lenovo products see prime's video thick top mm. my theory is apple's gonna start not shipping stuff like terminal by default yeah i wouldn't oh i'm glad you liked vimconf uh i wouldn't i just think like apple's pretty locked down on what you're able to do on it right no one uses def default terminal i term two yeah um i have a pixel right now i've been considering installing a different os on it though but I've always like I'd always preferred I have always preferred Android over uh, iOS. How do you use i3 and Windows? No idea. I don't think you can. Can you? I don't know really anything about developing on Windows. I currently don't develop on Windows, right? I'm just saying I don't really like Mac very much. Go to the measure. Yeah, I I saw I know I interviewed him about that. <laughs> going for arch on his phone no definitely not arch. i didn't install maybe some like android alternative yeah i've used wsl and i like it why do i see many people using brave over firefox so i use brave because firefox wasn't working for me on linux i couldn't it, like twitch was broken on firefox for me for like several months and so i had to give up couldn't even chrome the screen on apple product yeah i like chromecast quite a bit T-Mobile side dick. <laughs> oh, man. Twitch is still broken for me. Yeah, like, I couldn't raid people. 
So it was, li it was just literally like I couldn't get stuff to work and it was like spinning way harder on Firefox than it was for Brave for me. So I switched to Brave for now. I'm not like I, I would switch back to Firefox if everything worked. I'm searching for some sunshine. Is that something with their third party content? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Brave is like, for me, it was pretty much plug and play replacement of Google Chrome, but I didn't have to do Google Chrome. Craig the other day said that sideloading is cyber criminals dream. Uh, I don't understand. Are you saying that you shouldn't be able to load whatever execution or load whatever apps you want on your device or what? Ah, interesting rocker. <laughs> MV, are, are you kidding or, or uh, are you? I don't know if you're kidding or not. They say right to prayer is only for criminals. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff about the Apple ecosystem that I am, uh, why I would not want to buy one. I, I ate, I can't hit a button on my Apple Watch Store audio only Twitch and teach on my iPhone. RIP. Yeah, you could just write an app and load it for yourself, right? Like on, I, on Apple, you just, or on Android, you just like could load it. Yeah, Yoniko, that's exactly the stuff that I'm talking about. That would like I like on Windows at least I can just run whatever I want, at least today. I'm not saying that that's going to be the case in five years, but like I just run stuff, right? But on Apple it feels like that's not going to be possible, especially not on their phones and stuff. Apple, we're here to protect you. Thank you for using Apple products. We don't want you to be able to run a different app in a different country. Oh, hello Chinese government. It would be nice if you could run an app that perhaps provide protection from you, but unfortunately, there's no way for you to run anything outside of the Apple Store. Yeah, everyone's trying to make money off you. That doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I think it's good for people to try and make money generally. Uh, but I just don't like Apple's, like, approach on it, right? Yeah, Stupak, exactly. You need a new battery? That'll cost $3,000. Uh, because we're the only people that are going to let you open up your phone. Yeah, I use Android currently. Yeah, I was, I'm glad that you thought that that was a funny way to end the end the stream, MB. Uh, what were we talking about before Primes, right? Honestly, I don't even know. What were we talking about? Hello. Right, yeah, it's like, sure, M1 may be the only one doing their thing right now for ARM stuff, but like someone else is gonna release an ARM computer, right? You're backing up Google, don't forget. I know, I understand. Life is about trade-offs, right? Uh, my test failed, look, I'm getting pretty colors now. Uh, in, in the past, I was, I used to be, so the one problem for me, I, we've talked a little bit about this on stream, is I used to be a huge Google fanboy um, back when they were a very different company. Uh, and so there, I won't lie that I still have, I still have some, uh, hmm. There's definitely still something like in my heart that I recognize is no longer rational about my relationship with Google. Okay, so I recognize that chat. All right. Um, but like, I, so I still do feel some attachment to Google, even though now I do like dislike them in a lot of ways. Do I have Apple stocks? Um, I'm probably in like an index fund. I don't really buy individual stocks cause I'm boring. Um, how does one become a Google fanboy? So when I was in like middle school and high school, I got this uh, Samsung Galaxy Player 5. Samsung Galaxy Player 5. Now this, this device was so ahead of its time. This device was so ahead of its time, okay? This was so cool. I thought it was the dopest thing. First off, everyone made fun of me for having a device with a five inch screen. They were like, dude, why, was, why is your thing so big? 
I've got I've got my Apple spinner and that's all I can do. And I was like, but if I want to watch a video, I can like actually see it. I can actually see the whole sc I can see the video. I can like read a text. And not only that, uh like because especially at the time, Android was very open. So like you could use it as a USB, you could use it as like all these other things. And like Apple, you couldn't do anything with it, right? Like I would use this to store my projects and bring them back and forth between school. And people were like, how can you put a Word doc on there? How can you put a Word doc on there? Why don't you have to open iTunes to put music on there? And I was like, well, you see, it's a computer, so it feels like you should just be able to use it as a computer. I didn't know anything about computers at the time, but it just seemed like this was the right way uh, to have this happen. This was, uh, so I was in like early middle school, or like late middle school, high school, so dude, probably 2009. Maybe a little earlier than that, somewhere between 2006 and 2010. Microsoft and Google Family confirmed. Yeah. So it's like, uh, so it was, so that was when I became a big Google fanboy. Like I was in love with Google at the time. I was absolutely in love with Google at the time. And then things changed, um, for me over time. And I'm not definitely not a fanboy anymore, but, uh, it's, uh, that's hard for me. You know, it was a very formative time for my like technology experience, but I used to be in love with, love with Google around this time. I didn't know Linux existed. Uh, I don't know if you, I like, no one in my family knows anything about computers. What was the straw that broke the candle's back? That's interesting. In some ways, uh, MB, I, I did not know Linux was a thing until like my third year of college, which is not that long ago. What, remove, removing Don't Be Evil was definitely one of the things that, uh, was frustrating for me, for sure. Uh, there also have just been very inept for some things for a long time. Like, just, I don't, so, it's complicated. I gotta answer, I'll answer a few other questions. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, Google has changed a lot in the past decade. It's just a very different company now. Zune also was out of its time of things. Do I play games? I play some video games, not a lot anymore, because I'm mostly coding, streaming, and stuff. Or apparently just chatting today. Um, yeah, Apple only recently recognized Apple had his computer. Yep, agreed. How do you type so fast? Did you train for it? Kind of, yes. I do. I did a lot of typing practice when I was earlier and stuff like that. Um, and I think, uh, practicing the way you type is good. When's my birthday? Or, like, what year was I born? Is that what you're wondering? I'm, I don't know if I'll tell you my exact birthday. You could probably figure it out, though. So you're a prime of your family. Uh, for technology, I guess, yeah. Killed by Google is depressing, exactly. That's another problem. Yep, Google Plus, Google. I remember lots of Google products that disappeared from life. Mr. B's 17 month streak, we want Lua auto commands. Are you telling me that I need to stop talking or what? It'd be cool if there would be a decent device that uh, wouldn't belong to Apple or Google or governments. So yeah, I know Baba is your game. Yep, or Baba is you, yeah. I haven't played it, but uh, I've seen some people play it. I'm QWERTY user. So I think Android can get you close if you're interested in spending some time like installing an alternate OS and trying to do a few other things. What? Oh, right, 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 right. Oh, shoot. I turned off um, Streamlabs sound. Can I replay this? I think I can actually like replay it, right? We want Lua Water Kmts Baby Rage. Could you guys, you guys can hear that, right? I need to take it off. I need to do this though. Control audio. Okay, cool. Loud and clear. Nice. I just, I replayed it for Mr. Beast. Feeling a healer? Probably. Who knows? Um, do -do 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 -do. I think it's possible to. So like my thought would be, it seems more possible to have your phone be your own with Google than it would be for Apple. Like would just be my thought. Like I know Apple doesn't sell as much of your data, but they're certainly collecting all of it as well. I don't think they're actually killing Angular, right? I thought that, I thought you were just trolling. 
The site says... No, that's probably Angular 1, right? Because now they have, like, Angular JS or whatever. Right? Wasn't there some big old transition between the Angular versions? I don't know. People also sometimes uh, think that because something happened for five years, it's going to happen for all of time. I don't... I'm not as much on that train. I think it's... Uh, Sometimes people draw a few too strong conclusions. Uh, they're not that good at extrapolating. I think. I think most people aren't good at extrapolating, including me, chat. The rebranding? Oh, no, no. Google rebrands. We didn't have any JS framework releases. JS is dying. Exactly, Arrow. Very meta of them. Indeed. So, I don't know. Anyone else have any other questions? Otherwise, we can... Uh, I don't know how much longer we'll code. Honestly, I think I'm just about done probably coding because I've been streaming for almost six hours now. Is Nudeman, is there a React LSP? Uh, there's TSS server. It's just okay though because Microsoft, uh, the people who made LSP haven't made the TypeScript one for the language that they own that is used in the editor that they enjoy the benefits of LSP from. Hmm. Weird. Very weird. I don't, that'd be kind of weird, right? If, if that happened like that. <laughs> uh, but there is TSS server. And I, my understanding is maybe someone started working on the LSP switch and stuff too, but I don't know. But there is, a, there is an LSP that will at least provide you some good stuff. And I know a lot of people who do full-time front-end stuff and work. <laughs> they they reverse that though, Eru. Just use a better language. Now that's an idea, Sky Bro. That's an idea. And tips to start contributing to Neo Vim. I'm dumb in C. Well, first off, you don't have to be very good at C. There's plenty of Lua code that you could write. Um so if you were interested in more in writing Lua, you could do that. There's lots of issues or things that could be done, or even just docs or other stuff like that. Those are all really good things that you could um, that you could do. You can check for good first issues or like read through the issue list and see if there's anything good. Review pull requests, test pull requests. Um, there's a ton of docs just in the NeoVim like repo, either on the wiki or in like contributing.md. Um, yeah, Eru, it was a bad move. Agreed. It's a suspicious move, don't you think? Uh, don't you think it's a bit suspicious that they were re removed it and then reverted it when people got angry? I got asked about VS Code Debugger. Is there a debugging thingy? I use NVim DAF. We'll probably talk about it um, at some point on Take Tuesday. It'll take me a while to get there, but I, I'd like to do an NVim DAF, and I've used it before, and it's, it's quite nice. What's the status of virtual lines? I think it's working. Um... Vert lines. See this? Virtual lines. I was just playing around with it recently. I was thinking about trying to uh, do some cool stuff with this too. I wanted to add it for like code lenses and stuff. Copilot uses virtual lines. I think that I think the that it does. Yeah. How do you learn C? College? Uh, from contributing to NeoVim. Not not joking. Just lots of practice, smashing my head against the wall, things like that. Hey, thanks, Vivhav. I hope you have a good one. Good luck on your interview. And uh, DAP is the same thing that VS Code is using, right? So it's like it should be able to be just as good at some point. Profile sections of Lua code. Uh, it depends what you mean. Code lenses. Yeah, I was thinking for code lenses. So who should we raid now? Good question. I'll, I'll answer questions for a little bit longer while people are talking. Best way to learn doing something useful. Yeah. And like I got a lot of uh, 
that's that's this uh that's this origin this is probably like the first time that i seriously wrote like anything c don't we have plenary dot profile oh yeah connie that's a good one and plenary dot benchmark yeah connie is super smart and i don't think of things i mean this took me forever there's like 90 comments and it's like 200 lines of code I didn't even know what was going on here, honestly. <clears throat> but I just did my best and people helped me and then we got there. And then I wrote a lot of tests. A lot of tests. Look at all these tests. Look at all these tests. Yeah. Go for 22 and contribute to any of them. Uh, I, we just, I don't know if you just missed it, but so we, uh, you should uh, read contributing.md, check for plugins or for issues that look good, review PRs. Um, yeah, there's there's tons of stuff to see there. I was on VS Code Vim. Uh, it seems fine. It's cool that uh, the VS Code NeoVim one embeds a real NeoVim like inside. I think that's really cool. What does Bram think of NeoVim? I think Bram doesn't think about NeoVim. Uh, Oh yeah, yeah you can uh, yeah you can check the README and stuff too. There's a bunch of info about contributing. I think Bram doesn't really care about any of him. And, like I don't think that he like hates anyone on any of him or that he's like angry or uh, I I don't know. Some people seem to think Bram's this like angry dude doing other stuff. I think that's completely the opposite of uh... oh planner that profile. Gotcha. Um. I, I it's completely. I don't think Bram's mad at all. Some people think that he's mad, but I don't think that is uh, that is true at all. When I go to trim my NVIM code, I end up adding too many things to it. <laughs> I don't really try and trim my NVIM config. I use stuff, and if I don't use it, then I'll remove it. So I'm new to any of them, so this is insightful. Cool. Bram is a dude doing rant. <laughs> no comments, Connie. No comments from me. No comments. Uh, so want to try LSP? Is there any way to get a language server with npm install? Yeah. Uh, just check out uh, LSP config. This tells you a bunch of stuff. You can just go to here, and just click on the one that you want, clang D, and it's like, hey, here's how you install it. Follow these links. So, this is what you want to do. <clears throat> Good night. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> you think Vim 9 will affect the plugin community? Uh, Vim and NeoVim plugins will not be compatible now. Is it always going to be compatible? Um, well, so, so far, lots of plugins are NeoVim only because they use Lua and APIs that aren't available. I don't think that that's hurt NeoVim. If anything, I think choosing Lua has greatly increased NeoVim's appeal, <clears throat> made it more accessible for people, and had a lot more fun. <clears throat> so I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think like Vim 9 getting released and everyone will be like, oh, I don't want to write... I don't want to write Lua anymore or something, or I, I'm not going to write anything for NeoVim. I don't think that's the case. I don't think people are going to rewrite old VimScript plugins in Vim 9 just to write them in Vim, Vim 9. Because uh, you won't get any benefits from that, I don't think. Oh yeah, Lua is much, much faster than old VimScript. And uh, in my opinion, it's faster than new VimScript too, but that's uh, that depends on what you're benchmarking, obviously. Uh, there is potentially a way to make them compatible. Uh, one idea is a somewhat joke idea of transpiling Vim 9 script into Lua. Uh, other idea would be someone decides they want to port it all, but I don't think that porting it's likely or a good idea. I don't think we would even, we might not even accept a pull request to do such a thing. So I don't know. Um, imagine writing a faster interpreter than my fault. This is just not possible. Lua is useful outside of Vim, which is nice. You know, I get set clipboard on a plus and paste. I get zombie. Neovim expo process. That's kind of weird. I've never seen that before. 
so it's super unlikely we would accept a pull request to core to just like uh, add Vim 9 script. It's possible that we could have an officially supported plugin that makes a best effort uh, like Vim 9 JIT. But that's that's less. Yeah, so Redis, tons of games is where Lua is used. Like, it's its typical use case is Im embedding a language inside of some C uh, or some other host language that doesn't support scripting good. Um, so like C-based applications, you would want you to not just let people write random C code and have that get like injected into your <laughs> project, right? So you could use that Lua instead, which is exactly what NeoVim did. So like wow or dota 2 or a bunch of other get factorio they all have stuff written in lua because uh, it's small fast and embeds really nicely and neatly with c that's really beautiful to embed roblox is another one yeah they've got their own kind of special lua thing now but it's still just lua basically what's up okay cool all right i'll be done soon i'm about to sign off okay cool Neil, you're going to be spoiled today. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Okay, I'll come up pretty soon. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, we just put her in her kennel. I'll get her out and take her outside in a sec. Um, okay, the only other thing which should even be considered something lispy. Well, you could just do fennel, right? So, th like, that's the other thing is since Lua is such a common target, there's languages that compile to Lua. If you really wanted to, like, write lisp, you could just write fennel. Was VimScript something that was useful at the time and there were no alternatives? Yes, VimScript evolved over time accidentally um, as a conglomeration of different X and normal commands into what eventually became a programming language. Um, and it allowed you to script Vim and Neo, and, and then eventually NeoVim in ways that weren't possible to do before. So I think it definitely had a good place and it was part of the evolution of, of Vim and NeoVim, but that doesn't mean that we have to like do that that way forever. I didn't look at the source at all for Luo or Luau or LuaU, however you want to say it. Oh yeah, Computercraft is another good example. They rerun C++. Yikes. <laughs> I am married and I have a son. He just turned one recently. It is very cool. He's awesome. I'm married to Neo Vim Pick. True. Is LSP more efficient and performant than COC? Uh, that question doesn't really make sense because COC is primarily built around LSP as well as sort of other VS Code extensions. So Coke is in some ways a superset of LSP. Uh, the, the, you, you might want to watch like, uh, a talk, this talk about what is LSP. Uh, cause I don't think, uh, this is a much longer talk than could answer the, the question that, uh, maybe you need there. Thanks, Thick Rope. I feel very happy to be a dad. Very excited. Still am. A baby, a whole baby. Indeed. Indeed, Envy. Yeah, oh, Lu Love2D is another good example of where Lua can be used. Lots of great places where Lua can be used, yeah. All right, chat. Um, eight minutes, and we'll be done for sure. So you better get your questions in fast. If people don't have questions, then we'll just go raid someone, too. It's fine. <laughs> chat you got it who to rate i don't know we'll find out i i don't work at netflix believe it or not is vegan actually on oh he's not on bummer you can win or you can thought someone said he was on earlier should we raid the handmade hero he was even doing like, like cryptocurrency in there interesting we could raid griff oh nice we can raid the zig guy We'll probably raid him. You can all watch this ag ad and not give uh, not give me money. Very cool. I'll have a look at the link. Thanks. I was wondering more in the sense of how snappy. So built in LSP, right? It is different than just saying LSP. Um, 
I, I find it's very, uh, very snappy. So, Handmade Hero, he's interviewing people about crypto. It's an interesting series. I haven't watched much of it yet, but he's talking about it as a technology, figuring out what he thinks about it. I think he's been having some pro people, some cons, etc. Very interesting stuff. Why not Netflix? Uh, I just never applied there. It seems like a great company to work at. But I, I really like working at Sourcegraph. Hashtag ad. So, uh, yeah. It's, it's very different. I mean, like our company is 100% open source and a bunch of other interesting things like that, which fits uh, a lot of stuff that I like doing. Yeah, Mr. Casey's interviews are really good. I think so too. We need more people on Netflix so my DVDs can get shipped faster. True. SG is in India. Like, are you wondering if they're hiring in India? Um, I, I don't know. We hire all over the world, so it seems possible, yeah. I, I would think so. I have no idea, though. Don't take... I Like, don't, uh, you know... Take me to court on it or anything. Oh, dude, is... Uh, did this get merged? Is this live yet? I haven't used Sourcegraph. Sell it to me. Did we actually... Did this get... Uh... Okay, so I'll just show... I'll show something really here. All right, here you go, Envy. Pen, obviously. Pen. TJ DeVries at sourcegraph.com um because it's the best thing i've ever seen twitch chat agrees uh what could sort probably just let tj work on it some more submit there you go you know just a just a quick one okay <laughs> all right so anyways uh, it's uh, have you seen Impatient? Yeah, I have it. Uh, so here's I'll do a quick thing for Sourcegraph and then we'll probably leave since it's hashtag ad. Uh, it's a code search and uh, code navigation tool. Yeah, and also we have an extension that works on GitHub PRs, which is pretty cool. But one thing that's pretty sweet is uh, let's say you're using this is a Go file, HTTP is in the uh, like standard library. And I'm clicking here, and I want to know what this definition is. I can click to go to that definition, and that's in a different project. Right? And then I can actually say, can you show me references of this? And then that can show you references in a bunch of different projects. Obviously, this one's in a ton. Uh, so this is not string searching, right? This is actually looking for this actual thing. I work at source graph, graph. Okay. So this is pretty cool because you can like just go to these different places and you can see what things look like, right? So I can go back to here uh, and you could ask for references of like all these things, right? So that's pretty cool. I don't think we, I don't think we merged this yet. Oh, it's not live. Hmm. We just added, I like we literally just merged this week, find implementations, which I'm so excited about. Should I show you chat? Source giraffe, two minutes, should I show you? It's really cool, I think. I'm just gonna do it. It's my stream, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I don't have to listen to, you're not my dad. Uh, oh, sweet. It's actually on main. Well, I'll just go to... I'll go to this. No, let's go source graph. Oh, my goodness. We'll go this. Yeah. Let's do this. Um, let's do... Oh, wait. Uh, let's do this. Start. Okay. It's different for source crap. That's my company. <laughs> Is all the public repo stuff totally free? Uh, yeah, business is primarily about enterprise, right? So, like, if you're an enterprise customer, you have more than 10 uh, people and stuff, and you want the enterprise features, then you have to pay money. Uh, I think for NeoVim, you just have to say set term GUI colors, and then you get the thing. Uh, Vim doesn't have that, I think. So, I think maybe that's the that's the thing. So, yeah, all the public repo stuff's totally free. You can just go to Sourcegraph and search. I'm hoping that this is still on. Uh, otherwise, I'll have to try one more thing. We'll see. This should hopefully work. 
should hopefully work is the last thing that you want to say when you're about to do a live demo slash hashtag ad. Ah, there you go. Yeah. I don't remember all the, all the rules. So like up to 10 users, it's free and everything. Why I think Sourcegraph should live inside any of them. Envy, have you not been paying attention? I literally have three videos about this. I literally have th I literally have three videos about this. We've been working on this. Uh, while we're waiting for this, oh, but this won't. Oh shoot. Okay, I I think I can I think I can probably get this working. Um, cargo run. Uh, I gotta do. I don't I don't think I actually want to do this. Uh, do, 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 do. should I do it? Should I do it? Time's up. No, it's okay. I can stay a little bit longer. Um, uh, source graph. Okay, we'll do this. Um, run. Play cargo run SG demon. Okay, we need this guy running. Then we need plugins. Uh, plugins SG and vim. We'll see if this works. Uh, sweet. So this still works. Okay. Uh, so do I work at Thorscrap? <laughs> yes, please go. Thanks. Uh, legally, I have to say we keep asking questions. No, she's not waiting for me. She just, I was just saying I was going to be done relatively soon. So we're good. We're good. So I just opened this up. This is actually from Sourcegraph. This is not a local version of this. This is actually from Sourcegraph. So I can do something else. This one I think is probably the coolest one. Notice this. This is a Scala file. Okay. And this is also opened from Sourcegraph. Okay. I can make this a bit bigger. Sourcegraph Scala file. Okay. Now this, watch this. I'm going to go to the definition of this. Now I'm using Sourcegraph to calculate what the definition is. I go to the definition, hopefully, maybe. Uh-oh, did I crash this? Oh, shoot. I remember now. Okay. I got to also do this. No, no, no. I remember. I remember chat. Chill, 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 chill. Okay. This one. So let's say I go to here. I click go to definition. Hopefully this works. Okay, yeah, it did. I'm in a Java file. I jumped from Scala to a different project, and it's in Java. Think about that. Think about this, right? I asked for a definition. This is from some Eclipse thing. LSP for Java, right? I'm in Scala. I click, go to Jeff and go, why would you want to go from Scala to Java? Great question. Great question. Instead, you could do something like, I'd like to see the locations associated with this. Instead, you could say, I want to see the locations, right? So then you could do something like put those into telescope and see each of the different locations that those things existed in. And then you could move between those, including going back to a Scala file from the references. So yes, that's, that's also possible. That's, so then you can go from Java to Scala, Nika. So I, I, maybe that makes the situation a little bit better, right? Can I ban pick? Never. Only Melky can after he mods himself again. So that sounds much better indeed. So that's uh, that's what's going on there. So that's pretty cool, right? So I am working on this, MV. I'm working on putting it inside the oven. Can it move from C to Rust, though? Uh, not currently, but maybe someday. I don't know. Is this running? Okay. Well, let's does this now. Um, and let's go to localhost. Do I have any good examples of this one? Uh, yeah, this one should be fine. That would be epic. All right, so let's go to definition of this guy. Oh, do I need to be running? Oh, right, right. Okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. I gotta, I gotta run this too. Um, yarn serve. I forgot that I forgot that I have to set all this up to show you guys on stream. I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared for this. Okay. First graph can see all the code in the universe, right? But can it see why kids love Cinder Toast Crunch? Dang. You know, Cinder Toast Crunch is my favorite cereal too. I don't know if you knew that or not. All right. So this one, this one is so cool. If it works today, hopefully it's going to work. Um, yes. Okay. Second try. It's the charm. Did he, did, 
Chad, do you guys know how implementations work in Go? Go is like duck typing, right? So it doesn't say that it implements the type or not, right? But it is if the methods match and they're accessible to each other, then they are implementations of each other. Find implementations. This is in the standard library. Obviously, right now, this is my local machine, so I only have Go and our Sourcegraph stuff indexed, but on cloud, you'd have a lot more things indexed, and this is coming soon. So I can click Find Implementations, and I can see implementations of this struct in Sourcegraph, which is a separate project. And then I could even do this. Find me implementations of this function and I can show that here are where this function was, this method was actually implemented, the concrete implementations. So I could click to go here. Now I go to that. It does not iterate every single type. We do a bunch of magic to make this work. I've been working on it for quite a while. So now I can ask, what does this header implement? And you can actually go backwards too. Uh, maybe. Oh, I haven't indexed this one. Sorry. Okay, this one doesn't show because I haven't actually indexed it, but you could imagine that that works if I was paying attention and doing that correctly. But uh, I have some stuff. I'm on a different commit now. Hmm. Okay. Well, either way, that's fine. Does your mock filter... Wait, does your mock filter work? I don't even know what you're saying. Does your mock... I don't know. I can't. This whole thing is a lot of magics. Yeah. So anyways, that's a feature I've been working on. I'm so excited about this button. So excited about that button but anyways that's what sourcegraph does and uh many more things hopefully too right because uh that's what we're gonna work on yeah and this is pretty exciting too sg and vim is pretty cool i'm happy about that as well okay with that though i think we're gonna go raid last questions about sourcegraph before i'm leaving filter that you use. oh no no no. so that bar doesn't work cowface although maybe it could it could maybe still work uh, I don't know. I'd have to. Uh, I'd have to check that out. Oh, what are you on a Jira or Utrecht? Uh, I have no opinion. Don't know enough about either one. Oh, okay. Are you, is everyone ready, chat? Are you all ready to go? Is only dev still a thing? Kind of. It's complicated. It's not that complicated. It's mostly just. Uh, like, uh, people are really busy right now. Zig time. Uh, this looks super useful for microservices as there are a lot of practices. Exactly, MV. Exactly, exactly. Nobody has the time. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. What is a raid? Uh, you're going to go to this channel in a second when I click a button. You're going to leave my channel because I'm going to go do other things. Because I've been streaming for six hours and eight minutes. Going to sell it to my company. Do it, MV. How to clap there. You just type clap when you, when you go in. MV, message me on Discord. We can talk more about it too. There's a bunch of other stuff too, but I didn't. I, we don't need to too, uh, do too many other stuff. Big, big stream. You know it. Fridays, we got a big stream coming. We got to do a lot of streaming so I can say hi. And so Twitch can keep rejecting me for partner. Wait, which Discord? Just on Discord. Uh-oh, raid's coming. Uh, you can go here and find my name. You can go there and find my name. Okay, bye everybody. Bye.